Hello. Welcome to the Fanfic Majesty. If you want more content you can follow me on Patreon. I will be uploading more content on there that will be exclusive. The link is in the description. Please support me. 1 Legacy. Chapter 1. Legacy. In a remote location one could only see destruction. As the sun was slowly rising it showed two men, one standing and one seemingly dead. All around the battlefield were weapons, craters and apparently a large waterfall no doubt created by the intensity of the fight. This place would later be known as the Valley of the End. The man that was barely standing had neck-length long black hair, black eyes and was wearing what appeared to be a worn red armor with plates going around the arms and chest for protection. The man was no other than Hashirama Senju leader of the Senju clan and Shodaim Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sato, hidden village among the leaves. Why did it come to this, Madara? Asked Hashirama to himself overlooking the corpse of his long-term, friend. The now identified man lying on the ground had long spiky black hair that almost reached his hip covering the left part of his face including his left pitch black eye. He also wore the same armor style. Lying on the ground with a sword impaled in his chest was Uchiha Madara, former leader of the Uchiha clan and co-founder of the Leaf Village. I'm sorry, but you chose the wrong path, goodbye old friend, may you find peace in the afterlife, said Hashirama as he turned to walk away from the long battle he just fought. His head lowered in shame as he couldn't save his friend from his choices. Hash hash couple days later, unknown location hash hash. Oh my head, where am I? Asked Madara slowly opening his eyes he immediately shot up and winced from the pain in his chest. Looking around he found out he was in a small wooden house. From the looks of it, it was a modest looking house, small, probably only one person lived there. Easy there champ, you got wounded pretty badly, said an unknown female as she approached him. Looking at her he noticed she had long smooth blonde hair that reached her waist, blue eyes and an oval face, she was wearing a brown shirt that easily showed her C-cup breasts and dark blue pants. All in all standing in front of him was a beautiful young woman smiling at him. Who are you? Where am I? Asked Madara being a bit weary to the female even though he was still weak from the fight. Well, my name is Namikaze Hanako and has to where you are, we are in rice field country near the ocean, said Hanako featuring a small smile that didn't go unnoticed by Madara. What happened? How did I get here? Asked an impatient Madara trying to find out what happened since his memory was a bit fuzzy. So many questions, just lie down and relax you got injured in your last fight and barely made it. You were lucky that I found you and brought here and healed you. There were times I didn't think you would pull trough, after all not many people survive getting a sword through their chest. Now how about you tell me who you are? Asked Hanako taking in account that the man was probably a shinobi. I am the great Uchiha Madara, former leader of the Uchiha clan, co-founder of the Leaf Village, said Madara with a pride in being a member of the Uchiha clan. A bit full of ourselves aren't we, said Hanako giggling at Madara and getting a glare from him. Are you a shinobi? Asked Hanako with caution not knowing yet if he could be trusted. Indeed I am. I am one of the most powerful shinobi in the world known only to be matched in power by Hashirama Senju, the current Shodaim Hokage of the Leaf, said Madara spitting the last word with venom. He still hated the Leaf and his clan from not following his leadership and abandoning him to follow a Senju of all people. You still got your ass handed to you, said Hanako chuckling and going full-blown laughter as Madara was glaring at her and murmuring something about disrespectful and troublesome blondes. A. N. Maybe Madara was related to the Naras. Well, I am going out for some food. Get some rest it will take a couple months to get you back to full health, said Hanako as Madara was laying back in the bed remembering his loss to Hashirama but chuckling darkly as he remembered that he got what he was going for. Hash hash five years later, rice field country hash hash. Many would have thought that Uchiha Madara was a cold person incapable of love or caring about another person other than himself, however this couldn't be far from the truth. In the last five years a lot has changed and although Madara wouldn't admit it he has grown very close to Hanako, actually treating her like his wife and even abandoning his plans for revenge against his fellow clan members. Maybe this is the peace I always chased, thought Madara as he watched the love of his life with her head on his chest. In past years he adopted the life of fisherman along with Hanako and left behind all the fights and wars he once fought. Hanako also got to know about Madara and his clan and village that he created along his long-life rival and friend Hashirama, 
she got to know about the life of a shinobi and Madara's Keke Jenke, the Sharingan. Who would had thought that the great Uchiha Madara would simply live a simple civilian life away from battles, ironic as I always wished to die in the heat of battle at the hands of a powerful enemy, said Madara as he chuckled as he almost died at the hands of Hashirama. If leaving the shinobi life is what it takes to be and make Hanako happy, I will gladly forget about my past and focus in the future, thought Madara as he drifted off to sleep embracing the warmth of her lover. Hash hash another five years later, rice field country hash hash. Another five years have passed and now we could see a happy Madara leaning against a tree embracing Hanako in his chest. Both glancing at the sea they could see a four-year-old kid trying to stand in the water. He had spiky blonde hair and bluest eyes anyone had ever seen. His name was Namikaze Minato, son of Uchiha Madara and Namikaze Hanako. Seeing their son trying and failing to stand in the water both parents sighed feeling happy about having a wonderful child and a wonderful partner that loved the other. Although Madara had abandoned his shinobi ways he decided to train young Minato to defend himself should the need ever arise. Madara also explained him that he decided to give him her mother's name because the Uchiha were known and feared all over the world. He also explained him and showed him his Sharingan saying that one day he would also wield it and that he should be proud of his heritage. A few weeks later, Madara was currently heading home after going into to town to buy groceries. In the way home he felt a burst of chakra in the direction of his house. Even though Madara had abandoned being a shinobi he still kept most of his skills sharp never knowing when you might need them. Quickly rushing through the woods his house came into a view and he saw a bleeding Hanako and young Minato trying to hold off a couple of rogue aim shinobi. Without hesitation he quickly disappeared in a burst of speed and stopped just in time to block a sword that would have killed his only son. Activating the Sharingan he just glared at the four shinobi in front of them, by the looks of them they were merely chunin level. The aim shinobi seeing the Sharingan glowing in all its power the leader of group asked, W who are you? Stuttering after seeing the Sharingan. The shinobi knew too well the power of that Keke Jenke and its clan members. I am Madara, Uchiha Madara, said Madara as wind blew the hair on his back giving him an aura of power that intimidated even the most powerful enemies. After hearing the name the aim shinobi paled and took a couple of steps back at seeing that man in front of them, the legendary Uchiha Madara former leader of the Uchiha clan. Without hesitation Madara activated his Suzano and quickly killed the four aim shinobi without remorse. Looking back he saw that Minato was passed out from chakra exhaustion, approaching his lover he looked at her eyes and his heart filled with remorse for not being there, not being able to protect the one person that mattered the most in his world, the love of his life. T take cough care of R.S. son, said a weak Hanako, giving one last kiss to her lover, she closed her eyes never to open them again. Madara just stood there frozen, looking at his now dead wife. In his mind he was getting flashes of the last ten years of his life. In the last years all he got was happiness only to get that stolen from him. Taking one last look at his Hanako he made a decision that would influence all entire world. I was too naive to think this would last too naive to believe the world had changed, too naive leave my plans behind. I will lead the world to true peace and happiness. I will honor your memory Hanako, I will create a world made of love and happiness and I will make sure that you will stand by my side, thought Madara as he picked his son and jumped into the woods leaving behind his former home. A month later, Madara and Minato were standing a few miles outside the main gates of Konoha. As Madara looked one final time to Minato. Minato. My son, said Madara getting Minato's attention. In the last month Madara trained Minato to the ground bent on getting his son as strong as possible so he could keep himself safe. During this month of training Minato had activated his Sharingan, quite a feat for someone so young. Remember keep the Uchiha name and bloodline a secret from the village but never forget your legacy. Even though I dislike the Senju, this village will keep you safe and strong. Never abandon your beliefs and fight for what you hold dear. Only when fighting to protect someone precious to you will you show your true strength. I am sorry to leave alone but his is something I must do alone. Speak to the Sandame Hokage and tell him you are an orphan and wish to join Konoha he will keep you safe. There may come a time when we will fight each other. Until then good luck, said Madara as he started to walk away leaving his son to a new path. Well, I guess this is it, said Minato as he walked through the main gates of Konoha and said to himself. 
I will make you proud too San and I will honor your memory Ka San. Hash hash 20 years later. Undisclosed location. Outside of Konoha hash hash. Thought out the entire room and scream echoed. This scream seemed to belong to a young baby. The baby weighted 3 kilograms and had spiky blonde hair and pair of dark blue eyes. Pretty much a carbon copy of his father Minato Namikaze. Congratulations Kashina San, it's a beautiful boy, said the nurse as she handed the newborn baby to her mother. The women in the bed could only be described as a redhead beauty. With long smooth crimson red hair going all the way to her waist, blue eyes and a ample D-cup breasts adorned to her well-developed body. She embraced her son for the first time. Hello Sochi, said Kashina. Minato turned to his son and said. Welcome to our family, Naruto. Chapter 2. Birth of a Legend. Hash hash previously hash hash. Hello Sochi, said Kashina. Minato turned to his son and said. Welcome to our family, Naruto. Hash hash current time. Undisclosed location. Outside of Konoha hash hash. Rest Kashina you will have plenty of time, said Abawako as she picked up Naruto for his first bath. Bawako is a woman with 170 centimeters, long brown hair trapped in a ponytail with brown eyes. She is around 50 years old and is the wife of Serutobi Hiruzen the Sandame Hokage, the previous leader of Konoha. How are you feeling Kashina? asked Minato concerned with her loving wife. Just tired, she replied. Thank you, he said. When suddenly a voice unknown to both Minato and Kashina echoed through the room. Step away from the Jinchuriki Yandaimi. The masked man said as he held Naruto hostage with a kanai at his neck. Bawako and the nurse lay dead in the floor. Okay, just calm down, said Minato frightened. Concern evident in his eyes. Speak for yourself Yandaimi. I am perfectly calm, masked man said as he threw Naruto in the air preparing to stab with the kanai. Suddenly in a yellow flash Minato grabbed Naruto as the masked man made his way towards Kashina. Buzzing was heard as Minato realizes five explosive tags placed in the blanket around Minato. In a burst of speed Minato removes the blanket and teleports to his safe house. Hash hash Minato's safe house, outside of Konoha hash hash. A explosion occurred as Minato is blasted away with his son in his arms. That man is no ordinary shinobi, said Minato wondering just who the masked man is. He managed to separate me from Kashina. Teleporting to the Namikaze compound Minato places his son on the bed whispering, Rest now Naruto, I am going to save your mother. I will be back. Hash hash undisclosed location, outside of Konoha hash hash. The masked man approached Kashina and warped away to outside the house. Placing his head on her stomach he begins extracting the Kyubi. In a couple of minutes a figure is seen erupting from her stomach and materializing in the air. There stood the nine-tailed demon fox in all its glory with nine tails swinging. With a glimpse the masked man traps the Kyubi under its control. The once red slitted eyes of the Kyubi are now red with three black tomos, the Sharingan glowing in all its power. Wait, said a weak Kashina realizing what was about to happen. Incredible. The Uzumaki clan is simply incredible. Not even extracting a tailed beast from you is enough to kill you said the masked man as he commanded the Kyubi to kill his former Jinchuriki. It's only fitting that the Kyubi kills its container, he said. As the Kyubi is about to crush Kashina a yellow flash is seen. Standing in a tree not far away we see Minato with Kashina in his arms bridal style. He really lives up to his name Minato Namikaze Konoha's yellow flash, he says warping to the edge of the village. Minato flashed to the Namikaze compound laying Kashina near her son as she embraces him. Kashina, I going to stop the Kyubi. Take care of him, he said and in a yellow flash is gone. Hash hash north entrance of Konoha hash hash. It was a warm, calm summer night in the hidden village of the leaf. Lights were seen all around the village as the people followed their lives unaware of what was about to happen. Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning jutsu, the masked man said slapping his palm on the ground and his burst of smoke there it stood the Kyubi ready to unleash its fury upon the unsuspecting village. Suddenly a roar is heard as the Kyubi starts its destruction. Swinging its tails and using its paws nothing stood in his away. Sandame, the Kyubi has appeared in the north part of the village, said an Anbu as he bowed to the Sandame Hokage. Yes I heard it, summon the forces and evacuate the civilians. He must push the Kyubi out of the village and wait for the fourth, 
said the Sandane. Minato Namikaze is seen standing in the top of the Hokage Monument ready to go face the Kyubi when he senses a presence behind him. Quickly ducking and turning around he swings a kanai only to phase through the head of his enemy. Suddenly everything begins to become distorted as the masked man starts to absorb in a ripple-like pattern Minato, before its finished Minato disappears. He flashed away to his safe house. Hash hash safe house. After Minato escaped masked man hash hash. That technique, Minato said pondering what he just experienced. It's a space-time technique more advanced than my own. It happens it doesn't require seals or I would have seen them with my Sharingan. It is best if hide my Sharingan under a Genjutsu. I don't know who he is but his chakra signature seems familiar. Suddenly a figure starts to appear just a few meters away from Minato. There it stood the masked man preparing to face the legendary Kiroi Senko, Yellow Flash. The man stared at each other each one daring to make the first move. Who are you? Asked Minato as he wondered who could possibly have the power to not only unleash but also control the Kyubi. My name is long forgotten and despised in the history of this village. I was once known as Madara Uchiha but you can call me Toby, he replied chuckling at the irony of asking a masked man who he is. No, I now for a fact that you are not Madara Uchiha. Although your chakra seems familiar you are not him. Minato said trying to find out the masked man identity. The masked man simply stood there wondering how in the world could the Yandaimi know that he isn't Madara. Something here isn't right, how can he know Madara's chakra signature, Toby thought. Both warriors dashed at each other in a battle for speed. The fastest would win. Minato simply throws his Hiroshin, flying thunder god technique, Kanaya Toby as its phase through his head. Getting closer to each other, preparing for the face off. Minato charges a Rasengan in his right hand preparing to slam it into Toby. Toby is about to touch Minato preparing to absorb him, victory is mine, he says and suddenly Minato disappears from his sight only to appear behind his back using the kanai he previously threw. Minato twists his body slamming the Rasengan into Toby vaporizing the area and marking Toby with Hiroshin's seal. I underestimated him, Toby says when suddenly Minato appears in front of him stabbing him with a kanai and applying a contract remove seal to free the Kyubi. Toby seeing that he lost this battle says, I will be back and I will get my revenge on the leaf village, as he warps away. Something tells me he wasn't joking and he's a Uchiha with a chakra signature similar to my father's. I wonder who he is, thought Minato as he gets up getting ready to stop the Kyubi flashing to the battlefield. Hash hash battlefield. Konoha northern part of the village hash hash. In the battlefield stood the Sandame leading the forces trying his best to push the Kyubi away from the village when suddenly he ears. Kuchio's no jutsu, Minato says as he drops on top with Kyubi with his summon Gamabunta de Toad Boss pinning the Kyubi into the ground. Try and hold him down as long as you can. Teleporting something this big requires preparation, he says to the Toad Boss as Minato prepares to teleport the Kyubi away from the village. Are you crazy? I am not a miracle worker. Hurry! Gamabunta says. Suddenly both Minato and Kyubi disappear. Hash hash near the safe house hash hash. Arriving near the safe house with the Kyubi on its toll Minato is panting from the massive chakra usage he just pulled to teleport the Kyubi. Yandaimi, quick you must seal me, I can still feel that damn Uchiha pushing me. I refuse to be controlled, says the Kyubi much to Minato's surprise. He wants me to seal him, thought Minato as he teleported to the safe house picking up Kashina and Naruto for the ritual. Kashina I need your help to restrain him. He's still being pushed, he says as Kashina gathers the remains of her chakra to form chains to snare the Kyubi to the ground. Minato starts performing a long chain of seals and at the end he shouts. Shiki Fujin, dead demon consuming seal. Yandaimi, get out of the way. The Kyubi shouts as it feels being driven to kill his next vessel. However both Minato and Kashina jump in front of his claw protecting their son. Kashina, couch, we don't have much time. Any last words? He asks Kashina. Naruto. She starts, I want you to grow into a nice young man and a strong shinobi. Remember to bathe every day and go to bed early you need your sleep. Also I want you to make friends, you don't need that many only a few as long as they are true friends. Also no drinking until you are 20 and stay away from Jiraiya. I am sorry Minato I took your time. Don't worry, he starts, 
Kayubi can you look out for my son? I know he will have a hard life. He asks. It would be my honor. I will take care of your kit. The Kayubi replies wondering just how the hell this night could have happened. Damn, Minato thought. I need to make sure he knows of my father's legacy. I can't let him go to the Uchiha's, not with the Kayubi in him but I never told anyone and it's too late now. He starts thinking when suddenly an idea struck his head, maybe this will work. Suddenly Minato gathers what's left of his chakra pushing it to his eyes as they start spinning and says in a weak tone, Sukuyomi. Minato starts waving his eyes are starting to drift off and he says, Naruto, listen to what your mother said and grow up to be a strong and brave shinobi, and with the last of his strength he whispers, 8 trigram seal. Chapter 3. Beginning of a Legend. In every shinobi village there is a reminder of their previous leaders and heroes to honor their memory and sacrifice they did to protect and defend their homes. In Konoha there is a certain mountain that shows that shows exactly that. The mountain was actually called the Hokage, leader of the Leaf Village Mountain and in it were carved the previous and current Hokages of the Leaf and there it stood the faces of the legendary shinobi. Senju Hashirama, Shodaim Hokage, leader of the Senju clan, one of the founders of the Leaf Village and the first user of the Mokudan element. He was a caring and kind person dedicated to serve his village however he ended up dying during the first shinobi war. His fight against Uchiha Madara had taken its toll and left him permanently weakened. He was at the time of his death a shell of his former self. But even now about 80 years after his death he's still remembered by everyone in the village. The second face belonged to Senju Tobarama, Nadaim Hokage, he was Hashirama's younger brother and became Hokage after his brother's death. He too was a very strong shinobi, in fact each of the Hokage was hailed as the strongest shinobi of their time. Tobarama was known for his extremely high water affinity that allowed him to use high rank moves in places without water by condensing the air around him. He too lost his life fighting in the Second Shinobi War, but before his death he appointed Hiruzen Serutobi, one of his students as Sandame Hokage. The third face on the monument was Serutobi Hiruzen, of the Serutobi clan, known for their monkey summoning and extreme skill in taijutsu, hand to hand combat. Hiruzen is currently around 55 years old. He's one of the most powerful shinobi in the village, but in his prime he was hailed as Shinobi no Kami, god of the shinobi, mostly because of his skill in ninjutsu that allowed him to combine different elements to his attacks. Hiruzen is the current leader of the Leaf Village after his successor the Yandaimi Hokage died. The last face of the monument was Minato Namikaze, the Yandaimi Hokage, hailed as the strongest of the Hokages. He was also the fastest shinobi to ever live in the elemental nations, not even the rakages with lighting armor could compete with him in speed. He was known for his use of the Hiroshin no Jutsu, flying thunder god technique, AS rank technique of his creation that allowed him to move at almost the speed of light. This technique was the reason that he was known as Yellow Flash, due to his blonde hair, the only thing that people managed to see was a yellow flash due to his speed. In the Leaf Village he was a hero that sacrificed his life to kill the Kayubi no Yoko that attacked the village five years ago. And here, five years later after the Kayubi attack, is where our story truly begins with a small boy that despite being mistreated his whole life will rise to become the legend he was born to be. Hash hash Konoha five years after Kayubi attack October 10th hash hash. It was a warm night in the Leaf Village, the sun was just going down, it was starting to dim. A town lights were coming up and we still could see many people going around the village doing their business. Unlike many other villages, even though Konoha was the most powerful village in the elemental nations it didn't seem militaristic or cold. Many people if they saw Konoha would say that it wasn't a shinobi village, however the mountain that surrounded the north part of village was a dead giveaway. In it were carved the faces of the most powerful shinobi to ever live. It was October 10th. The village was covered in decorations and celebrating the defeat to the Kayubi that attacked five years ago. Everyone in the village was happy, it were times of peace. The wars were long forgotten, but not the hate and pain of many that were lost. Although everyone seemed happy one particular kid was very sad and lonely. Uzumaki Naruto was an orphan of the Kayubi attack, he was about 120 centimeters, 3 feet 11, and had spiky blonde hair the bluest eyes anyone ever had and in each cheek he had three whiskers marks, a birth mark. He was wearing a white shirt with short sleeves with a orange swirl in his back and black pants. Despite begin what appeared to be a normal child Naruto was hated and despised by most of the village, 
he was a painful reminder of the Kayubi attack. He was expelled from the orphanage at the age of four and lived in the streets for about a month until the Hokage's Anbu found him and took him to the Sandame. Sandame eventually became a grandfather figure to him. He gave Naruto a small apartment and allowance to live but Naruto was constantly pursued by the villagers and constantly abused and beaten. The stores kicked him out or sold him rotten merchandise or charged twice the price. Even in the orphanage he still received the same treatment. Growing up in this kind of life forced Naruto to mature quickly if he wanted to survive. Because of this treatment Naruto became a highly intelligent kid that could rival Inara. He became cold and calculative to everyone except his closest people that in his case were simply the Hokage himself and the owners of a ramen stand. Only three people cared for Naruto and wondered if he was eating or sleeping well. During his birthday things were even worse because the villagers and a few shinobi would gather up and hunt him down like an animal and here is where we are. A scared kid was running through the streets of Konoha trying his best to avoid the villagers and shinobi in hot pursuit. The villagers were shouting. Die demon. Get him. Finish what the Yandaimi started. Naruto wondered what did he ever do to deserve such treatment and harsh life. Stop please. What did I ever do to any of you? Asked Naruto, running as fast as he could, his legs starting to give away. Oh please you know very well what you did. You killed my brother and my father, shouted one of villagers as he threw an empty bottle. We will finish what the Yandaimi started and kill the demon, the villager said as the other support him. Naruto kept running until he looked behind to his pursuers and noticed that a couple of them appeared to be Chunin A. N. Chunin, medium-level shinobi. Even thought Naruto was a stamina freak, a five-year-old couldn't compete with the speed of a Chunin. The Chunin quickly closed the distance between him and Naruto, he took out a kunai and did a horizontal slash. Naruto seeing the kunai that would most likely kill him he ducked. As he was ducking he noticed that time appeared to be slowing down. After dodging the slash he unwittingly channeled chakra to his legs trying to jump over a fence to get away. The rest of the shinobi seeing this were actually surprised but they couldn't let the demon get away so all of them threw a couple of kanai at him while saying, kanai cage shuriken no jutsu, the kanai multiplied to 15 and were going fast at Naruto. Naruto knowing that he couldn't dodge them all in mid-air started observing them and calculating the best way to avoid them. It was then that it happened. His vision suddenly became clearer and the incoming kanai seemed to almost stop, just by looking at them he could see where they would land. Reacting to his instincts Naruto quickly caught one kanai with his hand and started deflecting all of them except one that managed to pass his defenses and hit his shoulder. He cried out in pain but managed to get over the fence into safety. He pulled the kanai of his shoulder and noticed that the wound was already closing. I wonder why I'm the only person to heal this fast. He asked himself while walking through the village hidden in the shadows to avoid the villagers, but he quickly noticed that his vision was different, it was black and white and he could see people with a blue flame inside of them that surrounded their body. He tried to push his eyes to see better and suddenly he passed out in the alleyway, the stress and exhaustion of running and taking a kanai to the shoulder was too much. Hash hash Naruto's mindscape hash hash. Naruto awoke in what it seemed to be a sewer. There were pipes in every wall and the floor was filled with water with about 20 centimeters in height 8 inches. He wandered through the endless corridors wondering where he was when he heard a soft male voice calling him. Follow my voice, the strange voice said. Naruto didn't know him but was drawn to this voice. After walking for a couple of minutes Naruto found himself staring at a big iron doors with verticals bars. The middle of the door it was a small paper with the kanji for, seal. He looked inside the cage but it seemed empty. Hello there Naruto, said the voice. Naruto jumped back surprised and noticed a man leaning in the sewer wall outside of the cage. Naruto observed the man carefully. The man was about 190 centimeters in height, 6 feet 2, he had spiky blonde hair with two bangs that framed his face and had blue eyes. He was wearing a full body blue suit and the standard Jonin, high level shinobi, flat jacket. He was also wearing a white cape with red flames and it had the kanji for, Yandaimi Hokage. Why Yandaimi Hokage? Asked Naruto. He knew very well what happened five years ago, he knew that the Yandaimi died to kill the Kayubi, he was a hero. My name is Minato Namikaze and I am the Yandaimi Hokage, he said looking at the kid in front of him and wondered how it happened so soon, Naruto seemed five at the most. How? You were supposed to be dead. Am I dead too? Naruto asked. No, 
You are not dead but unfortunately I am, Minato replied. But if you are dead, then where am I? And how do you know my name? Naruto wondered what the hell was going on. Naruto, I am going to explain everything to you listen closely okay, he asked to which Naruto nodded. We are inside your mind, this is your mindscape, it's basically a representation of your mind in physical form understand. Naruto nodded, now the truth is that I am your father. Naruto froze when he heard that. No, it can't be, Gigi told me he didn't know who my parents were, Naruto thought. Why why you're my father? How? Naruto asked. Well about the how you will find out when you're older, Minato said chuckling, but it is true, I am your father and I'm sorry I wasn't here with you but I had to stop the Kyubi. But listen I don't have much time. You probably wondered why this village treats you like a monster. To which Naruto slowly nodded. Well, there isn't any easy way to say this but five years ago when you were born the Kyubi attacked the village. Sandame said that I killed the Kyubi but that is impossible. Kyubi is a mass of chakra without actually a physical body so it can't die. The only way I had to stop the Kyubi was to seal it inside a newborn baby, I'm sorry to say but I had to seal into you, he said with a bit of shame wondering how Naruto would react. What? What do you mean by sealed? I am the Kyubi? He asked, now realizing what all the names the villagers called him by. No, you are neither a monster nor the Kyubi, you are my son. And by sealed I mean that the Kyubi is trapped in your gut, behind these bars. Kyubi come forward, Minato explained. Suddenly behind the bars of the empty cage Naruto saw two glowing red eyes with black vertical slits. As the eyes approached to doors he noticed the form of fox with tails swinging wildly in this back. There it stood behind the doors the most powerful being in the word, the most powerful of the nine biju the Kyubi no Yoko, the nine-tailed demon fox. Naruto seeing this jumped back scared to see the monster that attacked the village and was responsible for many deaths. No need to fear me Kit, the Kyubi said watching the poor kid. He knew too well what the villagers did to him. Naruto, Minato said getting Naruto's attention, this is the Kyubi and he's not the demon everyone thinks he is. The attack five years ago was not his fault, Minato said and started explaining what happened in that fateful night five years ago. From when Naruto was born, to the masked man unleashing the Kyubi and controlling it to attack the village to Minato sealing him into him. Naruto was still frozen absorbing what happened, everything his father was saying. Naruto didn't know what to say it was just too much. Naruto. Minato continued, I'm sorry that I had to seal that Kyubi into you. You had a harsh life until now but I trust with this it will be slightly better. Minato said and touched Naruto's stomach effectively transferring the seal key to Naruto and opening the cage. What are you doing? Naruto asked worried that his father opened the cage and let the Kyubi out. Naruto, I told you that I wasn't that Kyubi's fault that night. The Kyubi will help you grow up and he'll be at your side to help you in your battle and provide advice. The only thing I ask of you is when you're close to your death that you release the Kyubi. He didn't deserve to trapped in a cage to be used as a weapon, Minato said. Will you really be my friend? Naruto asked still bit fearful of the fox. Of course, I will take care of you and make you strong so you can protect your home and friends, the Kyubi replied and what happened next surprised everyone in the mindscape. Naruto suddenly left his father's side and jumped into the paw of the Kyubi. So soft and warm, he said getting chuckles from both Kyubi and Minato. Now Naruto there is more that I need to tell you, I don't know if you realized it but doesn't your vision seem different, Minato asked. Actually it's all black and white with you being blue and Kyubi red, Naruto replied. Naruto, do you know who Uchiha Madara is, Minato asked getting a disgusted growl from the Kyubi clearly showing no love to the Uchiha leader. Yup, I know he was one of the founders of the Leaf and the was leader of Uchiha clan, that is supposed to be one of the strongest in the world. Naruto said surprising his father. Naruto even though was five year old was very smart and did like to read but going into the library was impossible as he was always expelled. Exactly but what you and anyone doesn't know is that Madara was in fact my father. I never said anything to anyone because I decided to keep it a secret, he said. Naruto's eyes widened when he discovered that the legendary Uchiha Madara was his grandfather. I am the son of the Yandaimi Hokage Konoha's yellow flash and the great Uchiha Madara, aa there is no way I'm not becoming Hokage, Naruto thought. Ah, 
With my you begin my two san, father, and Madara being my oji san, grandfather, there is no way I'm not becoming Hokage, believe it. Naruto yelled pumping his fist to the air and getting a smile from Minato. I have no doubt you will Naruto, Minato said ruffling Naruto's hair. Now you know that the Uchiha clan have a bloodline, more specifically a Dujutsu right? Naruto nodded. This bloodline is called the Sharingan and you activated its first level, look at the floor. Naruto looked down and saw his reflection in the water. His eyes were blood red with a black tomo in each eye. The Sharingan will evolve until it's fully matured getting three tomos in each eye. Minato concluded he didn't want to go any further into the Mangekyu. His time was ending and the Kyubi could explain it if he ever unlocked it. God, I hope he never has to go through that, Minato thought. Oh, I knew I was awesome, Naruto said happy about knowing everything about his family and finding he had a bloodline. Now Naruto, pay attention to what I'm going to say, Minato started, I know that you always wanted a family but you can't go to the Uchiha clan, besides having the Kyubi in you which if they find out that you were an Uchiha they will use it for their own gain, I want you to be a good person and not an arrogant, power hungry like the Uchihas are. Never rely too much on the Sharingan, remember that the Sharingan is only a tool, having it doesn't make you all powerful okay, Minato asked getting a nod. Okay, my time is ending. Everything I have including my clan's techniques and weapons are in the Namikaze compound and only you can enter since there's a blood seal around it. Be careful so that no one finds out. I have many enemies as did Madara. If you ever wish to reveal your true heritage I ask you to reveal when you are strong enough to protect yourself and anyone you care about. There are people that would stop at nothing to kill you or your friends to get revenge at me, Minato said with a bit of regret, after all during the third shinobi war he was responsible for slaughtering Iwa's forces. Do you know how to use chakra to deactivate your eyes? He asked getting a nod from Naruto. I'm fading, my chakra is almost over. Remember Naruto, me and your mother loved you very much and I'm sorry that you had to live this life and growing up without love, Minato said sad on how everything turned out. He asked the Sandame so that the village saw Naruto as their hero but he was too naive. Don't worry too San I got to meet you after all you did what you needed to protect our home, Naruto said getting a smile from Minato as he said to fade away until he was no longer standing in front of him. Naruto woke up in the alleyway wondering if it was all a dream until he heard a voice in his head. No kit, it wasn't a dream. I'm here after all, you should deactivate your eyes for now and start training. I will help you in every way I can and when you are old enough I will train to use my powers, Kyubi said. Thank you, at least I have you with me. I could use the company, Naruto replied happy with everything it happened. Who knew that this night would turn out to be his best birthday? You don't need to speak out loud or people will think you are crazy. Just think and I will hear it. Also now that the cage is open you gained my second ability. You are able to sense people around you and in time with training you will be able to sense their feelings. You should tell the Hokage what happened, he will help you, but keep him in the dark about my help for now, the Kyubi said getting a nod from Naruto as he got up, deactivated his Sharingan and started to make his way to the Hokage Tower. Hash hash 15 minutes later Hokage Tower hash hash. Naruto made his way into the Hokage office after arguing with the secretary and threatening her to tell the Hokage that she called him a demon. The reason Naruto never found out about the Kyubi is that apparently the Hokage place an S-rank law that prohibited anyone from telling him he had the Kyubi in him, and anyone who broke it was subjected to immediate execution. Old man, Naruto said earning a smile from the old Hokage happy to see Naruto and getting a break from the Hokage's number one enemy, paperwork. Naruto-kun, how are you? Do you need anything? The Hokage asked. Even thought the Hokage wasn't actually related to Naruto he has grown quite close to him in the last couple of years treating him like a grandson. I wanted to ask you if you could tell me who my parents are. Naruto asked messing up with the Hokage a bit before he tell him what happened. I wonder how he will react, eh eh, he thought. I already told you Naruto, I'm sorry but I don't know you your parents are. All I know is that they are heroes that died fighting the Kyubi, the Hokage replied. He couldn't tell Naruto who his parents are he was too young. Gigi, before I tell what I came here for can you tell your Anbu to leave? I only want to tell you this. Naruto said getting a surprised face from the Hokage. How do you know that there are Anbu in the room? He asked to which Naruto replied saying, 
I can sense them above the ceiling, Naruto replied. Very well, the Hokage said and with the flick of a hand he signaled his four Anbu bodyguards to leave the room. Now Naruto want do you want to tell me, he asked. Gigi, are you sure you sent them all away I can still sense another person there, Naruto said pointing behind that bookcase. Once Naruto said that the four Anbu quickly returned and dashed towards the intruder and quickly immobilizing it. The intruder had normal Anbu gear, black pants and steel plate in the chest for protection, but his mask was completely white with the kanji for ROOT. Damn that Danzo, sticking his nose where he shouldn't, Hokage thought. Naruto, you are indeed a skilled sensor, you actually caught an intruder that was in here, Hokage said, oh I knew that I was awesome. Naruto replied getting a chuckle from the old Hokage. After the room was empty Naruto approached the pictures of the previous Hokages and stopping in front of the picture of the fourth, turning to the Hokage he said, anything you want to tell me. The Hokage paled when Naruto asked him, H how did you find out? The Hokage asked wondering how did Naruto find out? Very few people knew that Minato was his father. Now that I think about it, I could almost be his twin. I wonder how I anyone never noticed, Naruto said and started explaining everything that happened leaving the Kyubi helping him, he being Madara's grandson and him having the Sharingan. Minato really was a genius, to think even dead he gives me headache, the Hokage thought. Now that you know, what are you going to do? You know you can't tell anyone, the Hokage asked. I'm going to train to become strong like my father was and then I'm going to take that hat of yours. Naruto replied getting a chuckle from the old Hokage to which he said. I have no doubt you will. Chapter 04. Training begins. Hash hash one year later hash hash. One year has passed since Naruto found who his father was and training couldn't be going better, with the help of the Kyubi. Naruto was now six years old and that he was never caught by the villagers except if there was a trained shinobi among them even then Naruto managed to fool him to escape. Kayubi had Naruto training primarily in chakra control, since one of the benefits of having a tailed beast sealed inside of a human is that it gave that person ungodly amounts of chakra and almost unending stamina, however if you mix the Kayubi with what you might call the Uzumaki bloodline. It wasn't exactly a bloodline but many members called it the, tailless beast curse. Members of the Uzumaki clan had unmatched amounts of chakra. The regular chunin of the Uzumaki clan had same amount of a cage. Naruto was only six years old but already had enough chakra to match most janin. However with so much chakra control was extremely difficult. In the beginning any jutsu that Naruto tried he overwhelmed it with chakra causing it to fail or blow up in his face. The first jutsu the Naruto learned was Henge no jutsu that allowed Naruto to change its appearance. Naruto actually asked the Hokage for him to teach him. Hash hash flashback one year ago hash hash. Hey old man. Call you teach man the henge, Naruto asked. Why do want to learn it, can't you wait for the academy to start? The Hokage asked to which Naruto replied, ever since I found out who my father was I want to train and grow stronger, but I need to enter the library and I can't because they think of me as the Kyubi. The Hokage lowered his head ashamed he couldn't convince the villagers or protect Naruto, I'm sorry Naruto, I tried my best to protect you, he said. No worries, just teach it to me. It will help me to get into the library and not get expelled from stores too, Naruto said. Okay, it's very simple. The hand seals are dog bore ram, then you release chakra to cover your body and think of the image you want, the Hokage said in which Naruto tried to transform into the Hokage and the result was, I don't even know what it was. Go train now, I have work to do, the Hokage said. Okay, thank you, catch you later, he replied. Hash hash and flashback hash hash. With Henge at his side his life got significantly better. Although he hated to pretend to be someone else with the Henge he managed to enter the library and go to stores and get good food for normal prices. What surprised him was that the villagers were actually friendly and good persons, the hate for the Kyubi simply clouded their judgment. Naruto promised that one day he would get their acknowledgement and if couldn't at least they would respect his power. He wouldn't want to make people fear him but it would better then discard him like trash. Even though Naruto wouldn't have access to the shinobi section of the library since he was a civilian he decided to try and henge into one the shinobi. It worked like clockwork the secretary didn't have shinobi training so she couldn't detect Naruto's henge. He searched the shinobi section and found what he wanted. 
Introduction to Chakra Control, Basics of Chakra, and even read a few scrolls for the basic forms of Taijutsu, Academy Taijutsu. One the best things he could ever hope for was his Sharingan. Even though for now his Sharingan still had one Tomo in each eye. Anytime he found any shinobi in the training's grounds he watched with his Sharingan to try and learn what he could. Even though the Sharingan was in its first level he could see glimpses of a few jutsus. After watching a spar between two Chun and Naruto managed to copy the Kawerimi no jutsu. Naruto decided one night to sneak around the village into the Namikaze compound. Naruto bit his finger to draw blood and pressed it against the main gates. There was a poof of smoke and the gate unlocked. The compound itself was small, much smaller than that of the Hyugas or the Uchihas. He first thought of moving into the compound but he couldn't let anyone see him so he decided to wait until he revealed who he was. Looking around the compound, it had five rooms, three bathrooms, three living rooms and a couple storage rooms. But the biggest room was the library, it had tons of scrolls of taijutsu, ninjutsu and a few genjutsu, books in fuinjutsu written by his father and from Uzumaki clan including kenjutsu. There were journals, and diaries of the clan. His father must have collected what he found about the clan and stored it here along with his mother since she also was the last of her clan. After searching Naruto decided to open a few scrolls until he found his father personal taijutsu style. The Namikaze were never a shinobi clan, they were only civilians. Minato hoped to start his clan along with the Uzumaki in Konoha. Minato never actually named his style but it appeared to a mix between Hyuga's gentle fist style with the Uchiha's interceptor fist which relied in the Sharingan. The style was based in predicting and avoiding the enemy's attacks with fast counter-attacks to the enemy's pressure's points. One strike was all it was necessary to disable arms, legs and even paralyze completely or kill the enemy. It was similar to gentle fist style of the Hyugas instead of attacking Tenkatsu, chakra points, it focused pressure points. Naruto's training program was killer. With the help of the Kayubi to guide him he started in the morning and worked all day long so that after sleep he could start again next day. One fateful day Kayubi forbade Naruto of his constant ramen eating forcing him to eat vegetables and balanced diet. It was a dark day. Along with his training Naruto also were weights to increase his muscle mass and speed. Only a couple of pounds so it wouldn't stunt his growth. He was six years old after all, but he was already at level of a genin except he couldn't the bushin no jutsu. The minimum amounts of clones he could was 100 which wasn't very helpful when Naruto only wanted one. At least it would confuse the enemy to no end. The first weapon that Naruto decided to learn was the bow. He read about it in a book and since the Hokage was master with this type of weapon he asked if he could borrow a few scrolls. Currently Naruto always had with him a wooden bow, to anyone else it was simply a piece of wood, however Naruto was a level 2 bow master, 2 of 5 at 6 years old. The biggest development Naruto had was his tactical mind, maybe it was having a fox sealed in him which made Naruto extremely cunning and skillful in traps, combining this with a mind of a prankster the next few years would be dark times for Konoha. One day Naruto was walking through the village, since his henge wasn't up he got the usual glares and the occasional empty bottle thrown at him which he simply dodged. Naruto was going for his weekly ramen meal. The Kayubi allowed Naruto to eat a ramen meal twice a week which is better than none at all. Stupid fox and his vegetables, he thought. Ungrateful brat, if you eat only ramen you will become a midget. You need a proper diet to grow, said the Kayubi. In the last year Naruto and Kayubi have grown closer. As close as a human and a fox can, after you ignore the constant bickering and death threats they both liked and respected each other. Fine, I get it fur ball, Naruto replied and continued walking to his ramen stand. Naruto was walking not really paying attention to anything around him until he heard a couple kids arguing about something, getting curious he looked closer. He found three kids around the age of 10, most likely academy students that were messing with a little girl. She looked like she was his age. She had neck length dark blue hair and white eyes, trademark of the Hyuga clan. Deciding to help her he run up to them. Hey, leave her alone, Naruto said trying to get thugs away from the girl. Oh a kid playing hero. Get lost before we hurt you too, they said which made Naruto jump in front of them shielding the girl. Deciding to prove his point he adopted his bow style defensive stance. His left leg slightly ahead of his right, knees bent both hands grasping his wooden bow in a downward position. 
A. N. I. H. E. N. stance. He's trying to scare us. Let's teach him a lesson, they said and pushed forward. One of boys sent his right arm forward trying to punch Naruto. Naruto simply used his bow to strike the boy's hand out of the way. Naruto then flipped his bow sending a strike to the boy's chin, like an uppercut. Another boy tried to punch Naruto to which he ducked and using his bow stroke the boy's leg making him stumble forward to which Naruto kneed the boy hard in the stomach leaving him in the ground in pain. Naruto turned to the last boy who froze his attacks after seeing his friends effortlessly defeated. Picking up his friends he decided to run away before he also got hurt. Naruto turning to see the girl asked, Are you okay? I'm f fine tt thank why you, the girl stuttered. Naruto didn't know if she was afraid of him but he guessed she was just shy. No problem, I'm Uzumaki Naruto, what's your name? He asked. H Hyuga H Hanada, she replied looking at her savior. Even though she was still young she couldn't help but to blush and look down. Naruto was six years old but was quite a good looking young man. Come on let me help you up. He said grabbing her hand and pulling her up gently, he noticed that she didn't have the cage bird seal in her forehead, he remembered hearing the Hyuga heiress was his age meaning that the girl in front of him was heiress to the Hyuga clan, she was pretty much Konoha's little princess. Hey, I'm going to lunch at Ichiraku's wanna come? He asked to which Hanada slowly nodded. They walked together and Hanada seeing how the villagers glared at Naruto wondered why. The walk was calm, they didn't talk much since Hanada was terribly shy. Arriving to the stand Naruto ordered chicken ramen for both of them. Oh, Naruto is this your girlfriend? A young girl from behind the counter asked in a teasing manner. Her name was Ayame she was in her teens, she had brown hair and eyes and a pretty face. She was wearing simple clothes and had a white apron. And no, nothing like that. We just met a couple minutes ago, he replied blushing a bit, even though he just met her he could see that she was actually quite pretty and she would grow up to become a very beautiful woman. Hanada didn't say anything she just blushed really hard and looked away so that no one could see her. They talked a bit during their dad, ERRM. I mean meal. When they were finishing the food, a Hyuga member appeared and looked at Hanada. His name was Ko a branch member and Hanada's bodyguard. Hanada-sama, there you are. Your father is waiting for you, he said taking Hanada's hand and starting to leave. Be by Naruto-kun, I it was nice to meet why you, she said to which Naruto gave her foxy grin and looked at his meal to finish it. Looks like you got yourself a little vixen, the Kayubi said chuckling, she's not my girlfriend, Naruto thought getting angry. You say that now, but I'll see in a couple of years, the Kayubi said chuckling. Perverted fox, he thought. After he finished the meal he paid for it and left to his training. Hash hash few weeks later hash hash. Naruto was walking to his home. He had just finished his training and it was like any other day, painful. He was sore all over. During the last few weeks he increased his taijutsu training and started with weapons. He could now use kanai and shuriken with deadly accuracy and with the sharingan he picked it up quickly. During his training he managed to level up his sharingan to level 2. Naruto now had two black tomos in each eye and he was very proud of himself. He heard rumors of the Uchiha clan prodigy that managed to fully master the Sharingan at the age of eight. Naruto said that he was going to fully mature it even sooner and as fate would have it, Naruto didn't know how right he was. During his walk home he sensed two chakra signatures moving quietly through the woods. Placing two fingers in the ground and focusing in their chakra he found that one of those chakra signatures belonged his friend Hanada he met a few weeks ago. Wondering what she was doing this later in the day he went in search of her. When he arrived near both of them he saw a shinobi. It was a Kumo shinobi from his headband. He recognized this shinobi, it was the Kumo's ambassador for the new alliance between Konoha and Kumo. He noticed that he was carrying a bag in his back to which Naruto sensing Hinata's chakra knew she was being kidnapped. Quickly throwing a couple of shurikens at the shinobi. The shinobi easily deflected them all and faced the attacker and was surprised. It was a small kid. Hey kid, leave before I kill you. I am Jonan, you are no match for me, he man arrogantly said. But it was true Naruto was genin level and he couldn't match a Jonan's power, however Naruto was cunning. He knew that he needed to alert someone to come and help. Naruto, switch with me, I'll send a fireball to the sky to alert the Anbu, 
Naruto agreed and switched with the Kyubi. The Kyubi quickly went through a few hand seals looked at the sky and yelled. Kaden. Gukaku no Jutsu, Fire Style. Fire Ball Technique. The Kumo Shinobi was impressed. A six-year-old performing AC rank fire technique, he shouldn't have chakra for that. Naruto just knew that he had to stall the man and activated his Sharingan. He didn't care if his secret got out as long Hinata stayed safe. The Kumo Shinobi decided to engage and quickly kill the kid to leave before reinforcements arrived. The Kumo Shinobi threw a couple shurikens and yelled, Shuriken Cage Bushin no Jutsu, the shuriken multiplied to a few dozens. Naruto couldn't deflect them all and jumped to the left to which the enemy was waiting and kicked him hard in the stomach and punched in the face, Naruto crashed into a tree and fell to the ground clutching his stomach in pain. The Kumo Shinobi walked to Naruto thinking he just won, after all it was just a small kid. Then he noticed his eyes they were the Sharingan and he thought, an Uchiha rescuing a Hyuga how ironic, but still I'll take him too. Two bloodlines are better than one and the Sharingan is one of the most powerful. The shinobi went to grab Naruto by the neck but stumbled forward when he noticed it was a Bushin. Naruto took this opportunity, removing his weights and channeling a bit of the Kyubi's chakra, his body couldn't take much right now, charged in a burst of speed to the shinobi with a kanai in his hand and pressing his kanai against the man's chest effectively killing him. The kumo shinobi wondered how it happened, how could a kid this age be so fast and defeat him and then he noticed his blood red eyes with three black tomos in each eye glowing and spinning. The shinobi fell to the ground dead. Naruto knew he just killed the enemy and it was his first kill, even though he was ashamed of what he did, he needed to do it. The man wouldn't leave without Hinata and he had to protect her. Growing up alone turned made Naruto overprotective, he would fearlessly jump and destroy another village to protect his friends. Since he never had any, the few he has he would give his life to protect. Getting up slowly he stumbled a bit forward, looked like that kick broke a few ribs. Walking to Hinata he opened the bag and Hinata saw her savior for the second time. It was the blonde kid she met a few weeks ago. She then quickly jumped and hugged and started crying. Ush, it's okay. You are safe now. I won't let anyone hurt you, he whispered to her to comfort her. She was hugging him when the reinforcements arrived leaded by Hyuga Hiyashi, Hyuga clan leader, and he saw what happened. Apparently the demon brat killed the Kumo Shinobi and saved his daughter. He walked to Naruto yanking him from Hanada. Stay away from her. Even thought I appreciate what you did, I would like if kept your distance from her, Hiyashi said in cold and hard tone. Grabbing Hanada's hand and leaving he said, you are still weak, you are too soft and almost ended up being kidnapped. You are unworthy of being the heir of the clan, he said and left without even letting Hanada say goodbye to Naruto. The Hokage arrived a few minutes later and the Anbu told him what happened. He eyes widened when he noticed it was Naruto who saved Hinata and managed to kill the Kumo Shinobi. Naruto, are you all right? How are you feeling? The Hokage asked concerned. The first kill was the hardest and sometimes broke Shinobi and ended their carrier before it even started. I'm all right, only a couple of broken ribs but the fur ball will take care of that. Even though I feel bad that I killed him I knew it was the only option. I knew I needed to delay him as much as I could and if opportunity presented itself kill him. So don't worry about me. It's the life of the shinobi after all. Naruto said with a weak smile that the Hokage caught. I understand Naruto. Don't worry. Tomorrow come see me I'll give you the payment of a B rank mission for this. The Hokage said ruffling his hair and Naruto nodded and started to walk home. Even though he killed a man tonight he managed to save Hanada and actually he broke the Uchiha's prodigy record. Looks like I got my Sharingan matured at age 6 inches he said to himself chuckling as he went home to a long night of sleep. Chapter 5 Couple of Losers Hash hash one year later, Naruto seven years old hash hash. In the last year many things happened around Konoha and even more with our loud blonde. He was now seven year old kid. Naruto changed his outfit. He now wore dark green pants, a blue t-shirt with an orange sleeveless jacket. A. N. Check profile for image. A couple of weeks ago there was an incident that shocked Konoha. The Uchiha's clan prodigy Uchiha Itachi massacred his own clan leaving only his little brother alive. This event turned his little brother Uchiha Sasuke into an avenger wishing only to kill his older brother to avenge his fallen clan. The Uchiha clan even though were arrogant pricks they were a powerful and highly respected clan in Konoha. 
The funeral service was huge. Every person in Konoha attended and paid their respects with the Hokage delivering the eulogy. Naruto watched from afar with a sad face. He may not have liked the Uchihas, but in a way they were family. He also felt a bit glad that he never told anyone he was an Uchiha or maybe he also would be sleeping underground right now. Naruto decided that after this incident maybe it would be better to tell the Hokage about his legacy but still keeping it a secret from the village for now. What would the village think if right after the Uchiha massacre, the demon brat appeared using the Sharingan and being one of the last Uchihas? Man, I would be eaten alive, he though. He would most likely be forced to when ready be a sperm donor to restart his clan. He was the demon brat, he would most likely be used and when not necessary discarded. He thought about approaching Sasuke but when he saw him in the academy, the kind of personality he had, power hungry, arrogant he wisely chose to forget him and let him be. The academy in Konoha start at age 8 to anyone who wishes to become a shinobi of Konoha. The curriculum lasts 6 years and ends with the students being 14 years old and genin rank should they pass their exams. The academy starts with history, math and other general topics, then goes for chakra theory and principles to stealth, weapons training, traps and tactical training and ends with taijutsu and ninjutsu training. When the Naruto showed the Kayubi his academy curriculum he wondered how the hell was Konoha the strongest shinobi village in the elemental nations. This year's class was very special. Naruto's class was filled with clan's heirs. There was the Inazuka known for their dog partners and collaboration ninjutsu. The heir of the clan was Inazuka Kiba, a loud and brash kid, he had brown hair and two red markings, one in each cheek, symbol of his clan. There was the Akamichi clan. Their heir was Akamichi Choji, a small boy with large bones, anyone who called him fat gets smashed. Their clan was known for using techniques that relied on high calorie usage, meaning Choji was always eating. There was the Yamanaka clan. Their heiress was Yamanaka Ino, she had long blonde hair and wore a dark pink outfit. Her clan used mind techniques. They could read thoughts with mere touch, confused and make enemies attack each other and even take control of the enemy's body. There was the Nara clan. Their heir was Nara Shikamaru. He had pineapple-style hair and wore mesh shirt with black sleeveless jacket and black pants. He was lazy and mostly slept through classes. The Nara clan was known for its members having high IQ and being extremely skilled in strategy and planning. Shikamaru's father was actually the head of the strategy division of the village. There was the Abarame clan. Their heir was Abarame Shino. He has a collected guy, distant to everybody. He had black sunglasses and wore a gray clock that pretty much only showed his glasses. His clan rely on using bugs to fight. Their children once born are implanted with bugs that feed on their chakra so they can use them to fight. There was the Uchiha clan. The last member of his clan and heir was Uchiha Sasuke. He wore blue shirt with the Uchiha crest in the back and white shorts. The Uchiha clan was known for their high affinity for fire and their Keke Genke, bloodline limit, the Sharingan that Naruto also had. Naruto was an Uchiha after all. There was also a girl named Haruno Sakura, she had pink hair and wore a pink dress. Even though she wasn't from any clan she was in this class. She was the daughter of Haruno Akira which was a member of the civilian council. Figures, he thought. The last clan was no other than the Hyuga clan and their heiress Hyuga Hanada. The Hyuga clan much like the Uchihas were known for their dujutsu the Byakugan. This bloodline limit when active allowed them to see chakra with high detail, almost 360 degree vision and long range extending to kilometers if trained enough. The clan also have the gentle fist taijutsu style which is renowned to be the strongest form. Hanada and Naruto met a couple years ago after Naruto saved her twice and she developed a crush on him. Both of them met a few times along the years and became close friends and even though neither of them would admit they both liked each other more than simple friends. The current year was going down without much trouble, Naruto decided to accept the Kayubi suggestions regarding Academy and use a mask. The Kayubi suggested Naruto to hide his real strength. Deception is the ninja's greatest weapon, and so Naruto opted to show his mask by being a loud, knucklehead, dumb kid. He chose to become the dead last and it was a wise choice, since every teacher tried his best to make look bad he couldn't rise suspicion, for now. I bet the civilian council would have me stay weak forever if they could, Naruto thought as he tried to sleep in the classroom. Hash hash one year later hash hash.
In the last year Naruto grew more than he could hope for. Thanks to his matured Sharingan he managed to copy an extremely useful technique while watching two Jonin spar. Flashback. Naruto was approaching a training field hoping that it would be empty when he sensed two powerful chakra signatures. Suppressing his chakra something that the Kyubi taught him he could actually sneak up on people extremely well. Being a sensor allowed him to know if he was actually suppressing his effectively or not. He approached and started to watch them. So Kakashi are you ready for our next youthful challenge, said a Jonin that was wearing full body green spandex suit a Jonin flat jacket. He had the thickest eyebrows Naruto had ever seen. Not paying attention the silver-haired ninja identified as Kakashi said, said something guy. Damn you Kakashi and your hip ways. Our score stands 50 to 50 shall we begin? Guy asked to which Kakashi nodded. Kakashi had silver gravity defying hair, he wore that standard Jonin clothes, black pants, mesh shirt with Jonin flat jacket, and covering his left eye was the Konoha Hitayat, A.N. I think it's called Hitayat. Naruto watched in wonder the speed on the battle. His fully matured Sharingan allowed him to follow every single move each one of them did. The battle went for a couple of minutes until Kakashi pulled up as Hitayat reveling a Sharingan. What? How can he have a Sharingan? I thought all Uchiha's were killed minus Sasuke. Naruto thought wondering how could Kakashi have the Sharingan. Kakashi was very popular in Konoha he was the son of Hitaki Sakumo Konoha's white fang known to be as powerful as a Sanin, so he couldn't be Uchiha. Look carefully Kit, he hides it under the Hitayat so it's probably an implant, the Kyubi replied. The battle continued and Naruto copied a few jutsu including one that would help Naruto immensely and would later become his trademark. Cage Bush and no jutsu, shadow clone jutsu. End flashback. Armed with the cage bushin that Naruto realized that it transferred his memories to the original he started using for training. For now Naruto's limit was about a 1000 clones. If anyone saw him making saw many would most likely call a monster, after all this technique was an a rank kinjutsu, forbidden technique, for his massive chakra usage that would kill most shinobis. Since Naruto already had cage level reserves using this technique barely affected his reserves. Something that Naruto wondered was if using the Sharingan gave photographic memory because he remembered everything he saw. Naruto was walking to the Hokage Tower, he decided that after what happened to the Uchiha clan it would be the best choice to tell the Hokage he had the Sharingan. Hash hash Hokage Tower hash hash. Hey Gigi, said Naruto with foxy grin. The Hokage seeing Naruto gave him a smile, he barely got to see him nowadays and wondering if he was always training. Oh. Naruto-kun haven't seen you in a while. How is your training going? The Hokage asked. It's going very well I actually got a few awesome techniques, Naruto said smiling. I can probably take you on, old man, he said chuckling. I'm not that old Naruto-kun, so what brings you here? The Hokage asked. Well I have a few things I chose to tell me if you promise to not reveal it until I'm ready, Naruto said with a serious face. The Hokage wondering what it could be made a hand gesture and the Anbu left the room. Naruto did a few hand seals and said, Fuinjutsu, cone of silence. The Hokage gasped for air when he saw Naruto perform a C-rank Fuinjutsu, but since he knew who his father was wouldn't be much surprising he was following his footsteps. Impressive Naruto-kun, eight years old and studying Fuinjutsu, the Hokage said impressed. Actually Gigi. I never told you everything about what happened when I is six years old you know, said Naruto with an embarrassed laugh. Now Gigi pay attention to me, he said, Naruto closed his eyes and started to channel chakra to them. Slowly opening them he showed them to the Hokage. Blood red eyes with three black tomos in each, the Sharingan. The Hokage heart missed a beat and his eyes bulged out almost popping out of his head. The Hokage simply asked, how? Well. I am an Uchiha by my father's side, he replied. How is it possible? Minato never had the Sharingan, the Hokage asked wondering how could Minato never told him. I'll explain everything, he said disabling his eyes, for starters I will tell you that my grandfather was none other than Uchiha Madara. That was the final straw poor Hokage's heart gave out and he fainted. Naruto seeing this sweat dropped. And he says he's not old. He thought out loud picking up the Hokage and laying in the couch. A couple minutes later the Hokage started to awake and saw Naruto waiting. You awake already, Jez. Here, 
Naruto said giving him a cup of tea. I'm sorry Naruto. I still can't believe it. How can this be? The Hokage asked wondering how could Madara have a son and no one knew. And his son was Minato Namikaze of all people. He has blonde hair for Kami's sake. Naruto started explaining what his father told him. Madara survived his battle with Hashirama and was saved by a woman who would years later become his lover. They had a son and when his grandmother was killed Madara decided to continue with his plans and left Minato in the village. So Madara was still alive. Who would have thought Madara had a son? The Hokage said taking in the information. Well Naruto-kun I will guard this secret until you are ready to show everyone who you really are. Remember you have three legacies to continue. Your mother's Uzumaki clan, and both your father's and Uchiha Madara's legacy, he said. Don't worry Gigi. I plan on revealing everything when I'm strong enough to protect me and everyone I care about. My father and grandfather both had a talent to piss of Iwa and I don't need problems right now, he said chuckling. That they did, the Hokage thought how Iwa suffered at the hands of both Minato Namikaze and Uchiha Madara. But when I reveal who I am if they ever try to hurt me or someone I care about I will burn their village to the ground, Naruto said in serious and cold tone. I wouldn't put it past them, that damn Onoki the Suchikage is an old and stubborn fool. Be careful, the Hokage said. Naruto, I wanted to ask you how can you already fully matured Sharingan it's very rare to even awaken it to early in life. You see Gigi. I awakened it when I was five years old after some shunan tried to attack me and I matured it when I killed the Kumo ninja that tried to kidnap Hanada. He explained to which the Hokage nodded it made sense, the Sharingan awakens and evolves in life and death situations. So that's how you were able to keep up with a Jonin. The Sharingan truly is a terrifying power, the Hokage exclaimed, the Sharingan allowed a six-year-old to kill a trained shinobi. I'm going Gigi. I just thought you should know after what happened to the Uchihas, Naruto said leaving the Hokage's office. He will one day really take this hat from me, the Hokage thought chuckling. Hash hash Konoha streets hash hash. Naruto was walking through the streets of Konoha going to a training field to find out and start training his elemental affinities. He already knew that most likely he would have fire from the Uchiha blood but he could have more or not even fire, better safe than sorry. Naruto was walking peacefully keeping himself in the shadows not to have problems until he heard someone crying checking so see who was it, he noticed it was Hinata, she had her knees to her chest and was crying. Naruto quickly rushed to her side. Hinata-chan what's wrong? Why are you crying? He asked worried to help her. Hinata seeing Naruto quickly hugged him crying even more. Naruto tried to ask what was wrong but she didn't answer. Naruto started whispering comforting words saying it would be alright until she fell asleep in his chest tired from crying. Naruto picked her up bridal style and took her to his apartment, he laid her in his bed took a chair and sit by her said, grabbing her hand he fell asleep minutes later. After a few hours, it was late at night around 2 am Hanada started to wake up, opening her eyes not knowing where she was she jumped up awakening Naruto who was by her side. Seeing that he was by her side she couldn't help but blush until she remembered everything that happened yesterday. Hanada-chan what happened? You can tell me I will help, Naruto said trying his best to help her. Hanada was looking at the ground sad, she decided to tell him everything and started to remove a piece of cloth that was tied to her forehead, she removed it showing a green tattoo, it was the cage bird seal. Naruto seeing this was shocked they branded the heiress of the clan. My FF father S said I WW as to W week to be the H heiress O of T the clan so H he B branded M me and D disavowed F from the H Hyuga C clan, she said looking at the ground. Naruto was furious how could they do that to family, branding it's a despicable decision but to remove a member and even his daughter from the clan for being weak. It's okay Hanada-chan, you are not weak and, you have me, he said slightly blushing. But I'm weak, I was almost kidnapped. I was the same age as you and you managed to save me. I'm nothing more than a loser, she replied crying and yelling. Letting all her anger and frustration out. No, Hanada you are not weak. You are a kind, loyal, hard working and a beautiful person, he said getting blush from her. Look at me, he said taking his hand to her chin and raising her head, they locked eyes and he continued. I'm hated by everyone in the village, they all call me demon and try to hurt me, 
To them I'm nothing more than a loser that shouldn't even be allowed to live but I don't give up and I never surrender that my Nindo and one day I will prove to them that I'm strong. He exclaimed getting a smile from her. Is it because of the Kaiubi? She asked she knew it would be sore subject. H how do you know? Naruto asked stuttering a bit shocked she knew. Well, when I use the Byakugan I can see the red chakra in your gut and father told me stay away from you, and the villagers call you demon so I did a bit of research, she said. Do you H hate me? Naruto asked wondering if he would lose his only friend. No, of course not. I know that you aren't the Kaiubi. You are a kind, cheerful and brave person, she said hugging him. Naruto felt a tremendous weight leaving his shoulders. Hanada, let's work hard and prove to them that letting you go was the worst decision they could ever make. If you want I'll help you, he said. Really? She asked hopefully. Of course, I take care of the people I care about and love, Naruto said with a blush, lightly bending forward and softly kissing her in the lips. Hanada didn't expect that but she also loved him so she returned the kiss, gently moving her lips, she couldn't be happier her best friend, her crush, her love was kissing her and saying he loved her. Naruto couldn't be happier when Hanada returned the kiss, he thought that she never would like him more than friends. Slowly backing up and ending the kiss they were both blushing. Hanada quickly hugged him and said between sobs, Naruto-kun, thank you, I love you too. I promise Hina Haim, she blushed at the affectionate name, that I will one day remove that seal. I promise that I'll protect you and together we will show the village what a couple of losers can do, Naruto exclaimed giving her his foxy grin and kissing her cheek until she fainted. Well, that lasted longer than I thought, he said laughing. Chapter 6. Jutsus and Dreams. Hash hash couple weeks later hash hash. A couple of days after Naruto found Hanada, he asked if she would like to live with him to which she accepted and they began to do everything together, living, eating and training. They would even sleep cuddled together. Naruto taught Hinata the cage bushin and even thought she could only make one it was enough. They started sending them to the academy except in days where there was taijutsu training. Naruto also took Hinata to the Hokage and explained everything that happened. To say that the Hokage was pissed was an understatement, but since she was considered an orphan now Sarutobi agreed to give her a month allowance until they became genin. Naruto suggested Hinata that they kept their connection a secret until they were older. He didn't want the villagers to give her the same treatment he receives. In the academy each took their different seats to not arouse suspicion. And so they started sending Cage Bushin to the academy and training together. Hinata during the last days got to meet the Kayubi and when she found him with the gates open she fainted. Now we find the couple in a training ground. Naruto pulled chakra paper and gave one to Hinata. Okay Hina Haim this is chakra paper, it's used to test elemental affinities just push chakra to it and we will see, explained Naruto pushing chakra to his paper it crumbled all together showing a high affinity for lightning element then the paper split in two and burst into flames. See, I have three affinities. My primary seems lightning and secondaries wind and fire, he said as he already suspected fire and lightning from his father after all he was an Uchiha and his Hiroshin is a Raiden lightning element, techniques of the wind must come from my mother. It was a shame that he didn't have any defensive element but he could always create his own techniques. Hanada pushed chakra to her paper and it split in two getting bother sides wet. Looks like you have wind like me and also water, now then let's start training. I'll start with fire since our village is known for them. You should start with water because wind is extremely rare in Konoha, he explained and both started the usual way Naruto made 100 cage bushes and tried to burn a leaf and Hinata getting it wet. Naruto and Hinata both went to the library in Henges, they didn't want any problems and got a few techniques for each of their natures. Naruto decided to go into the Uchiha compound since the Uchiha were known for their fire techniques and with the Sharingan they should have plenty of techniques for all elements. Well, actually they would be breaking into a clan library and stealing techniques but Naruto was an Uchiha so he should have access to them. Dash. Hash hash outside the Uchiha compound late night hash hash. Both Naruto and Hinata stood outside the Uchiha compound dressed purely in black. Naruto had his Sharingan active as well Hinata's Byakugan to check for any other shinobis. Making their way through the gates and into the library that was located in the main house they spotted their classmate Sasuke who was awake. They quickly got behind him and knocked him out with a chop to the neck and made their way to the library. 
The library was huge to say the least, as expected from a power-hungry clan with copying eyes. The library was divided into sections, ninja arts, clan history, records and diaries. Both of them made their way to the shinobi section and it had ninjutsu, taijutsu, and genjutsu sections. The ninjutsu section was divided in elements. Fire element, water element, earth element, wind element, lightning element and non-elemental techniques. Each of this section was subdivided and had scrolls on how to learn each of these manipulations but also techniques of various ranks. They started going through a few scrolls until Hinata said, they are all blank, she said getting a confused look from Naruto. Naruto could easily see the instructions for the jutsus until he discovered it. I get it, only someone with the Sharingan can read the contents of the scrolls, to anyone else they seem empty. It's a neat trick actually, he said getting a frown from Hinata. Don't worry I'll read them all and teach you the water jutsu I find he said making 20 cage bushin and started going through the techniques. Fire element. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu, great fireball technique, C rank. Sends a massive fireball to the enemy. Kaden. Hosenka no jutsu, phoenix fire technique, C rank. Sends small fireballs to the enemy that burn on contact. Kaden. Ruka no jutsu, dragon fire technique, C rank. Sends a torrent of fire shaped in the form of a dragon towards the enemy. Kaden. Goryuka no Jutsu, Great Dragon Fire Technique, B rank. Sends a torrent of fire shaped in the form of a dragon towards the enemy. Improved version of Ryuka no Jutsu. Kaden. Karyuden no Jutsu, Fire Dragon Bullet, B rank. Created by Sandame Hokage. Sends a volley of small fireballs that melt anything or explode on contact. Kaden. Zukoku no Jutsu, Cranium Carver, B rank. Sends a fireball to the ground that explodes creating massive heat wave. Kaden. Hisekusho no Jutsu, Ash Pile Burning, B rank. Sends a stream of chakra empowered gunpowder and surrounds the enemy, the user can ignite the cloud by clicking its teeth creating great explosion. Water Element. Mizu Bunshin no Jutsu, Water Clone, B rank. Creates a water clone with 10% of the original strength. Mizu Shuriken Bunshin no Jutsu, Water Shuriken, D rank. Creates and sends to the enemy water form Shurikens, the numbers varies with the amount of chakra. Mizu no Muchi, Water Whip, C rank. The user creates a whip of water that can restrain or do the damage to the enemy. Sweden. Sushoha, Exploding Water Wave, A rank. The user expels large quantities of water through his mouth the crashed unto the enemy. Sweden. Baku Sushoha, Great Exploding Water Wave, S rank. Improved version of Sweden. Sushoha. Sweden. Debakufu no Jutsu, Waterfall Vortex, A rank. Creates a waterfall that then crashes down onto the enemy. Sweden. Swiryuden no Jutsu, Water Dragon, B rank. Creates a water dragon that captures and smashes the enemy into the ground. Sweden. Sujinheki, Water Wall, C rank. Creates a defensive water wall. Sweden. Suro no Jutsu, Water Prison, C rank. Creates a sphere of water that traps the enemy within preventing their escape. Sweden. Tepudama, Water Bullet, C rank. The user launches couple O water bullets to the enemy. Earth Element. Suchi Bunshin no Jutsu, Earth Bushin, C rank. Creates an Earth Bushin. Doden. Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, Double Suicide Decapitation Technique, D rank. The user grabs the enemy from underground and emerges from it burying the enemy. Doden. Doryuden, Earth Dragon Bullet, B rank. The user sends many Earth Bullets to the target. Doden. Doryu Taiga, Mud River, B rank. The user creates a mud rivers that crashed into the enemy. Doden. Yomi Numa, Underworld Swamp, A rank. The user transforms the ground into a swamp that swallows and crushes the enemy. Doden. Doryuaheki, Earth Wall, C rank. The user creates an Earth Wall for defense. Doden. Domu Earth Spear, C rank. The user creates Earth Spears that emerge from under the enemy. Wind Element. Fudan no Jutsu, Wind Release, C rank. The user breathes and releases a small wind that allows for reposition while midair. Fudan. Datapa, Great Breakthrough, C rank. The user exhales a powerful and compressed gust of air that blows the enemy away. Fudan. K's Shuriken, Wind Shuriken, B rank. The user's envelops his own shurikens with a wind layer that slices through everything. Fudan. 
Rankudan, vacuum wind bullet, A rank. The user creates bullets of pressurized air that are shot at the enemy. Fudan, Shinkuaha, air blade, A rank. The user exhales a wind-like blade that slices through anything. Fudan, Atsugai, pressurized wind bomb, A rank. The user exhales large sphere of pressurized air that explodes on contact. Fudan, Repusho, wind wave, C rank. The user claps his hands together and unleashed a powerful wave of air not needing to inhale. Lightning element. Raiden. Reiku, lightning ball, C rank. The user creates a ball of lightning that is hurled at the enemy shocking him. Raiden. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, lightning clone, A rank. A shadow clone created with lightning chakra. When destroyed this chakra is transferred to the enemy shocking him. Raiden. Jion, false darkness, B rank. The user emits a lightning spear from his hand that impales the enemy. Raiden. Jibashi, electromagnetic murder, B rank. The user creates a wave of electricity that shocks everything around. Raiden Reikochu, flash pillar, B rank. An illusion technique that blinds the enemy with bright light. Genjutsu. Kokuongyu no Jutsu, bringer of darkness, A rank. The user traps the enemy with a black void blinding the enemy and dulling other senses. This illusion cannot be disrupted only the user cancels it or is forced to release it. Megan. Jigoku Guka no Jutsu, Hell Fire Technique, B rank. Creates an illusion that makes the enemy think he is being burned alive. Megan. Jubaku Satsu, Tree Binding Death, B rank. Illusion technique that grows a tree behind the enemy freezing him place and allowing for the user to attack the enemy. Megan. Kasugui no Jutsu, Shackling Stakes, C rank. The user locks eyes with the enemy effectively paralyzing him in place. Sharingan required. Megan. Kokoni Erizu no Jutsu, False Surroundings, C rank. The user cast an illusion over an area altering its appearance. Megan. Naiju Kokoni Erizu no Jutsu, Double False Surroundings, B rank. This technique places an illusion within the original illusion to mislead the enemy should he break the first one. Okay Hanada-chan. I've got most of them memorized let's go, he said and both left the Uchiha compound with a large inventory of techniques to later practice. They left the compound and were walking home, it was still early or late depending on the perspective, it was around 2 am. Hey Hanada-chan, since we still have time do you want to check out the Hyuga clan library too? Naruto asked. He knew it was a sore subject Hanada's family, he still remembered to help Hanada achieve one of her dreams. Flashback. Hash hash couple days after Hanada started living with Naruto hash hash. Naruto and Hanada were eating together after their morning workout and started talking about their dreams and hopes for the future. So Hanada-chan what are your dreams for the future? Naruto asked. Hanada was still a bit shy around him but it was starting to change. At least her stuttering and fainting was gone, almost. I know I want to become a powerful kunoichi to prove that I'm not weak, but... Even though I was disavowed from my clan I wish I could get rid of caged bird seal and unit the families. I know I may sound naive but even after my father expelling from the clan the branch family were always good to me and I want to help them back, she said with confidence. She didn't know it yet but Naruto's personality was starting to rub on her, she was becoming more confident and even started helping Naruto in his pranks. You are not naive. You are a kind person and I did promise to remove your seal and when I do we can plan to help the branch family, he exclaimed. After all with the help of his cage bushins and his father's notes on Fuinjutsu, Naruto was progressing rather nicely. End flashback. Hum, I don't know if it's a good idea. I would be hard to sneak in unnoticed, she said. After all the Byakugan was frequently used for scouting missions and was extremely difficult to sneak up into a Hyuga member much less break into the compound. Oh please, they all say they have the, all-seeing eye, but that didn't stop me for breaking into the compound and placing hitching powder on their underwear, Naruto said remembering the laughs the Hyuga received when they were constantly scratching themselves. That was you? She asked surprised. Of course, they always were stuck up pricks but I didn't do it to you, he said assuring her. Okay, if you are sure we can sneak in then am in, she said. They made their way to the Hyuga compound and watched from afar. Naruto extended his sensing ability and found four guards guarding the entrances, thankfully they didn't have the Byakugan activated. They made their way closer to the walls and waited for the guard to end his routine check. 
They channeled Chakra to their feet and climbed the wall. Once inside Hinata guided Naruto to the library since Naruto didn't actually know the compound all that well. Once inside the library the same thing happened in the Uchihas, only a Byakugan user could read the scrolls. Apparently Ninjutsu and Genjutsu were practically non-existent, they must have thought it was inferior to rely on anything else other than their bloodline. Hanada quickly opened the scrolls and started copying them and giving them to Naruto which he was storing them in a storage seal he brought. Naruto's Fuinjutsu was quite good for his age, he knew how to make simple storage scrolls of all kinds and was starting on medium-level Fuinjutsu. They left the compound with the specifics of the gentle fist style which Hanada already knew the basics and the techniques they used. Hake Kusho. 8 Divination Signs Air Palm. The user concentrates chakra on his palm and thrust it forward sending a chakra wave to the enemy. Hake Rokujuyansho. 8 Divination Signs. 64 Palms of the Hand. The user closes the main 64 tenkatsus of the enemy at an amazing speed. Hake Hayakunijuahachisho. 8 divination signs, 128 palms of the hand. Similar to the previous technique, however it closes 128 points knocking out the enemy almost instantly. Hakusho Kaden. 8 divination palms of the hand, heavenly spin, the user starts spinning and releasing chakra from all his tenkatsus of forms a protective dome around him that deflects all attacks. It's considered the Hyuga ultimate defense. Armed with new techniques they started training with more, mostly Hanada. She wanted to master the Hyuga Gentle Fist to later in life prove to them that with hard work one can outclass a genius. Chapter 7. Joys of D-Ranks. A couple of years have passed and Naruto and Hinata have grown quite a bit. They were now both 10 years old and each of them were slightly taller than kids of the same age due to their constant training. Both Naruto and Hinata were very strong when compared to others of their age if you could even compare. In the academy physical shinobi conditioning and training only start when the students are 12 years old in which they learn the academy taijutsu style coupled with ninjutsu. If they were to face Naruto or Hinata they would get demolished. They were both well-rounded shinobi however Naruto still couldn't a cast a low-level genjutsu without Sharingan to save his life. Actually he found it easier to cast high-ranking genjutsus that required more chakra than low-level ones. Even though Naruto focused a lot in chakra control bringing it to Jonin levels he still couldn't do a single Bushin. He either did at least 50 or the one will fail. Naruto finally mastered bow staff but decided to learn Kenjutsu since his mother was one of the best in the leaf. Since he couldn't get in most shops he bought couple of books in weapons forging since he had fire nature he decided to forge his own weapons with scrap metal and other weapons he found in training fields. In time he would buy chakra metal for a proper sword. In fact both of them learn Kenjutsu and the same style however Naruto favored speed and strength and Hinata being more flexible preferred to dodge the strikes. This type of Kenjutsu style much like his Taijutsu was based on parrying or dodging the attacks with quick strikes meant to end the battle in one strike. This was the Kenjutsu style of the Uzumaki clan. Uzumaki Kashina before her death was on par with the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, this group was composed by the greatest swordsmen of the mist and were not to be underestimated, in fact each of their swords had special abilities that favored each of their styles. Kashina in fact was known as Konoha's red death due to her crimson red hair color. Naruto also learned the gentle fist with Hinata and both practiced until perfected. Even though Naruto's Sharingan couldn't see the chakra points he adapted the style for pressure points. One of the problems they had was Hinata's low chakra pool so they focused on that for almost last year and managed to increase her levels quite a bit, she had low Jonin chakra levels and cage level control. Naruto had high cage chakra levels and Jonin level control. Naruto realized that Hinata was actually quite proficient in the gentle fist and asked her why did their family treat that badly when she was quite talented. The fact was that in order to learn the gentle fist effectively and train their stances and techniques one would have to use another as test subject and closing tenkatsus was quite painful so Hanada refused to that to the branch members. Hanada was too kind to even try and harm someone in order to train but with Naruto that wasn't a problem. Naruto used the shadow clone techniques to provide Hanada as much guinea pigs as she wanted and doing so her technique skyrocketed and she even managed to hold her ground against Naruto in taijutsu. In ninjutsu they both mastered their chosen affinities and the jutsu they had. Hanada started in wind and Naruto started in lightning. 
One interesting fact was that Naruto discovered was that he had high lightning affinity similar to Nadaim's water affinity. In fact Naruto wasn't really a sensor in the normal terms since he didn't sense chakra. Naruto, due to his lightning affinity, could actually feel the bioelectricity of the people around him. Knowing that he had such an affinity he started investing more and more in this element. He went to his father library and gathered all the lightning techniques that he could. Now we find Naruto walking through the village heading for the Hokage Tower. The villagers still sent the usual glares and they would still try and harm him but now with his training he managed to escape. He could have fought them but he chose not to harm them, he didn't want to give the poor Hokage more paperwork. Hash hash Hokage Tower hash hash. He arrived at the Hokage Tower and made his way up. Arriving at the Hokage's office he turned to the secretary. He never liked her and the feeling was mutual she was one of the idiotic civilians who couldn't tell the difference between a scroll and sealed kanai. Just let it go Kit, someday they will understand, the Kayubi said. Naruto nodded inwardly. Good morning, I came to talk with the Hokage, is he available? Naruto asked politely as he for once didn't want trouble. She looked up and saw that thing in front of her and with a disgusting face said, what would the Hokage want with a thing like you, she spat. You should be careful on how you address me, one wrong word and I have permission to separate your head from your shoulders, he said in a serious tone while releasing a bit of key, killer intent, as she was a civilian and too much could kill her. Tdh Hokage will see you now, she quickly said fearing for her life while showing a false smile. Naruto opened the door to see a smiling face of the Hokage. Naruto-kun how have you been? The Hokage asked. I'm fine, actually I have a favor to ask you, he said to which the Hokage raised an eyebrow. I'll do my best. What do you need? He said. Well, you see I'm ruining a bit low on cash this month and I know that I'm not a shinobi yet but would it possible for me to get a couple of D ranks? He said looking at the Hokage's thinking face. The Hokage pondered the situation. Genins always hate these missions and they tend to stockpile besides it couldn't hurt, he thought. Sure Naruto-kun but you do realize that these missions are normally done with a Jonin sensei and their Genin squad so they will take long for you, he said. No problem old man I can create my own army if I need, Naruto said placing his fingers in a cross form, channeling some a chakra and in a puff of smoke 20 clones appeared in the office. The Hokage jaw hit the floor seeing a 10 year old pull a B rank kinjutsu. Where did you learn that? You do realize that techniques is a kinjutsu for its massive chakra usage, he said trying to make Naruto understand the dangers of the technique. Relax Gigi, I copied it when I was watching Kakashi and a weird guy named Guy in green spandex shouting something about flames of youth spar, besides I have a crap ton of chakra, I can easily make a thousand clones and still be in fighting condition, he said with a smirk. The Hokage nodded slowly, Kami, he can make thousand clones at ten years old. I know he's a Jinchuriki, person with tailed beast sealed inside, but, damn. He will be a chakra powerhouse, he thought. Okay Naruto since you still aren't an official ninja I'll give you the missions and later when you become one I'll add them to your file. Come with me to the mission room, the Hokage said and they both left the Hokage's office heading towards the mission room. Hash hash Konoha's mission room hash hash. So, let's see what we got here the Hokage said going through the available missions. How many do you want? Seeing as you can create a bunch of clones I think you might be able to clear our workload, the Hokage continued. Hum, Naruto pondered, give me 10 missions, if I have time today I'll do a few more, besides Hinata decided to go visit Kurenai so I'll have the day for the missions, Naruto said picking the scrolls and opening the first. Damn cat, Naruto thought as he read the first mission. It was to retrieve a fearsome beast, the name of said beats was Tora the one-tailed demon cat. Oh please I got eight more tails, Kayubi said, besides we can always burn her a crisp and blame enemy ninja, Kayubi said chuckling and Naruto sweat dropped. Hash hash few hours later hash hash. Come here Tora, here kitty, Naruto said trying to approach the cat without having her fleeing. Naruto channeled chakra to his legs and jumped catching the cat. Tora didn't find it much fun as she started clawing him all over the place. Oh hell, I'm tired of this, Naruto said activating his Sharingan, he looked at Tora and said Megan, Kasugui no Jutsu, shackling stakes. The Genjutsu paralyzed Tora and Naruto said Megan, 
Jigoku Guka no Jutsu, Hell Fire Technique, this new genjutsu made Tora think she was being burned alive. Mufahaha. Naruto chuckled evilly as Tora screamed in pain. Kayubi seeing this sweat dropped and thought. I got a dumbass for a container. A. N. For evil laugh check. Hash hash next mission helping farmer hash hash. Naruto made his way for his next mission. He read the scroll and the mission was to cultivate a piece of land since the farmer didn't have enough time to do it himself. Naruto arrived at the site. The farmer's house was actually almost outside of the village and the land itself was fairly big. Judging from the size of the land it most likely was for planting the vegetables and later selling them. Naruto approached the client and started doing his job. The client didn't seem happy they sent the demon brat but at least the Kayubi would working for him. Almost a hour was due and Naruto continued his work using a hoe to groom the land peacefully and undisturbed until. Slam. A noise echoed through the clearing as the sound of metal clashing. Naruto removed a couple inches of dirt until he saw a metal door in the ground. What the hell is this? Naruto thought as he moved to open the hatch. Once opened he saw a bunch of stairs that seemingly lead underground. As a curious kid he was he carefully made his way down. As he was going down he couldn't help but notice the smell. One of the things of having the Kayubi inside of him was that it gave enhanced senses primarily smell and hearing. The smell itself was of death and putrefaction. Something isn't right here, Naruto thought as he began to explore what appeared a vast underground base with a long corridor with multiple rooms connected. Checking a few rooms even him couldn't help himself but to throw up, in one of the rooms of skeletons of people and a few others still decomposing. Going in further and checking another room he could see vials spread along the table with strange colored liquids and he wisely decided it would be best not to touch them. As he continued exploring the base he kept wondering how could this exist here and be kept a secret. Judging by the looks of it, it seemed that whoever lived here left in a hurry. This smell, snakes, Naruto was thinking when suddenly he pieced together the facts. He read in the library about a shinobi that used snakes as summons and defected Konoha after was found doing twisted experiments with children that he kidnapped. Orochimaru, the snake Sanin, Naruto concluded and made a shadow clone and said, go tell the old man. The clone left and Naruto continued exploring, gazing into the room so he could have a brief idea of what it contained. One of the rooms appeared to be a small study room. Entering the room and making his way to the table he saw a few seals and a multitude of vials of blood with various names in them. Senju Hashirama, Senju, Tobarama, Namikaze Minato, and few others Naruto didn't recognize. What could possibly Orochimaru want the blood of my father? Not to mention the Senju brothers, Naruto kept wondering until he saw a few notes written in what it seemed to be a diary, he continued reading until. That twisted bastard. Hash hash Hokage office hash hash. Hiruzen was having a normal day in his office and by normal I say he was cursing Minato for leaving him with the paperwork when suddenly he saw Naruto bursting through the door. Old man. Naruto started. I think I found one of Orochimaru's old bases, to which the Hokage yelled, what? I was doing one of the missions and I was cultivating a field until I hit a metal hatch, after opening it and checking inside it reeked of snakes and there were dead bodies all over, Naruto said. Anbu, the Hokage said and in front of him appeared an Anbu with a weasel mask, kneeling before the Hokage and waiting for orders. Bring me Ibiki and Anko. Hi, Hokage-sama, the Anbu said and vanished in a puff of smoke. The Hokage turned to Naruto. Naruto, are the original? He asked to which Naruto shook his head negatively. Boss is in checking the rest of the base and making sure no one enters it, the close responded. Then tell him to continue guarding the entrance until Anko and Ibiki arrive then tell him to come here immediately after, the Hokage said getting a nod before the clone dispelled. Hash hash Orochimaru base hash hash. Naruto was still going through the base until the memories of the clone hit him and he stopped and gathered what he was doing and made his way to the entrance. Naruto waited a couple of minutes before a man and woman dropped in front of him. The man was about 193 centimeters, 6 feet 4 inches, had wore traditional black anbu pants and a black jacket. He also wore a long-sleeved black jacket and a scarf that covered the top of his head. The man had a few scars in his face. Naruto recognized him from a couple of pranks he pulled, he was Morino Ibiki, a tokabetsu special, Jonin and the commander of Konoha's torture and interrogation force. 
Besides Ibiki was a woman who had approximately 167 centimeters, 5 feet 55 inches, she wore a full body mesh armor with a short brown skirt and a long trench coat that barely covered her D-cup breasts. She had purple pineapple style hair and brown eyes. Naruto assumed that this woman was Anko. Naruto facing both of them turned towards the woman and said, I assume you are Anko. I'm the sexy and single Midorashi Anko, she exclaimed pumping her fist in the air to which Naruto sweat dropped. I was doing a D-rank and came across this base and after exploring it I concluded it belonged to Orochimaru, so I informed the Hokage. My work is done. Knock yourself out, Naruto said and left towards the Hokage's office. Hash hash Hokage's office hash hash. Naruto arrived at the Hokage's office and saw him with a saddened and thoughtful look. Naruto assumed it had to do with Orochimaru, after all he was one of Hiruzen's most prized students, a genius that comes once in a lifetime, however he got caught in his own ambitions. I'm here old man, Naruto said getting the Hokage's attention. I don't even know if this should be called luck or not, the Hokage said sighing. Um, was Naruto's genius of an answer. You said that you were low on cash and wanted a few D-ranks missions and you end up finding one of my old student's laboratory. Naruto nodded and the Hokage continued, since you found it I'm upgrading the mission to S rank, you are never to speak of it and everything you found and saw inside you are never to reveal. Are we clear? The Hokage said in serious and demanding tone. Hi, Hokage-sama, Naruto replied as if he was a usual shinobi that brought a small smile to the man's face. I would call it luck, Naruto said grinning, well then I'm gonna get going. See you later Gigi he said and the Hokage nodded. Once Naruto left the room the Hokage leaned back in his chair lost in his thoughts. The wonders of D-ranks, the Hokage thought chuckling to himself. He got out of his thought and got back to work. The Hokage looked at the amount of paperwork and yelled. Damn you m-i-n-a-t-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-
In the ninjutsu department one can say Naruto is a monster, with his three affinities completely mastered and all of them offensive, Naruto is a force to be reckoned with. His arsenal contains a vast amount of techniques for every affinity including a few creations of his own. Even though Hanada's has high chakra levels if compared to anyone her age, she has Jonin level chakra reserves when should be Jenin. Her advantage over Naruto comes from extreme high chakra control rivaling Tsunade herself. Due to her control Sei learned a few medicinal jutsus for self-healing if necessary since Naruto has the fox's chakra. Going for the genjutsu section let's just say the Naruto sucks at it. The only genjutsu Naruto is even able to cast without the Sharingan activated is Kokuongyu no Jutsu, Bringer of Darkness, a genjutsu created by the Nadaime Hokage and considered a kinjutsu due to the fact that even after activated it continues to drain chakra constantly. If we check Hanada, do her control she can pretty much use all genjutsu she knows but restrains from using the Kokuongyu no Jutsu, Bringer of Darkness, since she can't spend such amount of chakra. In the weapons section both of them are extremely masterful with kanais, shurikens and senban but also kenjutsu. Naruto named the style he and Hinata learned Issei no Ryuken, Dragon's Cry Sword style, a n. Not my style, read it somewhere. Since the fact their shinobi life is about to begin Naruto had previously forged their own swords. Naruto's sword was a chikudo, straight single-edged sword, created with chakra metal for his lightning affinity. It was 20 inches long without hilt. The handle was dark orange with black stripes and in the center the Uzumaki swirl. A. N. Check profile for image. Hanada has a similar sword being the handle in lavender color. In Fuinjutsu Naruto truly honors the Uzumaki clan. His ingenuity in the art of Fuinjutsu truly is amazing. Naruto is officially a level 10 seal master. Level 10 of 10. Actually Naruto even has some of his own creations and is currently working on his father's Hiroshin technique. However the Shiki formula of the Hiroshin must be created for its own user so Naruto cannot use his father's kanais. Since the Shiki formula is tied to the user's blood, Naruto has to admit that his father truly was magnificent in creating such a simple yet complex technique. Hanada also has training in Fuinjutsu but not so extensive as Naruto. Since Naruto used his shadow clone army to pretty much devour every book. In fact I believe that Naruto managed to read almost every book in the library. One might not believe it but Naruto focused a lot of shadow clones in politics and laws of Konoha since he would have to, one day, put up with the council. In the last section we have medical training. Neither of them have extensive medical training. Hanada can use a few simple techniques to heal superficial wounds. However both of them have pretty good grasp of poisons and antidotes but also human anatomy. It's in here that the Senban come into play. Naruto can use Senban to mix with his pressure point taijutsu if necessary but also coat the Senban with paralyzing or killing poison of his own creation. All in all both Naruto and Hanada are extremely skilled and resourceful shinobi even though they are actually civilians. However any civilian that can use chakra can be considered a shinobi. Hash hash graduation day Naruto's house hash hash. The sun was coming up, its beams breaking through the window. Naruto was peacefully sleeping but began to stir as the sun started shining through the room. Looking down he saw what most likely was an angel. Hanada was sleeping with her head in his chest, the sun hitting her pale skin making her glow almost like a goddess. Kissing her in the forehead she started to stir and yawning. Tempted to open her eyes she noticed a hand slowly caressing a her hair she knew it was Naruto. She didn't want to leave his warmth and tried to snuggle closer to him, burying her face in his chest. Naruto seeing this chuckled. Hina-chan. He started. We have to get up. Don't forget it's graduation day, he said as he made a cage bushin to go make breakfast. I don't want to get up. She pouted. You are required to be my pillow, she stated to which he smirked. Pulling her shin up he slowly placed a kiss in her lips awaking up his sleeping beauty. Come on now Haim, he said rolling both of them with him on top of her he placed a few kisses along her neck making her giggle. Fine, she said finally agreeing with the blonde. Getting up and starting to get dressed. Hina-chan, it's time, he said and Hinata nodded. Today was the day their masks would come off. They were more than powerful enough to protect themselves and let the world see who they really were. Of course they wouldn't show off to the world, but the dead last, Dobi, Loudmouth blonde and the shy and kind Hanada were no more. 
Naruto now was about 165 centimeters, 5 feet 4 inches, and had two fangs of blonde hair that framed his face. He wore orange baggy pants with black flames in the bottom with white strapping in his right leg. He had white jacket with orange endings and mid-length black sleeves. In the back of the jacket it had kanji for 9. He wore black fingerless gloves with metal on the back of the hand and in each wrist bracelets with storage seals for kanai, shuriken, sanban and his sword and small belt with numerous other scrolls. Anyone who saw him now wouldn't even recognize him. Hanada was slightly shorter than him but if we would compare to the rest of the class she would one of the tallest person there. She wore black pants with white strappings holding kanai pouch and a white bulky jacket with white fur she also has a lavender piece of cloth tied in her forehead, a gift from Naruto. A. N. Like canon in part 1 without Hyuga clan symbol. You look handsome Naru kun, she said in a sweet voice that sent shivers to the blonde. Boss, breakfast is ready, the clone said and brought milk and cereals, bacon and eggs for breakfast. They both silently ate and started preparing for the last day in the academy. Thank Kami, Naruto thought. After breakfast both left the house and headed towards the academy. Hanada was wrapped around Naruto's right arm. It didn't matter anymore who saw them. It was the beginning of their shinobi careers. The walk was rather calm, many of the villagers didn't even recognize Naruto. Arriving at the academy they realized it was a bit earlier. They made their way to the back of the classroom and sit waiting for their classmates and sensei. Soon after their arrival the classroom started filling and moments later entered the almighty Uchiha Sasuke, followed of course by his horde of horny fan girls. Sasuke scanned the room and spotted both Hinata and someone with her. Discarding it he made his way to the first row and took the seat by the window so he could gaze outside when bored. Moments later Yumino Uruka walked thought the door. Said person had black pants and standard chunin flat jacket. He had brown hair tied in a ponytail and large scar across his nose. Good morning class, he said. Checking the classroom and noticing he didn't get their attention he used his patented big head jutsu and yelled, silence. Everyone quieted down Aruka started calling his students to mark their presence, until he reached, Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto was about to answer when another one beat him to it. Looks like Dobi if failing again, Sasuke said getting laughs from everyone. Are you all blind? A voice from the back of the classroom said. Getting everyone attention and looking at him like he was a ghost he said, yo, waving his hand, present, Aruka sensei. Everyone was blinking at said person still processing that he was Naruto. N Naruto. The pink banshee aka Sakura asked. The one and only, he said with his foxy grin. The whole class looked at the new look and was a vast improvement over the old one. Gotta say the new outfit looked pretty good. Uruka snapped over the surprise and finished his list. As you all know, Uruka started, today is your graduation exam. At the end of the today those who pass will become shinobi of the leaf. We will start with written exam, followed by weapons, taijutsu and finally ninjutsu. Now let's begin. Uruka said and started handing out the exams, as he got near Naruto a discreet smile appeared in Mizuki. Mizuki was Uruka assistant and like many others he hated the demon brat and tried everything so he could fail and have his revenge. Naruto sensed something strange about his exam and discreetly activated his Sharingan and discovered a well-placed Genjutsu in his test. Making a half-tiger hand seal and saying in his mind, Kai. The genjutsu dispelled and showed the real exam that Naruto started filling and after 20 minutes he was already done as was Hanada and both waited for the rest of the class. Okay class, time's up. Uruka said and Mizuki got up and started collecting the exams. After which the class moved to the training field for the weapons exam. Alright class, you have here 10 kanai and 10 shuriken that you must throw and hit the marks, Uruka explained and started calling names and each of the students moved forward for the evaluation. Uchiha Sasuke. Uruka called and suddenly every fan girl was yelling. Sasuke is the best. Go Sasuke show them. Hinata seeing this rolled her eyes and thought. And they called themselves Shinobi. Sasuke doesn't even care about them. Sasuke picked up the weapons and expertly threw them at the same time like the elite he was. Every single Kanai HT dead center in the dummies as well most of the shuriken except one that missed the high scoring area. Well done Sasuke. You got 19 out of 20 inches Aruka said and the fan girl group went wild. Sasuke was going back to his place and bumping Naruto said, 
beat that Dobi. Uzumaki Naruto. Uruka called. The blonde simply took the weapons and realized that they were blunt, simply shrugging it off and discreetly channeling a bit of lightning chakra through them so they would stick to the dummy, he threw them all at the same time hitting every single target dead center. Uruka eyes widened. Gee good J job Naruto, you got perfect score 20 out of 20 inches Uruka said congratulating him. The fan girls of course started yelling that Naruto cheated and Sasuke simply scowled the blonde. Hayuga Hanada, Uruka called. Hanada much like Naruto walked up and picked up the weapons and without flinching effortlessly threw them hitting every single target like Naruto. Uruka jaw dropped. What is up today? Hanada never was good in weapons. Congratulating Hanada. Uruka finished the rest of the class and moved to the Taijutsu exam. Okay class, for the next exam you must hold your ground against Mizuki for two minutes. Mizuki won't go very much on the offensive but be prepared, Uruka explained. Uzumaki Naruto, Uruka called. Finally, I get my hands on the demon, Mizuki thought. Naruto seeing the twisted smile in Mizuki's face decided to make him suffer a little bit. Taking his stance, knees bent with right leg slightly forward. Right arm extended forward with right palm facing the enemy while the left arm coiled near the waist. Uruka eyes widened when he recognized the stance. B but, that's the gentle fist stance, Uruka said. Poor Dobi, he even doesn't know he what he's doing, Sasuke said getting laughs from the rest of the class. Looks like Naru-kun is going to play around for a little bit, Hinata thought with a giggle. Hajime, start, Uruka said and immediately Mizuki shot forward with a closed fist trying to punch him. Naruto slightly grabbed his fist and turned to dodge. Seeing Mizuki stumble forward Naruto slightly touched Mizuki's shoulder closing one tenkatsu disabling his left arm. What did you do to me? Mizuki asked enraged as he couldn't feel his left arm. I closed the main chakra point in your left shoulder disabling your arm. It's over you can't win, Naruto explained. B but how? You don't have the Byakugan, Uruka said, how in the world could Naruto be able to close Tenkatsus? True, however the chakra points are fixed in the enemy's network, so I can remember where they are and estimate their location seeing my enemy. After that I send a small burst of chakra for area of effect since I can't actually now exactly where the chakra point is. But nonetheless it works, Naruto explained. He got surprised faces from everyone minus Hinata. To think it's possible to use gentle fist without their dujutsu, Uruka thought. You damn brat, you are going to pay, Mizuki said and pushed forward blindly. As he came close to Naruto he simply smirked and said, you are in my field of divination. Two palms, four palms, eight palms, sixteen palms, thirty-two palms. Hake Rokujuyansho, Naruto said finishing his attack sending Mizuki crashing to the wall and leaving him unconscious. Naruto left the ring area with everyone staring at him, he just pulled a main house secret technique of the Hyuga clan. Cheater, the fan girls yelled. How can that Dobi defeat a Chunin, that power should belong to me, an elite, Sasuke thought brooding in his spot. Uruka gave everyone 30 minutes interval while he picked up and took Mizuki to the infirmary. Alright, since Naruto knocked out Mizuki we are going to have the students fight in one-on-one -on -one while I observe, Uruka explained. Hayuga Hinata vs. Yamanaka Ino, Uruka called out. Poor girl, try to don't get hurt Hinata, Ino taunted to which Hinata rolled her eyes, it was time to show them who they were. Hajime, Ino quickly dashed forward. Hinata simply raised her right hand aiming for Ino, channeling chakra to her palm, she said, Hake Kusho, air palm, a blast of air was sent and hit Ino dead center in her chest throwing her out of the ring and onto the ground, leaving her unconscious. You cheated, it's taijutsu only, Sakura screeched making everyone bring their hands to their ears. That attack is considered taijutsu, sorry, Hinata explained. What in the world is going here? Hinata was never that good at taijutsu and Naruto always seemed like a street brawler, Uruka thought. Uruka picked Ino up and did quick check up on her and left her leaned against a wall waiting for her to wake up so she can pit it against someone, since he didn't see her too much. After the taijutsu exam was over everyone went inside the classroom while Uruka called which student individually for the ninjutsu portion. Uzumaki Naruto Uruka called and Naruto got up and made his down the stairs and stood in front of the classroom facing Uruka. Good luck Dobi, you are going to need it, Sasuke said smirking. 
Cool, Naruto thought. Okay, Naruto please perform the Henj no Jutsu, Aruka said and there was a poof of smoke and in front of Aruka was a man that, even though Aruka knew it was a Henj, gave him shivers as he looked at his eyes. The man's eyes were glowing and it was the Sharingan. The man in front of Aruka was Uchiha Madara. Why of all people did you pick that man? Kayubi asked. The Kayubi despised Madara after all. You may not like him and he may have done more bad than good but he still was a powerful shinobi and I have his legacy to honor, Naruto thought getting sneer from the Kayubi. I interesting choice, Uruka said discarding the shivers and continuing with the exam. Now get ready for Kawarimi, said Uruka as he picked up a blunt kanai and threw it at Naruto. Naruto switched with a chair that was nearby. Well done Naruto, now do at least two bushins, Uruka said. Naruto always sucked at Bushins and Naruto himself knew he couldn't create a single Bushin to save his life. Bushin no Jutsu, Naruto said and tried to release the least amount of chakra possible. There was a poof of smoke and in the ground there was a dead clone. The whole class started laughing. Still can't do a damn Bushin, Uruka sensei is it okay if I use another type of Bushin, Naruto asked. Sure, not problem. Uruka answered wondering what kind of Bushin Naruto was going to do. Cage Bushin no Jutsu, Naruto said. There was a poof of smoke and in front of Uruka were ten perfect clones of Naruto. Naruto smirked at the reaction of his teacher. Uruka jaw dropped seeing Naruto pulling an B-ranked Kinjutsu. Wow Naruto, Cage Bushin is a Jonin level Bushin congratulations you pass, Uruka said. Naruto smirked and picked his Hitayat in black and tied it around his forehead. Hanada went shortly after and she too aced the exam, however she could do perfect Bushins unlike poor Naruto. Okay class the exams are over congratulations to everyone that passed. This year's rookie of the year is Uzumaki Naruto and top Kunoichi is Hayuga Hanada, Uruka said happy that Naruto passed and not only that he was rookie of the year. What? Kiba yelled. How can the dead last be rookie of the year? He asked. Very simple. Both Naruto and Hinata aced the written exam, got perfect scores in the weapons exam but also taijutsu and ninjutsu, Uruka explained. Is nothing but a loser. I'm an Uchiha and elite. I demand a duel between us for the title, Sasuke said. It's your choice Naruto, Uruka said. Let's go outside, Baka, Naruto said and Sasuke smirked thinking he could take him on. Hinata just shook her head knowing where this was going. That idiot ill going to end up in the hospital. Everyone left the classroom and came to the training ground. Naruto and Sasuke stepped inside the ring facing each other, each one doing half tiger seal signifying they were ready for battle. Now this is a duel for title of rookie of the year, you can use anything. However no crippling or killing strike understood, Uruka said. Getting nods from both of them he said, Hajime. Deciding to prove his superiority and intending to end this match quickly. Sasuke dashed forward and throwing him a punch. Naruto simply sidestepped the punch, he brought his knee and hit Sasuke's stomach. Sasuke bent forward from the strike giving Naruto opportunity to give a chop in the back of his neck leaving him unconscious on the ground. It's done, Naruto said and of course the fangirls started yelling the Naruto cheated. Congratulations Naruto you are rookie of the year along with Hinata, Uruka said and both Naruto and Hinata left the academy with her wrapped around his arm. Of course Kiba seeing this got mad that Naruto was leaving with his Hinata. However the rest of the class just kept wondering what happened today. Everyone except Shikamaru that always suspected that Naruto was hiding his true strength. Shikamaru may look lazy and unfocused but he is also extremely intelligent and observant. Naruto and Hinata were walking together going to have dinner out as a celebration for graduating and becoming shinobi of the leaf. They were walking to Ichiraku's when Naruto sensed someone running through the woods. Of course Naruto remembered when Hinata was kidnapped, people running through the woods is always suspicious. Both of them decided to see what was happening and went after that person. Hash hash outpost hash hash. Mizuki was running through the woods with a large scroll in his back unaware that he was being tailed. Stopping near a small shack, he sit on the ground, opened and started reading from the scroll. With the scroll of seals, Orochimaru-sama is going to give more power than I can dream of, Mizuki thought out loud. Naruto and Hinata wearing this were about to jump him and retrieve the scroll when out of the sudden Aruka dropped in front of Mizuki. Mizuki, how could you do this? 
You betrayed the leaf, Baruka said. He didn't understand how his best friend could betray the leaf and still the scroll. Simple Uruka. I want power and when I give Orochimaru-sama this scroll he's going to give more power that you can dream of, Mizuki said. He pulled couple of shurikens and threw them at Uruka yelling, Shuriken cage bushin no jutsu, the shurikens multiplied to twenty. Uruka seeing this hesitated and ended up pinned against a tree. Mizuki took out a fuma shuriken and dashed forward with it spinning intending to end Uruka once and for all. Naruto seeing this jumped in the middle of them, kicking Mizuki back. Naruto. Uruka said surprised to see him. Hanada heal Uruka sensei. I'll take care of him, Naruto said. Hi. She replied and started healing Uruka. You damn demon. Have you ever wondered why everyone hates you? Mizuki asked and Naruto raised an eyebrow. No Mizuki it's F-O-R-B-I-D-E-N, Uruka yelled. Fourteen years ago the Yandaimi didn't kill the Kyubi, he sealed it in you. You are the Kyubi reborn. Mizuki said expecting to break the brat so he could escape. Are you an idiot? He asked rhetorically. Mizuki narrowed his eyes wondering how it didn't do anything. I've known about the Kyubi since I was five years old, hell I've been talking to him ever since. Did you even wonder why I have the kanji for nine in my jacket? It's because I take pride in being a Jinchuriki. My life may not have been easy, but I'm happy that the Yandaimi chose me, Naruto said getting shocked faces from both Mizuki and Aruka. Enough talk, and since you broke the third's law I have permission to kill you, Naruto explained. Try it demon fox, Mizuki said and took the last of Fuma shurikens and threw it at him. Naruto dodged the shuriken and went through a couple of hand seals and said Kaden, Gukaku no jutsu, great fireball technique. Mizuki eyes widened when he saw the fireball coming, he jumped to the left where Naruto was waiting and gave him a fierce kick to the ribs sending Mizuki crashing to the trees. Mizuki barely got up since he got a couple of broken ribs. Trying his best to find the demon brat when suddenly something grabbed his ankle. Looking down he saw a hand sticking of the ground grabbing him tightly. Doden. Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, double suicide decapitation technique, Naruto said dragging and burying Mizuki leaving only his head out of the ground. Mizuki tried to get out but got nowhere. Naruto picked up the scroll of seals and caught a glimpse of a technique. Opening the scroll it said, Bunshin Debakua, clone explosion, B rank. Closing the scroll he put it in his back and went to Aruka as Hinata was finishing to heal him. How are you feeling Aruka sensei? Naruto asked. Aruka was one of a few people Naruto cared about. I'm fine thanks to you. He replied. Moments later Anbu arrived at the scene and took Aruka, Naruto and Hinata to the Hokage and Mizuki to Ibiki. Hash hash Hokage office hash hash. Anbu arrived with the three of them at the Hokage office. Naruto delivered the scroll of seals to the Hokage. Well done Naruto. Due to yours and Hinata's help we managed to secure the scroll of seals and catch a traitor. I'm considering this a B-rank mission. I saw what happened through my crystal ball and I know you learned a jutsu from the scroll. Just be careful with that one. Anything else I might do for you in compensation? The Hokage asked. He was secretly happy that Naruto took his training serious. Actually there is Gigi, Naruto said and got smacked in the head by Uruka. Show some respect to the Hokage you brat, Uruka said. Eh? Hey, don't worry so much Uruka, the Hokage said. I want to ask you if I could be on the same team as Hinata-chan and without Sasuke. We both know there will come a time I will need my eyes and I don't want problems, he said and the Hokage raised an eyebrow considering the request. I know what you are thinking, I bet you were considering placing me along with Sasuke and Hinata, since Rookie of the Year goes with Kunoichi of the Year and have a create a heavy assault team. Naruto explained and continued, however you can still get the same benefits if you have Kiba, Sasuke and Sakura for the heavy assault team, and you can have a perfect tracking team along with heavy assault with me, Hinata and Shino, since I have my eyes and I'm a sensor, Naruto finished. Eyes? Uruka asked. The Hokage seeing Naruto asking him what to do silently said, it's up to you Naruto, the Hokage said. Uruka sensei if you promise to not tell anyone until I reveal it, I will tell you, Naruto said and Uruka replied, you can trust me Naruto, you know that. Look into my eyes, Naruto said and closed them. Slowly opening them for dramatic effect they were blood red with three tomos in each eye. Naruto's eyes were a fully matured Sharingan. Holy shit. Uruka yelled. 
Naruto simply rubbed the back of his head. That's why you transformed into Madara during the exam, Uruka said and the Hokage raised an eyebrow. Of course sensei, I have a legacy to keep. After all Madara was my grandfather, Naruto said. Uruka's jaw dropped hearing this. Naruto was the grandson of one of the most powerful shinobi to ever live. Naruto, you really are the number one unpredictable ninja of Konoha, he said and both Naruto and the Hokage laughed. Naruto, if you have a fully matured Sharingan how could you be the dead last up until now, Uruka asked. Deception is a ninja greatest tool. I listened to some of your lectures eheh, he said smirking to which Uruka just dumbly nodded. All is well when ends well. Naruto I agree with your request. Be at the academy next week for team placement. See you tomorrow. The Hokage said. Naruto. Hanada how about I take to ramen as a thank you? Uruka asked and of course Naruto agreed jumping the air. The Hokage just shook his head seeing all three of them leaving his office. He sighed and picked up the pencil. The Hokage yelled seeing paperwork pop up out of nowhere. Naruto hearing the Hokage yell thought, maybe I should tell him one of these days. Chapter 10. Problems. Uruka, Naruto and Hinata walked peacefully to Ichiraku's ramen stand, a thank you from Uruka for Naruto and Hinata saving his life. Uruka got injured by the shuriken rain but Hinata did a wonderful job healing them. Naruto, Uruka and Hinata sat down at the ramen stand. Oh I, old man, come here I'm hungry, Naruto yelled. Oh, Naruto glad to see you and Hinata, Tyuki said and both nodded. Okay, since Uruka sensei is paying you can start with 10 bowls of pork ramen for me, Naruto said and Uruka widened his eyes thinking if it was a good idea offering him dinner. I'll take two bowls of vegetable ramen, Hanada said. I'll take one bowl of shrimp ramen. Say Hanada. Uruka said getting her attention. Were you faking with Naruto since the beginning? Uruka asked. Of course, you actually don't know but we are boyfriend and girlfriend, she said giving Naruto a kiss on the cheek making the blonde blush. Who would have thought? Damn, you are some good actors, Uruka said getting chuckles from both of them. Why did you hide your strength even your relationship? Uruka asked. You know that I'm the Kayubi Jinchuriki right? Naruto asked and Uruka nodded, and pretty much all the villagers and almost all of the shinobi hate me for carrying him. To them I'm a painful reminder on that night. You know that they tried to hurt or kill me many times. If the civilian council knew how strong I was they would do everything they could to stop the, the demon from getting strong, he said. The reason I decided to hide our relationship was pretty much the same reason. They would try and hurt her as well. I've already heard some calling her, demon whore, and I'll be damned if I would let anyone hurt her, I would faster burn this village to the ground than allow anyone to place their hands on her. So we decided to stay in the shadows until we were strong enough to protect ourselves, he concluded. Uruka was surprised how the number one knucklehead thought of everything. He would never in a million of years think the Naruto was so clever and insightful. You certainly fooled me. Uruka said and everyone laughed. They started eating calmly. And you Hanada, I get the feeling that you are not the shy girl, he said pointing to her. She giggled and answered. I was shy when I first met Naruto but over the years I grew out of it thanks to him. Also who did you think helped him in his pranks, she said laughing and Uruka jaw dropped. Actually I kinda liked acting shy and letting everyone else brag about how good they are. How strong are you really? Uruka asked in a serious tone. Well we've never matched against anyone other than ourselves but the furball says we are around Jonin in terms of taijutsu and ninjutsu, I suck at genjutsu so around lochunin in that. Other than that I'm level 10 seal master. Naruto explained and of course Aruka didn't even know what to say, poor guy. Wait, if you are Jonin level how the hell can't you do a single bushin, Aruka asked and Naruto chuckled. Well. You see one side effect of having a biju sealed in you when you are young is that you tend to develop large chakra reserves. I estimate I have about four times more chakra than Gigi so, even though I have Jonin level chakra control, I still have too much chakra to perform a single bushin. Naruto explained. Uruka didn't know what to think or do. The academy dead last was Jonin level, had four times to Hokage chakra reserve and was a seal master, besides all that he had a matured Sharingan. Uruka did what he could do and fainted. 
Oi oi wake up sensei, you still got to pay up, Naruto yelled trying to wake the fainted Aruka. Hash hash council room hash hash. The Hokage was approaching a room. Standing near its double doors was an Anbu guarding it. The Anbu bowed to the Hokage and opened the doors. The Hokage entered the room and to his left were seated the clan heads of Konoha also knows as the Shinobi Council and to his left were a few important civilians known as the Civilian Council. Near the Shinobi Council were also seated three people. They were Mitokado Homura, Yudatane Kaharu and Shimura Danzo. They were former's teammates to the Hokage in his genin days and are currently his advisors or elders. The Hokage made his way through the room and sat in a small table in front of the Konoha Council. Good evening to everyone. Now, may I know the reason why the council has been summoned? The Hokage asked in a bored tone. After dealing with all the paperwork he still has to put up with the damn council. Yes Hokage-sama, said one merchant of the civilian council as he stood up. We heard that the dem, Uzumaki Naruto graduated from the academy. You cannot allow him to become a shinobi, he's too dangerous, he said. The Hokage sighed he knew that this day would come. Naruto is not dangerous, he's already proven to be a loyal shinobi but also graduated as rookie of the year along with Hinata, the Hokage said and Hiyashi raised an eyebrow hearing Hinata was Kunoichi of year. This year's batch must be weak, to think that she was the best, Hiyashi thought. He's clearly a demon, he stole the rookie of the year title from the Uchiha-sama, a pink banshee yelled making everyone shiver from her freakish high-pitched voice. You should choose your words carefully C-I-V-L-I-A-N, the Hokage said raising his key making her sweat, my law is still in effect. But Hokage-sama you cannot allow him near the clan heirs, he could hurt them all, a fat merchant said while the shinobi side rolled their eyes. Enough, the Hokage said in a serious tone. Many of you civilians may not know but Naruto has already saved his village today, he said getting confused looks from everyone. As you don't know, today one of the academy teachers Mizuki, broke into the Hokage's vault and stole the scroll of seals. He was intercepted by Yumino Uruka and they engaged in combat. If Naruto and Hinata didn't show up Uruka would be dead in the village without the scroll. Hinata managed to heal Uruka and Naruto defeated a Chunin. The Hokage concluded and everyone gasped. A fresh rookie from the academy defeating a Chunin is almost unheard of. You see Hokage-sama he's already becoming too powerful, we must kill him now and finish what the Yandaimi started, the fat merchant said trying to reason with the Hokage and put an end to the demon. You keep forgetting that this is a shinobi village and I, the Hokage, am in command of my forces, my word is law, remember well. This meeting is adjourned, the Hokage said rubbing his temples. I'm getting too old for this shit he thought as he watched everyone leave the room. Hash hash later that night hash hash. Later that night everyone in the village was sleeping peacefully including our favorite pair Naruto and Hinata. They were sleeping like usual cuddled together, Naruto had his chest pressed against her back pulling her closer to him. Two figures were seen dashing through the roofs. They wore the standard Jonin outfit for Konoha. The Hittite in the forehead, the Jonin flat jacket and black Anbu pants with white strapping in the ankles. So you remember the plan? One of the Jonans asked getting a nod from the other. Let's get this over with so we can collect our pay, the other said and rushed towards the destination. They arrived at the red light sector and very quietly made their way into a house. The house itself seemed old with a few patched holes in the outside's walls. They approached the window and saw the sleeping pair, the demon and its whore. They decided to make entrance through the roof seeing that their bed was too close to the window. They quickly and stealthy entered the house and made their way into their bedroom. They were approaching their bed and one said, this is your end demon, and quickly drove two kanais through both of their chests. The Jonans smiled in victory until there was a poof of smoke and reveled two logs with kanais, they turned around and didn't like very much the view. They saw a sharingan blazing and the Byakugan activated. Oh the demon has the sharingan, he probably stole it when he killed the Uchiha clan, Let's kill them, one of the Jonan said and dashed to the pair. Okay, Hinata you take one I'll take the other, be careful they are Jonan we might be skilled but they have more strength than us, Naruto said. Hi, she replied and dashed to intercept one of the Jonans. With Naruto, why are you attacking us? It's a crime to attack a fellow shinobi of the leaf, Naruto asked knowing pretty much the answer. You know partner to us, die demon. 
the Jonin responded and took the kanai and slashed horizontally. Naruto ducked and using his foot he stroked the Jonin foot making him tumble forward. Using his momentum Naruto lifted his knee and managed to strike him in the gut. The Jonin quickly recovered and jumped back. Not bad demon. Let's take this up a notch. The Jonin said and quickly made a few hand signs and yelled. Doden. Suchi no Yoroi earth style. Earth armor and enveloped his body in strong earth shell. He's using an earth shell. Good thing my main affinity is lightning, Naruto thought. They dashed forward and exchanged a few blows. Thanks to the Sharingan Naruto managed to block or dodge every single one of them, however due to enemy's armor his strikes were ineffective and he couldn't attack any pressure point. Naruto switched to his own Nintaijutsu style the lightning fist. Naruto charged his hands and feet in a coat of lightning chakra. He dashed forward and went for low kick, the Jonin jumped up to avoid it. Naruto quickly recovered and sent a massive punch to Jonin's chest destroying his armor and sending him against a wall. That hurt you damn brat, the Jonin yelled. They both engaged again but Naruto had the upper hand, deciding to end it and going to help Hanada, Naruto sidestepped a punch, and infused his fingers with lightning chakra and pressed hard against the Jonin's head near the here discharging the chakra in his vagus nerve sending the Jonin to cardiac arrest. A. N. By the way, the vagus nerve does exist and if pressed with enough strength messes up with heart's rhythm or something similar. I'm not a medic rather an engineer but I know a few things xd. Naruto left the Jonin shaking in the floor and left him to go help Hanada. He turned around to see Hanada having the upper hand until she made a mistake and the Jonin took the opportunity and went for a horizontal slash. Hanada! Naruto yelled. He deactivated his gravity seal and dashed at the top of his speed to help her, knowing that he wouldn't reach her in time he did the only thing he could and substituted himself with her. Naruto now in the place of Hanada was seeing the blade coming closer and closer, his Sharingan could be seen as a curse for it was showing his death in slow motion. He tried to bring his kanai to block the sword but it was too late, just as the blade was about to make contact Naruto unwittingly channeled a massive amount of chakra to his eyes until they started spinning and reversing its colors, suddenly everything became even clearer and time seemed to slow down even more. Naruto was watching the blade come closer and closer and just as it was about to make contact with his skin, the strangest thing happened. The blade continued in its path as if slicing cleanly through him but Naruto didn't feel any pain. The enemy Jonin didn't know what was happening, his blade seemed to phase right through the demon as if he wasn't even there. The blade left his body as if nothing ever happened, it was then he looked at his eyes. Instead of the blood red eyes with black Tomo's Naruto's eyes switched to being pure black and in the middle a glowing red cracked circle with three red orbs on it. The Jonin didn't know what it was but it was too late. A. N. Check profile for image. Naruto caught the Jonin's hand as it left him and broke his wrist making him drop the sword. Naruto looked him in the eyes, with his Sharingan spinning and said, Genjutsu, forced sleep, as he said the Jonin fell to ground unconscious. Naruto turned to Hanada who was too stunned with what happened that she didn't even saw him approach. Hanada are you alright, are you hurt? Naruto asked concerned with her. I'm not hurt thanks to you, she said and hugged him and cried. I can't believe they would drop so low to attack us in the night, I guess I was too optimistic, Naruto thought. They separated until Hanada looked at him and gasped. Naru kun, your eyes, she said, Naruto didn't know what she was talking about and went to the bathroom and looked in the mirror and raised an eyebrow. What the hell is this, he thought. That kid is the next form of the Sharingan, knows is the eternal Mangeku Sharingan, you are very lucky to have awakened it. That particular eyes only awakens in life and death situations or through intense training, the Kyubi explained. So that's why that blade passed right through me, it must be a power of it, he thought. I guess, but I never seen that one in particular. I've seen Madara's techniques using those eyes but I don't know how to use them so you will have to figure it out. Deal with the intruders, I'll explain something about those eyes later, the Kyubi said and Naruto nodded and quickly went the Jonin that survived and tied him up placing a chakra restricting seal in him. Couple of minutes later the body of the dead Jonin was sealed in a scroll that Naruto would later take to the Hokage, he picked up a glass of water and splashed it on the Jonin's face awaking him. Hi there buddy, let's talk now, Naruto said in a sweet voice that sent shivers even to Hinata that had her Byakugan active to see if he would lie. Damn demon, 
I'm not saying anything you might as well kill me now, the Jonan said trying to hide his fear at being at the mercy of the demon after trying to kill his lover. Where's the fun in killing you? Naruto said and activated his normal Sharingan and said. Megan. Jigoku Guka no Jutsu, Hellfire Technique, the Jonin was trapped in the Genjutsu and felt like he was being burned alive, since he was tied up and had chakra restriction seal he couldn't break the illusion. This went on for a few minutes until the Jonin decided he couldn't bear it anymore. Oh okay, I'll talk, please stop, he begged until Naruto ended the Jutsu and looked him with his Sharingan along with Hinata checking for lies. Listen well, I'll only say this once. Naruto said with his Sharingan glowing making the Jonin nod quickly. Why did you decided to attack us? Naruto asked, he wanted to know why all of a sudden they decided to take such a direct approach against him. It was a deal, me and my friend would kill you for a payment. The Jonin explained looking at the corpse of his friend and thinking it was a mistake to accept it, but it was too late now. I see, and who? Requested. The mission. The Jonin hesitated in telling him who asked for the death of the demon. Naruto deactivated his Sharingan and locked eyes with the Jonin, his cold blue eyes that seemed to penetrate his soul made him flinch. It was Tuno Kanta a merchant of this village and belongs to the civilian council. The Jonin answered and Naruto already suspected it would have been one of the civilians with wealth enough to wire two Jonins. Hanada, he's telling the truth. Naruto asked and Hanada nodded. Naruto turned to the tied up Jonin and smirked. What are you going to do to me? The Jonin asked in a fearful voice, he didn't want any more pain, he preferred a quick death. As much I would like to kill you now I won't. I'm delivering you to the Hokage tomorrow morning with your friend over there and after that I'm calling for the execution of said civilian. Naruto said and went behind him and knocked him out with a quick chop the neck. What do we do now? Hanada asked. They were too pumped up to sleep now. It's 4 a.m. The Hokage's office opens at 7 so in the meantime I'm placing a few security seals around the house to make sure this doesn't happen again, he said. Naruto went to Hinata and kissed her. He hugged her and whispered, I'm sorry, it's my fault. They were after me, Naruto said. He was sad and mad that the villagers would try to kill even her. It's not your fault. And besides, don't think this is enough to drive me away from you, she replied and gave him a passionate kiss. Thank you, Naruto said happy to have found the woman he would spend the rest of his life with. Naruto went to the walls and quickly placed security and privacy seals, and a chakra detector seal lock at the door. With his cage bushing it only took him around an hour to fully seal his apartment making sure that whoever tried to break in would have a nasty surprise. They both laid in bed with Hinata snuggled together until she fell asleep in the safety of his arms. This wasn't how he intended to start his day. Naruto drifted off to sleep and went to his mindscape to talk with the Kyubi. So Kyubi what did you want to tell me about my new eyes, Naruto asked excited to have unlocked the eyes that made Uchiha Madara so powerful. Okay Kit, this is going to be long story so shut up and list well, the Kyubi said and Naruto nodded. It all began a few thousand years ago. The human race was living peacefully among each other until one day a fearsome beast appeared. No one knows where it originated but it was too powerful for humans to defeat. Many thought it was a punishment from the gods. The beast itself had ten tails and was known as the Jubi ten tails. Nothing seemed to be able to stop until a man appeared and faced the beast alone. The man managed to defeat the beast by sealing it inside his own body. He would later be known was the Raikudo Senen the father of all ninjutsu. The man was hailed as a hero for defeating the beast and was considered by all a god among men. However he to age it and sooner or later came to his old age. Knowing that in his death the beast would be set free, he split its chakra in nine, thus creating what you know now was the nine-tailed beats, going from one tail to me, the nine tails. You are with me so far? The Kyubi asked, seeing Naruto nod he continued. During his life the Raikudo Senen had two sons. The older son received his eyes and founded the Uchiha clan while the younger one received his body strength and was the progenitor of the Senju clan. In his deathbed Raikudo Senen had to chose which of his sons would carry on his legacy. Due to the younger son's ideals he chose him, however this didn't agree with his brother. His older brother thought that since he was the eldest, it should be him to lead the world in his father's place. Angered at his younger brother and father he tried to fight his brother for the place but he lost. 
Having lost he realized that he needed to gather more forces and end the Senju line before it even began, but he realized that being alone it would take too long to build a clan so he did a blood ritual to transform, so to speak, ordinary civilians into Uchiha's. Okay the story ends here. You understood everything. The Kayubi asked and Naruto replied, yes I think I got it. The Raikudo had two sons and older one did blood ritual to increase his clan faster so that he could defeat the Senju brother. That's right, now about your eye. You see the descendants of the older brother are pure-blooded, Uchiha's while the others that were born out of the ritual were known as half-blooded, Uchiha's. Nowadays no one even knows that distinction anymore. The key difference between the two is the activation of the Mangekyu. If you were part of the half-blooded side you would have to kill someone close to you and experience the emotion of that loss in order to awaken it and, even after awakening it, as you were using your eyes you were constantly losing sight until becoming permanently blind unless you removed your eyes and placed in its place the eyes of your brother, father or someone directly related to you, in doing so you would achieve the eternal Mangekyu Sharingan. However the pure-blooded Uchiha's achieved the Mangekyu differently. They activated those eyes in the heat of battle and in life and death situations and when they achieve it, it was already in its eternal form. The line of pure-blooded Uchiha's was Uchiha Madara's line. Since he only had Minato and his brother didn't have any son that we know of, currently you are the last of the pure-blooded line, the Kayubi concluded. Does that mean that one day my sons would be able to have the Mangekyu? Naruto asked. Yes, since the Sharingan gene is dominant only one of the parents is necessary and you being pure-blooded, your sons would awaken the Mangekyu in its final form like you, the Kayubi answered. It's good. I wouldn't even think about killing someone close to me for power. I have a question though. I've read that Madara stole his brother's eyes. Naruto wondered. You can't trust everything you read. He might have stolen them but he didn't need them, the Kayubi replied. Now that I think about it, that Baka is constantly bragging about being an Uchiha and he isn't even pure-blooded, Naruto said laughing. Thanks. It's almost 7 a.m. I'll see you later. Naruto said and left the mindscape. Naruto got up and picked up the scrolls containing the two janin. He and Hinata got dressed and made their way to the Hokage Tower to start the day by giving the old man a nice early, fresh headache. Hash hash Hokage Tower hash hash. The Hokage was currently leaning in his chair enjoying a cup of hot tea to jumpstart him in his paperwork. It truly was the nightmare of all cages. Suddenly there was a knock on his door. Come in, the old Hokage said. The door opened and he saw an unhappy Naruto carrying two scrolls with Hinata. This can't be good, he thought. Naruto-kun, how are you doing? He asked. We are doing fine, better than these two in fact, Naruto replied and tossed the scrolls to the Hokage. Naruto, what is this? The Hokage asked. Open them and see for yourself. The Hokage opened both scrolls and saw it was a ceiling scroll. He channeled chakra through both of them and on the floor appeared a dead Jonin while the other was tied up but awake. Naruto, what's the meaning of this? The Hokage asked in a serious tone. Naruto walked to the tied up Jonin and removed the duct tape from his mouth and asked, would you do the honors? To which the Jonin quickly replied. We were hired by Tuno Kanta to kill the Dem. Naruto didn't allow him to finish the sentence and it sent him a cold glare with his Sharingan. The man gulped and continued, Uzumaki Naruto. Geez, what a mess. The other is dead I suppose. The Hokage asked and Naruto nodded. I had to end him quick otherwise Hinata wouldn't be here, he said and placed a hand on Hinata's shoulder pulling her closer. I should have suspected, yesterday council meeting was about you and didn't end well, the Hokage said sighing. At least neither of you got hurt. Don't worry Naruto the man responsible will be considered a traitor for attacking a shinobi and will be dealt with, the Hokage said glaring at the Jonin. It was pitiful to see his shinobi fall so low that they would try and kill a fellow partner. You know old man, I actually find it funny, he said chuckling. Seeing the confused face of the Hokage he continued, they tried to kill me because they were afraid I would grow up too powerful and would someday attack the village. However they ended up giving me more power he said activating the Sharingan and shifting into the M's and showing it to the Hokage. N Naruto, is that what I think it is? The Hokage said with his eyes widened. Yup old man, I present to you my eternal Mangekyu Sharingan, 
he said smirking making his eyes spin. He started explaining everything he knew about the pure-blooded Uchiha's and the activation of this eye. The Hokage had his jaw on the floor while he was processing everything he heard. He snapped out of his stupor and said, so that means that Itachi will end up blind, unless he gets the eyes of Sasuke, the Hokage said. That's right, however Sasuke must have unlocked his Mangekyu and knowing him, if he ever finds out about it, he probably wouldn't hesitate to end the life of someone close to him, Naruto replied in a serious tone. I'll try to keep to a watch on him. Naruto in the meantime keep those eyes hidden, now even more. Uchiha Madara was one of the strongest shinobis to ever live because of the Sharingan. You still need to learn how to use them so keep it quite okay, the Hokage asked and Naruto nodded and left the room. The Hokage flared his chakra and in front of him appeared an Anbu. Take the one alive to Ibiki and Anko. Also get Tuno Kanta and send him to Ibiki as well, the Hokage ordered. I'm really getting too old for this shit, the Hokage thought. Chapter 11 Teams and Missions The remaining of the week went by without any trouble at all. However both Naruto and Hinata were extra weary when walking outside of their house. Naruto placed a few layers of defensive seals in his house so his house was very secure, anyone who tried to force their way in would meet a pleasant 100.000 volts trough their skulls. During the last week Naruto and Hinata did a bit of a research about the possible jonins that could their sensei. Also Naruto managed to finish his Hiroshin seals. He pressed harder so he could use it to always be present should Hinata need him at any time. However he still hasn't mastered the technique so it isn't battle ready. Hash hash flashback hash hash. Both of Naruto and Hinata were at home, Hinata was preparing dinner while Naruto was in the living room working on his seals. Hey Hinata-chan, come here, Naruto said and Hinata walked out of the kitchen. Naruto thought she seemed even more beautiful with her hair strapped in a ponytail while wearing a lavender apron. Do you need anything Naruto-kun? she asked. Naruto approached her and gave slight kiss in the lips. I have a present for you, he said with his hands behind his back, taunting her to try and take it from his hands. Finally giving up she pouted and Naruto smirked giving her a wrapped gift. She unwrapped it, found a small ring and gasped. The ring was pure shining silver. It had the form of a fox. The ring started with the head of a fox and ended with its tail. A. N. Check profile. It's beautiful, thank you, she said hugging him. Glad you like it, but this ring is special, not only says that I love you but also contains the Hiroshin Shiki formula, which means that if you are in trouble just channel some chakra into the ring and I'll be there in flash he explained and she gave him a passionate kiss, showing him her undying love. Hash hash and flashback hash hash. Another thing that Naruto tried to work on during this week was his new Sharingan. He had to admit this new form was fucking awesome. Kayubi also explained the powers he knew of the Mangeku Sharingan since he saw Madara using them. Hash hash flashback hash hash. Naruto was lying in his bed trying to fall asleep but was finding it hard. Since the murder attempt on both him and Hinata a couple days ago, even though he secured his house he was always on alert. Deciding to pass the time he went to his mindscape to talk to the Kayubi about his new eyes. Actually Naruto changed his mindscape, it was no longer that old sewer, now it was a vast forest with nearby mountains and plenty of animals so that the Kayubi wouldn't be bored. Hey furball. Naruto said and Kayubi glared at him. What do you want brat, I was trying to sleep the Kayubi said. I can't sleep, so I just thought you would explain me the new powers I can use with my new eyes, he said. Like I told you, I only seen him use them, I can't even be sure if you can use them. For instance that power you used last time I never saw Madara using it, so more than likely the Mangekyu not always has the same powers, the Kayubi explained. Well that sucks, Naruto replied. It doesn't mean you can't use them. All will explain the powers I saw so listen well. First, one of the power is an extremely powerful genjutsu called Sukuyomi, god of the moon. Once you lock eyes with the enemy you can cast the technique and the user is trapped. Inside the technique you are kami, god, you can create and manipulate everything even time itself. You can make the time pass differently from the outside. It can be three days in your technique but in the real world it only has been a couple of seconds, the difference in this time varies with your skill. Also this genjutsu is nearly unbreakable. 
Another power I saw is called Amaterasu, god of the sun. It's the highest level of Kaiten Ninjutsu known. With your eyes you can summon or put out the so-called Amaterasu flames. These are black flames that burn anything in its path and don't disappear until the target you want is completely incinerated, it doesn't matter if you even use in sweet Ninjutsu. They never die until the target is gone. The last power and probably the most powerful is a defensive armor with offensive capabilities. It's called Suzano, god of the sea and storms, it creates an humanoid-like shaped armor around you, the more chakra you send, the stronger and bigger it gets, I've seen the Suzano's perfect form and let me tell you it's not something you want to face. This humanoid armor also carries a shield for defensive purposes like deflecting more powerful focused attacks but also a sword for offense. You got all of it? The Kyubi concluded and asked for confirmation. I'm awesome, believe it. Naruto shouted excited with such awesome powers. He still is an idiot, the Kyubi thought. Now you know. Leave. I'm going to sleep, the Kyubi said, ordered. Hash hash end flashback hash hash. With the final week now over, we find Naruto and Hinata at home finishing up their breakfast. Today they would find their teams and meet their Jonin sensei. Are you ready Hinata-chan? Naruto asked getting a nod he held her arm and vanished in a lightning shunshun towards the academy. They arrived at the roof not wanting to arouse many questions. They made their way down, to their respective classroom, the room was already filled with their friends, however Aruka sensei still hadn't arrived. Hanada made her up the stairs and sat in the back row. Naruto of course followed her but as he was walking he was met by the glare of one Uchiha Sasuke. Sasuke was still pissed by losing to the Dobi, the dead last of the academy. How could trash like that defeat me, and Uchiha? Next time he'll beg for mercy, Sasuke thought smirking. Even thought Naruto had grown up physically but also mentally, he still couldn't resist a few taunts especially from Sasuke, a fellow, clan member, so to speak. They stayed like this a few minutes glaring at each other until Sasuke had enough and turned away plotting the various ways he could ice his brother. Naruto walked up the stairs to join Hinata when another problem appeared in the form of Inazuka Kiba. Hey Hinata-chan how are you? Kiba asked as he moved to sit next to her. I'm fine Kiba, stop. That sit is for Naruto-kun, she replied. How come on Hinata-chan? I'm better than him, an alpha, Kiba said rubbing his finger in the bridge of his nose. Kiba of course being from the Inazuka clan had a high sense of pride and manliness, due to the fact that is male and heir to the clan. I don't care what you are Kiba and I told you that I like Naruto, she said in an asserting tone. Kiba even took a step back. The shy Hanada he knew was no more. Kiba, stop hitting on my girlfriend, Naruto said as he approached both of them. He passed Kiba who sneered at him and sat next to Hanada and kissed her on the cheek to further make his point on Kiba. Stop pestering her, Kiba yelled, gathering the attention of most of the class and waking up the resident genius. Damn it Kiba, do you have to be so loud? Troublesome. Shikamaru said as he yawned and tried to resume his sleep. Just forget him and go back to your cloud watching, Naruto said. Smart ass, Shikamaru replied and went back to sleep. Kiba, Hanada is with me so I would appreciate if you stop bothering us, Naruto said raising his key making him sweat and furthering his points. On top of Kiba's head was a small white dog called Akamaru. He was Kiba's partner to their collaboration ninjutsu. Akamaru just said. Alpha, however Kiba didn't listen and tried to punch Naruto. What no one saw coming was that Naruto didn't move an inch. It was Hanada that got up and gave Kiba a Juken strike to the chest, leaving him on the ground clutching in pain. Don't you think it was too much Hina-chan? Naruto whispered to her. I'm tired of him always trying to get me to go out with him. Hanada replied getting a nod from Naruto. A. N. I'm giving Hanada a bit of her personality from the movie Road to Ninja. Someone has to keep Naruto in check. Kiba slowly got up and went to a different seat while glaring daggers at Naruto. A few minutes passed and running was heard in the classroom. Suddenly the door opened and in came running Sakura and Ino. First place, Sakura yelled and trying her best to regain her breath. What are you talking about? My foot was clearly ahead of you, Ino replied. Sakura took her opportunity a run to the seat near Sasuke however it was occupied by Kiba. Kiba, get out so I can sit with Sasuke-kun, the pink banshee said. 
Hiba simple scowled wondering what Sasuke had that he didn't. Deciding to prove he was alpha male in the class, he jumped into the table and starting glaring at Sasuke. Their eyes a few inches apart. Suddenly one of the students in the row below got up and pushed Kiba forward towards Sasuke. To Kiba everything went in slow motion, he was getting closer to Sasuke, too close. Thump, thump. His face connected with Sasuke, however this connection was rather unfortunate as they connect with their lips. The entire class froze seeing the most desired male which was Sasuke kissing the, alpha, male. Shikamaru woke up and stared in the event. Choji stopped eating even Shino slightly dropped his glasses. Looks like Kiba finally found his girl, Naruto said loud enough for everyone to hear. The whole male class laughed at the event except the fangirls who were plotting Kiba's murder. Kiba and Sasuke immediately separated and quickly enough Kiba received his faith at the ends of the fangirls leaving him in the ground in a bloody mess. Everyone quieted down after the event and suddenly the front door of the classroom opened and Aruka entered with a stack of papers beneath his arms. Morning class, Aruka said and was surprised he didn't need his patented big head jutsu to silence his class. After today everyone of you are now ninja of the leaf but you mere genin, Aruka started, the difficult part is only beginning. You will now be divided in teams of three members and will be taught by a Jonin sensei. We tried to balance the teams. So here they are. Team 1. Naruto at this time dozed off. Team 7. Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Sasuke, Inazuka Kiba, your sensei will be Hitaki Kakashi, Uruka said. Naruto was happy that the Sandame took his suggestion and didn't put him with the Uchiha. Kiba of course wasn't happy he was with the Uchiha, he would need to show him who the Alpha was. Team 8. Uzumaki Naruto, Hayuga Hanada, Abarame Shino, your sensei will be Yuhi Kuranai, Uruka said and of course Naruto and Hinata were extremely happy they would be together in their team. Shino was a quiet person, he always kept to himself. He was logical, a good strategist and long-range fighter so it was a well-rounded up team. Hinata was more skilled in taijutsu, Naruto was ninjutsu and they had Shino long-range support. A. N. Even if Hinata was disavowed she still kept her name since she wasn't adopted. Team 9 is still in circulation. Team 10. Yamanaka Ino, Nara Shikamaru, Akamichi Choji, your sensei will Serutobi Asuma. I will be leaving now, your senseis will be here in a moment, Uruka concluded. Hanada chan can I trust Kuranai sensei? You know her right? Naruto asked. You can, she's a good and kind person but also a strong janin. She's like a big sister to me. Are you going to tell her about the Sharingan? Hanada replied and asked. I think I should, I mean we are going to a team right, he asked and Hanada nodded. The classroom door opened and two Jonin entered. The first one had the traditional Jonin clothes. He wore black Anbu pants and the Jonin flat jacket. He was a tall man with black spiky hair, brown eyes and beard. He also had the 12 guardian ninja sash with the kanji for, fire. This person was Serutobi Asuma and was the son of the Sandame Hokage, Serutobi Hirazan. The other Jonin was a very beautiful woman. She had shoulder-length black hair, red eyes. Her regular outfit consists of a red mesh armor blouse with only the right sleeve visible, over this is very broad material which resembles bandages with a pattern on it similar to those of rose thorns. Her hands and upper thighs are also wrapped in bandages. She is Yuhi Kuranai, Konoha's Genjutsu mistress. Team 10. Meet at the training ground 12 in 30 minutes, Asuma said and left. Team 8. Meet at the training ground 8 in 30 minutes, Kuranai said and also left. Naruto got up with Hinata and Shino and they both walked out. Once outside the classroom, Naruto went to Shino and grabbed him and used lightning shunshun towards the training field. Kuranai was currently waiting at the training ground, she thought it would be a while until they arrived. She sensed chakra around her, she got up and saw their team arriving with the shunshun. She saw it was Naruto that used it. Naruto, you can use the shunshun, she asked, one normally doesn't see a genin using the shunshun. Even though it is AD rank techniques it uses quite a bit of chakra. Yes I can Kuranai sensei, Hanada chan can use it also, he replied. What do we do now sensei, Hanada asked. We introduce ourselves, names, likes, dislikes, dreams for the future, stuff like that. I will go first. My name is Yuhi Kuranai, 
I like learning new genjutsus and working in my garden, I dislike perverts and traitors. My dream is to the best genjutsu user and a strong kunoichi. Your next Naruto, she said. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, I like Hinata-chan, training and ramen. I dislike traitors and ignorant people. My dream, is to be the best Hokage Konoha as ever seen, he said looking at the Hokage mountain, more specifically at his father's head. He turned around to Hinata. My name is Hayuga Hinata. I like Naruto-kun, cinnamon rolls, training and flower pressing. I dislike people that hurt Naruto and traitors. My dream is to become a strong and brave Kunoichi and get rid of the Hayuga's pride, she said spitting the name Hayuga. Even though she hated her father she would do her best to help her former clan. My name is Abarame Shino. I like bugs. I dislike people who mistreat and don't understand bugs. My dream is to become a good clan head, Shino said. Very well. Kurinai started. Naruto and Hinata have already been training for some time so they can work well together I expect the same for you Shino, she said getting a nod from him. I don't expect any type of problems between you so we are officially a team. Now I'm going to test you to see your abilities. It's now 9 o'clock, your objective is to capture me until noon. Got it? She asked, seeing all of them nod she disappeared into the forest. The group came closer and started discussing their plan. Kurinai was hiding in the forest, near a tree using a low-level genjutsu when she saw Naruto approaching at full speed towards her. Figures, the report said he was the dead last but also brash and loud, she thought. Naruto threw a blind punch to which Kurinai dodged and returned his punch. However to her surprise her punch went through him revealing it to be a bug clone. She shook them off and jumped back. She scanned her surroundings and her eyes widened when she saw a fireball coming to her. She jumped to the left where Hinata was and got hit a few times before substituting with a nearby log. Her team regrouped to plot another plan, since the first almost worked. Kurinai was watching even more carefully since she was caught off guard in a hang bug clone. She had a few close chakra points but nothing to major. Kurinai was jumping from tree to tree when against her came a barrage of shuriken, she dodged to the left and engaged with Hinata in taijutsu, noticing she was being overrun. Kurinai jumped back and something caught her ankle. She looked down and saw Naruto pulling her down trapping her. Naruto jumped off the ground and Kurinai was replaced by a log. Damn, she always escapes, Naruto said. If I used real attacks I could easily win, Naruto thought disappointed. Kurinai decided to hide herself in a high-ranking genjutsu while she was resting. Their team was no pushover. She felt her chakra almost all gone. Shino's bugs must have been draining her while she was distracted. She snapped out of her thoughts when she heard. Sweden. Sushoha, exploding water wave, Hinata said. Raiden. Jibashi, electromagnetic murder, Naruto said. The combination of this was an electrified wave of water forcing Kurinai to jump up. Naruto was expecting this and gave her a drop kick sending crashing to the ground. Kurinai got up but suddenly was unable to move, she looked around her and heard. Fuinjutsu Four Corner Trap Seal, Naruto said. They finally caught Kurinai, trapped in a trap seal. This technique works by placing a seal in four places forming a square. When the target is inside, the user can activate and automatically freeze the enemy in place. Congratulation, you are all very good. Hanada your taijutsu along with Naruto is impeccable and so is your ninjutsu. Shino you provided long range support and you drained a good chunk of my chakra. Your clan's skills seem good but you will need elemental ninjutsu as well. Naruto I didn't know you knew fuinjutsu, Kurinai explained. Since we are going to be a team there are a few things I need to tell you. I believe I can trust you, Kurinai sensei and also Shino, Naruto replied getting nods from both of them. First, Kurinai sensei already knows this but not Shino. They say that the Yandaimi Hokage killed the Kayubi but that is a lie. The Kayubi cannot be killed. It's true that his physical body can be destroyed but he would reform later on. Since he couldn't be killed the Yandaimi only choice was to seal him inside a newborn baby, me. The Kayubi is trapped here in my gut. Naruto said a bit hesitant about his reaction. I understand if you want to change teams, Naruto said looking at Shino. Nonsense Naruto. For starters I already knew about the Kayubi since my bugs could detect its chakra. Besides I can relate if on a small level. My clan uses bugs that are inside of us as well, 
so the village always is a bit uncomfortable when dealing with us. Shino in a stoic voice. Thank you Shino. Just one thing, the Kayubi it's a Hinata IT. He's a nice guy once you get to meet him, Naruto said and Shino raised an eyebrow. Naruto, how can you say he's a good guy? He nearly destroyed the whole village, Kurenai asked outraged. Sensei, I can't tell you everything but I can tell you that the Kayubi was being controlled by the Sharingan, and was forced to attack the village, Naruto said, Kurenai wanted to argue but Naruto wouldn't budge. Speaking of Sharingan, Naruto said and activated his, I'm a Sharingan user. Since we are a team I'm trusting you with this information. I'd like to keep this a secret until I reveal it, Naruto said and Shino kept his stoic face, however Kurenai was doing a very good impersonation of a fish out of water. N Naruto, are you an Uchiha? Kurenai asked. I am on my father's side, I'll say no more until I reveal my heritage, Naruto concluded. And you already have it fully matured, Kurenai said. Yup, I awakened when I was five, and when Hinata was kidnapped I killed the kidnapper and got the three tomos, Naruto said and Kurenai's jaw hit the ground. Are you saying that you killed a Jonin when you were six years old? Kurenai asked. The only thing I can say is it was pure luck. He underestimated me a paid de price, Naruto explained. Don't worry Naruto, we will keep it a secret, you can trust us, Shino said. Naruto, I have one question. You obviously are very skilled so why were you the dead last, Kurenai asked. What do you mean? It's true that I was the dead last during the academy to hide my true strength but in the last exam I graduated as rookie of the year, Naruto said. B but I read your report and it said that you were the dead last in everything, Kurenai replied confused. I get it, the person that filled the reports must have been an ignorant and since I was the Kayubi, she filled me as dead last probably putting Sasuke as rookie of the year. It doesn't matter, actually it's even better. Now the enemy will underestimate me, Naruto said and Kurenai just shrugged it off. Okay team, meet here tomorrow at 8 a.m. We will train in the morning and do missions in the afternoon, Kurenai said. The day ended with Naruto and Hinata going home, happy that both of them were on the same team. Chapter 12 Mission to the Wave The past few days flew by with Kurenai's team. They would train in the morning and do a couple of missions in the afternoon. Obviously Naruto always complained since Naruto wanted to test his skills in the real world but Hinata was always present to bonk him in the head. Who would have thought that of the little shy Hinata? Kurenai was very surprised with the skill level that Naruto and Hinata displayed. If she had to judge then the Kayubi nailed it by saying they had Jonin level skills. Their team was in fact comprised by one Jonin sensei, two green Jonins and a poor Genin lost in the middle. Naruto, Hinata and Kurenai would never leave Shino behind so they began focusing more on him so he could be brought up to speed. Naruto with the help of Kurenai started on cage level exercises for his chakra control. He had two exercises that he needed to do to bring his control to the highest level possible. The first was waterfall climbing, this exercise allowed, when mastered, the user to control vast amounts of chakra with great precision, since climbing a waterfall is extremely hard. The last exercise allowed one to have perfect chakra control almost rivaling Tsunade the slug Sani. This particular exercise was rather practical to perform. The user deposited a chunk of sand with multiple colors in his hand. The point of the exercise was to separate and align the sand by color using only chakra. It was considered mastered when the user managed this in less than 10 seconds. Hanada didn't have any weakness per se, she had overall good skills whether it be in taijutsu, ninjutsu, genjutsu or even kenjutsu. Her chakra control was flawless since it was a basic requirement for her juken, gentle fist, or her own version the flowing fist. Shino however was another different level. His taijutsu was low genin level since he was a long-range fighter, their typical weakness. His ninjutsu was the three basic academy jutsus coupled with his clans. His genjutsu was non-existent. Overall he was about mid genin in skill. However they would change that. Naruto placed a few restriction seals on him since it was too abrupt if he started using gravity seals. They decided to start his elemental training since everyone on his team already had theirs mastered. Surprisingly he had earth and water, both defensive elements. His team was the perfect storm off offense and defense. In fact his nature served him well above anyone else. 
As a long-range fighter normally his weakness would be close combat which was solved by his training and affinities. Along with all this training they also did teamwork exercises. One of the things that made Konoha as the strongest in the elemental nations was their notion of teamwork and loyalty above all else. Their teamwork was excellent, neither of them had any problems with each other. Currently we find Team 8 or Team Kurenai heading towards the Hokage's office after a morning of training. I should clarify the last statement, it was training for Naruto, Hanada and Kurenai but for Shino one would call it torture. The poor Genin was driven to the ground in order to gain the physical attributes he needed. Hash hash Hokage's mission assignment room hash hash. The old Hokage was sitting in the middle of the table smoking on his pipe while handing missions to the shinobi. To his left side was Aruka the school teacher of the students of Team 8. The Hokage was deep in thought remembering his prime, the thrill of the fights and the adrenaline pumping through his system. Not many shinobi have the privilege of growing old. The shinobi's life expectancy was actually around 30 years, and reaching old age was very rare. However any shinobi that reached such age began to reminisce all they did in their life. Shinobi since birth are trained to fight and fight they do. It is all they know throughout their lives. There is no greater death than death at the hands of your enemy in the midst of battle. However being taken by old age it isn't something any warrior would want. Here is in Sarutobi, third Hokage of Konoha and hailed as Shinobi no Kami, god of Shinobi. The man that had seen two great ninja wars and lived has been reduced to nothing but a paper pusher. Don't get me wrong, he loved his village and his place as Hokage but his time was nearing its end. It was time to pass his hat and have the younger generation assume his place. He was snapped out of his thoughts when he saw Team 8 walking through the door. It always brought a smile to his face seeing Naruto and even Hinata. He was like a grandfather to both of them since Hinata was expelled by her father. He didn't know why but Naruto's smile always managed to cheer him up no matter how depressed the man was. Naruto was, for lack of a better word, a bundle of happiness. It surprised him how despite the glares and hatred he received, Naruto managed to keep a cheerful and loving personality. Team 8 reporting for mission, Hokage-sama, Kurenai said bowing to the Hokage. Even though the Hokage was clearly old he still was a very powerful shinobi and one of the strongest in the leaf village. Team 8 welcome, let's see what we got here, the Hokage said receiving the D-rank mission scrolls from Aruka. We have cleaning in Azuka's kernel, capturing Tora. Helping an old lady move to a new house, the Hokage never managed to finish. Old man we'll take catching Tora, Naruto said smirking. The Hokage raised an eyebrow, no one liked chasing that damned cat and Naruto already done it in the past. Are you serious Naruto-kun? Hinata asked, not really in the mood for running after a damn cat. What people don't know is that Tora is actually a Nininko, ninja cat, trained specifically for helping genin teams with their teamwork. Just trust me, Naruto replied picking up the mission scroll. Hey old man what is the record for catching Tora? Naruto asked with a knowing grin. I think it's around 3 hours, but why do you ask? Do you intend to break it? The Hokage asked. Something like that, Naruto replied. He went back to middle of the room and took a small scroll from his pocket. He unrolled the scroll to show a small intricate seal in it. He placed it on the ground. Naruto bit his thumb drawing blood and slammed it in the seal saying, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning jutsu, there was a poof of smoke. When the smoke cleared in the middle of the scroll was Tora. The Hokage's eyes almost popped out of his sockets and Naruto just laughed at everyone's expression. Mission accomplished Hokage-sama and I believe it's a new record, Naruto said laughing his ass off and delivering the cat to the Hokage. How did you do that Naruto? Kurenai asked. Even she had to chase that damn cat in her genin days. I already had to chase her a few times in the past and somewhere along the way I got tired and placed a summoning seal in the cat. So I just offer a bit of blood and chakra and I can summon Tora through the seal on this scroll. Naruto explained and the Hokage and Kurenai just nodded dumbly. Kurenai sensei since I already got Tora and set the record for about 15 seconds do you want another mission? Naruto asked. Kurenai didn't have time to answer as suddenly there was a puff of smoke in the Hokage's desk revealing a small dog. He had brown fur and wore a Konoha Hittite around his head. A dog? Naruto asked wondering who it was from. This is Pakun, a messenger and tracking dog from Kakashi, the Hokage explained. 
Hokage-sama I have a message from Kakashi, Hakun said handing the Hokage the scroll. The Hokage opened and it said, Hokage-sama, our client, Tazuna, lied about the mission parameters. It appears that the wave is under Gato's control and he wants Tazuna dead. We were attacked by the demon brothers Gozu and Maizu of Karigakur and we defeated them. We decided to continue, however I request backup since most likely we will be attacked again, this time probably by Jonin level Nukenin, missing ninja. Hitaki Kakashi, Jonin Sensei of Team 7. Team 8 inches the Hokage started getting their attention, it appears that the C rank mission I sent Tem 7 to was bumped into a low A rank. Kakashi requested backups so I'm sending you. He will explain everything when you meet with him, dismissed. Hi. Team 8 said. Okay team, go home and get your supplies meet me at North Gate in one hour. Her and I said they all left the room and went to prepare for their first A rank. Hash hash North Gate one hour later hash hash. One hour later team 8 gathered in the North Gate getting ready for departure. Her and I inspected everyone's supplies as it was the duty for a John and Sensei. Okay, team before we depart, everyone has their supplies. Kanai, shuriken, food, first aid kit. Soldier pills, Kur and I asked and got nod from everyone. Since we will be traveling at high speeds we'll reach Team 7 in a couple of hours. However we don't know which route Kakashi took so we will be taking the main one, Kur and I said. No need sensei. Do you still have the message Kakashi sent? Naruto asked. Yes I do, why? Kur and I asked wondering what good it would do. Naruto bit his left thumb drawing blood and spreading across his right hand palm. He went through a few hand seals boar right pointing arrow dog right pointing arrow bird right pointing arrow monkey right pointing arrow ram and slammed his hand on the ground and said, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning technique. There was a poof of smoke and when it cleared in from of him stood a medium sized brown fox with five tails. Hash hash flashback hash hash. Hey kit, come into the seal I want to talk to you, the Kayubi said. Naruto was currently 10 years old. He sat on the ground in the lotus position and started meditating. After a few seconds Naruto stood in front of the Kayubi of was currently laying on the ground beneath a large tree. You need something Kurama, Naruto asked. Actually Kurama was the Kayubi real name. It appears that young Naruto grew on the Kayubi and he trusted him with his name. I'm giving you your birthday present, Kurama said smirking. Is it a big flashy jutsu? Naruto asked excited. During Naruto's birthday, October 10th, Konoha always celebrated the Kayubi defeat by the Yandaimi. Some of the villagers would gather up and try to harm Naruto so his birthdays were always a dark day for Naruto, but the Kayubi, Hinata and the Hokage always managed to cheer him up. It's a great technique and you will be the first to use it. I trust you will use it wisely, Kurama said and in front of him materialized a rather big scroll. This is the summoning contract for the Fox Clan. Open it and write your name in blood in the first slot, Kurama explained. Naruto did as he was told. He opened the scroll and bit his thumb. He wrote his name in the first slot and pressed all five fingers down, making a hand print. Now, to summon a fox to help you bit your thumb and go through these hand seals boar right pointing arrow dog right pointing arrow bird right pointing arrow monkey right pointing arrow ram and pour chakra into the technique. Give it a try, Kurama explained. Naruto did the technique and when it was over in front of him stood a small fox. Thanks Kurama, you're the best, Naruto said. Of course I am, I'm the nine-tailed fox, king of the biju strongest being in the world, Kurama boasted about himself. You still have that stick up your ass, Naruto said laughing while dodging the Kayubi tails that were trying to smash him. Hash hash end flashback hash hash. Naruto, you need help, the fox asked. Yes Kinto, we need to track Kakashi Sensei to provide backup. This paper has his scent. Naruto said and gave the paper to Kinto so he could track him. I have him, when you are ready, Kinto said and team 8 dashed out of Konoha heading towards team 7. I didn't know you could summon Naruto, Kurunai said. I have the fox summoning contract. It was a gift from the Kayubi, Naruto explained getting a nod from Kurunai. She didn't want to pry too much. Hash hash few hours later with team 7 hash hash. Team 7 had just left the boat that they used to cross into the wave. Everyone was walking at civilian pace since they had Tazuna with them. Tazuna was as he put a, 
super amazing bridge builder. They were traveling in diamond formation, Sasuke in front, Sakura and Kiba to the sides and Kakashi in the back with Tazuna in the middle of them. They were walking calmly but they had their guard up since Kakashi warned them about a possible Jonin encounter. Suddenly Kiba sensed someone in the bush and quickly picked and threw a kanai into it. Baka! Stop applying with kanai, Sakura yelled. I'm not playing I thought someone was there. Kiba replied and went to check the bush only to find a small white rabbit. Kiba you idiot, you almost killed this poor rabbit, Sakura said and that sent Kakashi thinking. Um, white fur on spring that's strange, unless with was used as a kawarimi substitution technique. Get down, Kakashi yelled and everybody hit the deck with Kakashi dragging Tazuna. Just as he yelled above them a huge broad metal sword flew by their heads and got stuck in a tree. Moments later on top of the sword appeared a person. He was a tall and noticeably muscular man with pale skin, short spiky black hair, brown eyes, and small eyebrows. He was wearing bandages like a mask over the bottom half of his face. Under his mask, he had a relatively narrow jawline and jagged teeth. He wore his forehead protector sideways on his head. What's this? A bunch of kids playing ninja, the shinobi said. Momochi Zabuza. A rank new cannon from Karigakur known as Demon of Karigakur, Mist Village Kakashi said preparing to face him in battle. Oh, look if it isn't Sharingan no Kakashi, the shinobi now identified as Zabuza said. Just hand me the old man and you can go. You know I can't do that Zabuza, Kakashi said and lifted his Hittite revealing a fully matured Sharingan in his left eye. I get the Sharingan right in the beginning. I'm honored, Zabuza said, removing his sword and making a few hand seals he said. Karigakur no jutsu, mist technique. The air started becoming thicker and after a few seconds the whole area was covered in a thick mist. Kakashi barely managed to see his own hands right in front of him. Team, keep your senses sharp. Zabuza is a master of the silent killing technique, Kakashi said and his entire team shivered. I demand you show your face Zabuza and face me, Sasuke yelled. A Jonin was someone he could try his power on and once he defeated him, he would be closer to killing his brother. Are you serious? Zabuza asked rhetorically projecting his voice around the area not to reveal his position. Zabuza started unleashing key, killer intent, and Sasuke started shivering. Sasuke couldn't take it anymore and brought his kanai to his neck preparing to kill himself. Relax Sasuke, I won't let my teammates die, Kakashi said reassuring his team. Suddenly Zabuza appeared in the middle of Sasuke. Kiba and Sakura that were guarding Tazuna. He brought his sword and started a horizontal slash ready to kill them all. However Kakashi was faster and impaled Zabuza revealing him to be a Mizu, water, Bushin. Another Zabuza appeared behind Kakashi and cleaved him in half only to Kakashi burst into water. Zabuza seeing this suddenly felt sharp metal to this throat, he slowly turned and saw Kakashi with a kanai ready to kill him. However Kakashi wasn't expecting this Zabuza to be a clone. Seeing the Zabuza in front of him burst into water he looked around only to be met with a fierce kick to his stomach sending him crashing into a nearby lake. Zabuza shunshined to Kakashi and went through a couple of hand seals and said, Sweden, Suro no Jutsu, water prison. The water around Kakashi started to erupt and circled around him trapping him. Zabuza stood there with his hand on the water sphere holding Kakashi in place. Shit, I got caught, Kakashi thought. Everyone. Take Tazuna and run. His Mizu Bushins can't go too far from the original, Kakashi said. His team was in a bad place, he could only hope his backup arrived in time. Zabuza can't stand up to me, I'm an elite, Sasuke said and dashed forward heading to the enemy. Zabuza create a few Mizu Bushins. Sasuke engaged in a Taijutsu fight with him but quickly realized it was a bad idea. Sasuke couldn't keep up with Zabuza's speed and strength. The battle was over quickly when Zabuza gave a strong kick to Sasuke that sent him crashing to the trees hard. Sasuke couldn't even get up and could barely breathe. You should have run when you had the change. You can't even scratch me, Zabuza said. The arrogance of that boy got him killed. Zabuza clone picked his sword and went to finish the job. Sakura was shaking. She barely managed to stand up and Tazuna was already on the floor. His legs gave out. Kiba seeing Sasuke in danger ran towards Zabuza. Sasuke maybe be an idiot and an arrogant bastard but he couldn't let him be killed. 
Hiba arriving near Zabuza went for punch but Zabuza simply caught his wrist and with the other hand lifted Kiba by the neck and started punching him relentlessly. After a few punches he simply threw him to the ground. Zabuza was making his way to Sakura who was still frozen in place. Sakura knew she couldn't match Zabuza. She only graduated because of her good chakra control and book smarts. All hope seemed lost until Zabuza heard. Kaden. Ruka no Jutsu, Dragon Fire Technique. Zabuza didn't have time to dodge as a stream of hot fire came from the woods completely obliterating the clone. In front of Tazuna and Sakura arrived Naruto, Hanada, Shino and Kurenai. Naruto looked around and it didn't look good. Kakashi was trapped inside water prison and Sasuke and Kiba were on the ground injured. Quick gather Sasuke and Kiba around Tazuna and Sakura, Naruto said and Kurenai and Hanada quickly picked up both Sasuke and Kiba and regrouped in Tazuna. Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning jutsu, Naruto said slamming his hand on the ground and in a poof of smoke appeared a small fox with light red fur with four tails. You must be our summoner Naruto-sama, my name is Kagura, a medic fox, the fox said. Nice to meet you, I need your help. Sasuke and Kiba seem injured I need you to help them as you can. I'll cover you, Naruto said. Fox summons, where did he get the contract? I need to talk to him if we get out of this, Kakashi thought. Kakashi actually already knew Naruto since he sometimes watched Naruto from afar trying to make sure he was safe. After all Kakashi was one of the prized students of Yandaimi Hokage. Cage Bush and no Jutsu, Naruto said and four clones appeared. They went their separate ways making a square around Tazuna, Sakura, Sasuke, Kiba and Kagura. Ninpu, Shishenjin, Ninja Art. Four flames formation, the clones said at the same time. Suddenly a purple barrier erupted around them making sure that Zabuza couldn't get inside. A. N. The same barrier the sound four used during leaf invasion. Don't touch the walls otherwise you will get burned. The barrier will stay up for your protection. Naruto explained. Oh, a genin who knows Fuinjutsu. Maybe you are better than the rest. Zabuza said creating couple more Mizu Bushins. Inside the barrier both Sakura and Tazuna sighed happy that backup had arrived. Kagura was currently healing them. Sasuke had cracked ribs and ruptured lung while Kiba had a few bruises and dislocated shoulder. Hash hash outside the barrier hash hash. First we need to release Kakashi from the prison, Kurenai said and her team nodded. The Mizu Bushins made their way towards Kurenai's team and one of them said, Kurigakur no Jutsu. A thick mist appeared blocking the view of everyone. Hanada activated her by a Kugan but couldn't see much was the mist was laced with chakra. Naruto activated his Sharingan and extended his senses trying to find Zabuza, however he felt the presence of someone watching the fight. That person was around Chunin's skill based on chakra levels. Someone is watching, since he didn't help Tazuna I can only assume he's with Zabuza, Naruto thought and discreetly using hand signs warned his team about another shinobi watching. Fudan. Datapa, great breakthrough, Naruto and Hinata said at the same time. They breathed in air and sent a strong gust of wind that pushed the mist away completely making Zabuza frown. Each member of Team 8 separated and engaged in the clones. Naruto quickly destroyed Zabuza's clone with a fireball and taking this opportunity he took a kunai, charging it with radiant lightning, chakra, he threw it at the woods with extreme speed. The shinobi who was watching didn't expect that and didn't have time to react and the kanai embedded deeply in his shoulder. The shinobi seeing he was caught jumped into the fight and took his side by Zabuza. How did you know about Haku? Zabuza asked surprised that they found Haku. She was rather skilled in stealth. A. N. Haku is a girl. I still can't see her as a guy even in canon. We are a team of trackers. I'm a sensor so when you used your Karigakur no Jutsu I extended my senses and found him, Naruto explained. It doesn't matter let's end it now, Zabuza said and Haku went through a few hand signs. Slamming her feet into the lake she said, Sensatsu Susho, thousand needles of death, and sent a thousand water needles towards teammate. Hanada, Naruto said just above a whisper. Hi, she replied and jumped in front of her team and started spinning. She started releasing chakra from all of her chakra points. Hakusho Kaden, heavenly spin, she said and a blue dome of chakra appeared around her deflecting all the needles. Looks like I'll have to start training my team seriously, thought Kakashi. 
He was infusing his lungs with chakra trying to gain as much time as he could. Team 8 quickly dispatched of the Mizu Bushans. Naruto and Hinata went through a few hand signs and they said. Kaden. Ruka no Jutsu, Dragon Fire Technique, Naruto said. Fudan. Datapa, Great Breakthrough, Hinata said. Naruto fire attack combined with Hinata's wind attack and the result was a massive stream of fire that went quickly towards Zabuza. Haku didn't have enough time to use water jutsu because of her injured shoulder. Both of them jumped away making Zabuza release his hold of the water prison, freeing Kakashi. Kakashi tried to regain his breathe as he jumped towards Team 8. Thanks, Kakashi said and crouched. Haku, we are leaving. Zabuza said and shunshined away with Haku. He knew he wouldn't stand a chance. He was up against Yuhi Kuranai, Konoha's genjutsu mistress but also the blonde kid and the Hayuga girl seemed good and besides that Kakashi was now free. Naruto dropped the barrier and went to check up on his injured teammates. How is everyone? Naruto asked Kagura who was finishing healing Kiba. Sakura was surprised how strong Naruto and Hinata were and how they worked well together. I already healed them. Their injuries weren't life-threatening. This one, Kagura said pointing to Sasuke, needs to take it easy for a few days, he had a ruptured lung. Tazuna take us to your house, Zabuza will be back and we need to be prepared, Kakashi said and they left with Kurunai carrying Sasuke as he couldn't make any effort and was still unconscious. Hash hash Tazuna's house hash hash. A few miles down the road and team 7 and 8 arrived with Tazuna at his house. The house itself was near the ocean and seemed a simple wooden house. Tazuna led the shinobi inside. Tsunami I'm home, Tazuna said happy that finally got home. Father, Tsunami said hugging him, I'm relieved that you are alright. Tsunami was a very beautiful woman. She had mid-back dark blue hair and black eyes. She wore pink shirt with red sleeves and dark blue skirt. It's thanks to these shinobi. They saved me, Tazuna said. Tsunami approached his protective detail and bowed saying, thank you for protecting my father Shinobi-san. You are welcome to our house. We appreciate it. Is there anywhere we can lay two of my students who got injured in a fight? Kakashi asked. Tsunami nodded and led the leader Jonin to the rooms upstairs. Sakura, Kakashi said getting her attention, tomorrow we will start training more seriously. We need to be prepared for when Zabuza returns. Since Naruto injured his teammate it will be a few days until he's ready. How come a little bit of training is going to help against a Jonin? Sakura asked wondering as her sensei was trying to kill her. Sakura, who was it that saved us? Kakashi asked rhetorically, if I remember correctly the genin of team 8 actually put up a fight against Zabuza while Kiba and Sasuke were simply hammered away, Kakashi explained making Kurenai smirk inwardly. Fine but I still don't understand how a few days will help us, Sakura kept pressing. Any training is good for you. If you have to face Zabuza at least let's raise the odds even if slightly, Kakashi said to which Sakura finally nodded. Kakashi get up and approached Naruto who was chatting with his team. Naruto. Kakashi said getting Naruto's attention. How do you know my name? Naruto asked. You may not know but I actually watched over you sometimes when you were around 4 years old, Kakashi said. Inu, dog, Naruto asked remembering an Anbu with a dog mask sometimes helping him with the mob's problems before he met his father and the whole training began. That I am, he replied giving his traditional eye smile. Come, Kakashi said placing his hand on his shoulder, we need to talk privately. Naruto nodded and they both shunshined to outside of the house into a nearby woods. Hash hash Naruto and Kakashi in the woods hash hash. Kakashi and Naruto arrived in the woods via the traditional leaf shunshin that Kakashi used. That shunshin it's really starting to get old. Why don't you use an elemental shunshin? Naruto asked. Pretty much all of Konoha always used the leaf shunshin and while it got the job done it was, for lack of a better word, lame. Kakashi raised an eyebrow to what Naruto just asked. Can you do the shunshin? He asked to which Naruto nodded and used his lightning shunshin to teleport to a few meters away. Kakashi was actually surprised to see a genin use the shunshin no jutsu, much less an elemental version. I see you can, Kakashi started, and by the looks of it you already have the lightning element mastered. How? Naruto studied the man for a moment, even though he helped him several time when he was young, people tend to change. 
After a few seconds he found no deception he decided to answer him. I've been training myself since I was five years old, Naruto replied and Kakashi was actually surprised to see someone without a clan training in such a young age. However he quickly remembered his burden and he needed to be strong to withstand all the hate of his village. I see maybe I can teach a few lightning jutsu since my affinity is the same but we are getting off topic here. Kakashi started, how can you summon foxes? Kakashi asked. Naruto froze wondering if he should tell him the truth about the Kyubi. There are many people that tried to get close to Naruto to finish him off however he decided he should trust him. It was a gift from the Kyubi, Naruto said making Kakashi glare at him. Suddenly the air between the two dropped a few degrees. Naruto, Kakashi started in a very serious tone, however Naruto didn't even flinch. He was already used to it from the villagers and simply shrugged it off. The Kyubi attacked our village and almost destroyed it. You cannot trust him. Naruto hearing this really started cursing his luck. It was always the same. Every time he met someone and told about the Kyubi everyone told him the him couldn't be trusted. Kakashi-san, the Kyubi was being controlled by the Sharingan and was forced to attack the village. It wasn't his fault, Naruto said and Kakashi's visible eye widened. Only Uchiha Madara managed to control the Kyubi and he was long dead. Kakashi studied Naruto for any signs of lies but found none. However he decided that he should talk to the Hokage about this new development. Better make sure. I'll trust you but keep in mind that foxes are very cunning, Kakashi said. Kakashi-san remember that if it weren't for the medical fox I summoned Sasuke probably wouldn't have made it, Naruto stressed and Kakashi nodded seeing it was probably true. You remember me of the Yandaimi, always seeing good in everyone, Kakashi said reminiscing about his genin days where he was always a fool until his best friend died to save him. Yandaimi. Naruto asked wondering how Kakashi knew him until it finally clicked. One of the days Naruto was wandering through the Namikaze compound he found a picture of his father's genin team. There was a silver-haired boy with mask covering bottom half of his face, a pretty girl with brown hair and two red marks on each cheek and lastly a boy with black spiky hair, black eyes and orange goggles. Naruto turned the picture and it said Namikaze Minato, Hitaki Kakashi, Inazuka Rin, Uchiha Obito. A.H. Naruto yelled making Kakashi jump. I remember now. You were on my father's genin team with Rin and Obito right? He asked. That's right. Your FF father, Kakashi said stuttering. Naruto was the son of the Yandaimi Hokage. How could he be so blind? For the love of God he's pretty much a carbon copy of him. How the hell has Konoha been so blind? He should have been there for his sensei's son. He should have done more. Oh shit. Naruto said knowing that he let that part slip up. Naruto started panicking on the inside. It wasn't supposed to reveal it yet. Kakashi-san you can't tell anyone until I reveal it. Naruto said. Don't worry I know very well why you can't say it right now. Kakashi said easing the boy's worries. And. I I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. If I had known I would have taken you in, Kakashi said with his head down. Don't worry about it. I wasn't so bad. If you had taken me in I wouldn't have met Hanada-chan, Naruto said. Kakashi perked up and asked, Hanada-chan. Hanada's father disavowed her from the Hyuga clan when she was eight years old because she was weak and since then she has been living with me. Besides she's my girlfriend. Naruto explained and Kakashi actually broke out in a fit of giggles. If you are thinking what I think you are, I'm going to hurt you, Naruto said breaking Kakashi of his perverted thoughts. Okay, okay. But she will be stunning girl in a couple of years. You did well snatching her while young, Kakashi said and Naruto growled to which the Jonin simply ruffled his hair. Actually, I was wondering if you could tell me about my parents, Naruto asked shyly. I asked Hokage Gigi but he never had really prolonged contact with them. Of course, I knew them very well. For starters I can tell you that you adopted your mother's obsession for ramen. Kakashi said laughing and getting a smile from Naruto. And so they talked for a few hours. Kakashi told everything he knew about them which was most about his father since he knew him better than his mother. They talked and the hours were passing by without either of them realizing it until the sky was already dark. Well Naruto I think it's time we get back. It's already getting dark, Kakashi said. 
Thank you for telling me about them Nisan, brother, Naruto said feeling like he bonded with Kakashi. After all since Kakashi's father death he grew close to his sensei. The Yandaimi was the closest thing he had for a father. Nisan you say. Okay let's go O Tuto, younger brother, Kakashi said ruffling his hair and leaving the forest with him. Hash hash next day hash hash. The next day after the teams arrived we find everyone quietly enjoying breakfast prepared by Tsunami. They were eating until Kakashi decided to break the ice and explain a few things. Everyone. Kakashi said getting everyone's attention. After this we are going to train as I explained to Sakura yesterday. Zabuza will be back and probably bring some help so we need to be ready. We will alternate between protecting Tazuna at the bridge, protecting his family and training. Kakashi explained and everybody nodded. They continued eating for a few minutes until everyone was finished. Sasuke was already getting better from his injuries and could walk, however he still couldn't anything to physically stressful to the body. Sakura, Sasuke, Kiba, Naruto and Hinata will come with me to train while Kurinai and Shino stay and protect Tsunami and Inari. After the train I'll take some of you to the bridge to protect Tazuna. Everybody agree? Kakashi asked and everyone nodded. A few minutes later Kakashi's team accompanied by Sasuke and Kiba left the house for training. Hash hash in the woods for training hash hash. Okay now we will train chakra control, Kakashi said. Chakra control? Sakura asked. Yes. We all know how to call upon chakra however you don't know how to properly use and manage it. By doing this exercise you will be able to last longer in fights and learn new jutsu faster, Kakashi explained and Naruto wondered what type of exercise it would be. Now I'll be climbing trees, Kakashi said and Naruto sweat dropped. Kakashi ni san don't tell me you brought your team into an A-rank mission without even teaching them proper chakra control. Naruto asked and Kakashi actually felt ashamed of not teaching more personal skills. Don't sweat it Dobi we already know how to climb trees, Sasuke said and Sakura agreed. Naruto just shook his head knowing the Sasuke didn't understand the point of the exercise. Actually I focused more on teamwork exercises. You know how Sasuke and Kiba act. They are both brash and tend to jump into situations without thinking, Kakashi said and both Sasuke and Kiba scowled. Wait, you called Kakashi Sensei Nisan, I thought you had no one. Sasuke asked. He's not actually my brother by blood, but we are both orphans and we both look at the same person as our father, Naruto explained, and Hinata raised an eyebrow. She knew who Naruto's father was, which means that Kakashi must have been close to the Yandaimi. Enough chit chat. What I want you to do is focus chakra to the bottom of your feet and walk up the trees. When you can walk to the top two times in a row we'll move on, Kakashi explained. What do you mean walk up the trees? Sakura asked in all her infinite wisdom. Like this, Naruto said and started walking towards a tree. When he arrived near one he simply placed a feet in its trunk and started walking up. Everyone in team 7 minus Kakashi was shocked seeing Naruto walking vertically. Oh Naruto you already know this chakra exercise very well, Kakashi and Sasuke seethed his teeth. Dobi how did you do that? I demand you teach me, Sasuke and Naruto just ignored him. He already knew Sasuke all too well from the academy. Sasuke believed everyone should be grateful that he allowed them to breathe. Didn't you hear your sensei? Naruto asked rhetorically, you need to channel chakra to your feet and run up the tree. Exactly, take these kanai to mark your progress. Hanada I assume you already know how to do this, Kakashi asked and Hanada nodded. A Hanada Chan watch me. I'll get this down in one hour, Kiba said bragging to her. Kiba I already told you that I'm with Naruto kun. If you opened your eyes you would see that there are other girls that may like you, Hanada said and Kiba frowned. Maybe she was right. Team get started. Naruto, Hanada you are coming with me to the bridge, Kakashi said and they nodded and started walking to the bridge to protect Tazuna. You never know if Zabuza would try a sneak attack. Hash hash at the bridge hash hash. Everyone in the bridge was peacefully working. It was a bright sunny day and the air itself was rather warm due to the ocean's breeze. Kakashi was reading his traditional orange book and giggling like a crazy person. Naruto just sweat dropped when he saw him pull that book. Hanada was simply leaning in the bridge watching the ocean and Naruto appeared to be working on something. Kakashi raised an eyebrow and decided to know what he was doing. Hey Otuto, what are you doing? 
Kakashi asked getting Naruto attention. The blonde had both hand palms slightly apart from each other and he appeared to channeling Raiden Chakra between them. I working on a jutsu I'm creating. If it works it will pack quite a bang, Naruto said grinning and Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Naruto reminded him of himself when he was young. After all he graduated as Jonin when he was 13 years old and had already created his own jutsu. That's not easy you know, Kakashi said. You will never know until I try it, Naruto replied. Naruto decided to take a break and help in the bridge. Hey Tazuna, Naruto yelled getting the old man's attention, I'm tired of doing nothing. Can I help? Naruto asked. The more the merrier, Tazuna replied. But before he could continue Naruto placed his finger in a cross sign and said, Cage Bushin no Jutsu, and out came around 100 clones. Kakashi eyes widened seeing the number of clones the blonde could do. Hanada just shrugged it off as it was a normal scenario when they were training. Okay Tazuna tell them what to do, Naruto said and Tazuna just nodded dumbly. N Naruto, how can you make so many? Kakashi asked still in shock. One side effect of being a Jinchuriki is that you develop massive chakra reserves, Naruto said and Kakashi glared at him pointing to Hanada that was nearby. Don't worry, she already knows everything about me including my legacy, Naruto explained and Kakashi sighed. The work on the bridge went extremely well with the help of Naruto's shadow clones. If he continued helping the bridge should be done in two weeks. Hash hash later that day. Tazuna's house hash hash. The group sat down to eat dinner as a young boy came in and shot a disgusted look at the group of ninja before declaring how they were all stupid to face Gato and were just going to die which Naruto angrily refused was the case. What would you know about pain I bet you have all lived sheltered lives in that ninja village of yours you don't know what suffering is, the young boy yelled after Naruto had denied what they were doing was futile. So what? Things are bad but you know what? I have had it much worse, you still have a mother who loves you and a grandfather, a house to keep you warm and food every night. You don't know what it's like to be hated in your own village for something that is out of your control. You don't know what it's like to be beaten and kicked out of shops and forced to go through the garbage for food. You think your life is bad fine, but don't just sit around and moan about it do something about it fight back, don't be a coward. Kakashi sensei I'm going out to clear my head, and with that Naruto stormed out the front door. Hanada got up and quickly followed him. Kakashi sensei Naruto's life couldn't have been that bad right, he has to be lying to get attention, Sakura asked. No Sakura. Everything he said was true, Naruto was kicked out of the orphanage at age 4 and lived on the streets for months before I found him and took him to the Hokage. The Hokage gave Naruto an apartment but he had to learn everything for himself, and was constantly being beaten and kicked out of stores. And that is the watered down version, Kakashi said shocking the group in the room. Even Hinata, she was expelled from her own clan when she was 8 years old because her father deemed her too weak and unworthy of being the heiress of the clan. But luckily they found each other, Kakashi said and everyone started looking at them in a new light. They were brave kids that didn't back down. Hash hash Tazuna's house roof hash hash. Naruto stormed out of the house and made his way to the roof to gaze upon the dark sky. He needed to forget his previous argument with the spoiled kid. A few moments later, Naruto saw Hanada approaching but said nothing. Hanada made his way towards Naruto and sat beside him resting her head on his shoulder. Neither of them said anything a continued to look at the stars in a comfortable silence. Until Hanada decided to break the ice. You really shouldn't blame the him, he's just naive, she said trying to ease Naruto. It's just, we all suffered. Me being a Jinchuriki, you getting expelled from your family and even Sasuke getting his whole clan killed by his own brother. Compared to us he has a good life, Naruto replied. It's true we suffered but not everyone has the strength to move on and forget the pain. If it weren't for you I would probably still be the same shy, weak girl I was. You were the one that gave me strength. Look at Sasuke, he's pain drove to becoming obsessed by revenge. Hanada said. You are unique Naruto-kun, Hanada continued, people that get to know you pull strength from you. You were my beacon of hope. You just need to be it for this kid too, she said. I'll do my best Hinata-chan, he replied with a small smile pulling her closer. Now that I think about our lives, you never took me out on a date, she said. Naruto was caught by surprise by this but she had a point. 
In a relationship it's usual for couples to go on dates. I never really thought about it but it wouldn't be a bad idea. We could use the time we have here away from hateful glares of Konoha. How about tomorrow I take to dinner? Naruto replied with smirk. I would love to, she said giving a kiss on the cheek and dragging him inside as Naruto is calmed down. Hash hash next day 7 p.m. Hash hash. The next day after they set up their date went by normally. Everyone trained with Kakashi and Kurenai however both Naruto and Hinata trained away from them since they were more advanced. Today the charge of watching Tazuna on the bridge fell on Kurenai with Team 7 and to say they bored was an understatement. Sasuke actually seemed ready to go on a killing spree just to pass the time. He wanted to train but he got stuck with watching Tazuna, a few workers and crap ton of Naruto clones working on the bridge. Sasuke seethed his teeth when he arrived at the bridge and saw all the clones Naruto did. That power should belong to him since he needed that to avenge his clan. It doesn't matter only an Uchiha can defeat an Uchiha, Sasuke thought. Only if he knew. Currently we find Naruto and Hinata getting ready to go on their first date. They asked for permission to Kakashi and Kurenai since they were on a mission. Neither of them had proper clothes other than their shinobi attire. The only difference was that they left their headbands at home signifying that they were off service, if one could call it that. They walked through town deciding on where to eat. When they arrived at the center of the town both of them were shocked. This town was poor. There was people asking for jobs, kids living on the outside and even the resources the markets had to sell were scarce and of very poor quality. Gato had pretty much destroyed this small town. At least if their mission was successful and Tazuna managed to finish the bridge they would be able to recover from this. Not how they decided to spend their first date, but they already loved each other, this date wasn't much. They were walking watching the various shops and restaurants trying to pick a good place when they heard some yelling in the middle of the streets. Quick old man. We already told you that you need to pay up, one of Gatto's men said. There were two guys trying to collect payment from a shop owner who was on the ground looking terrified. B but I I already paid this month, the shop owner replied. Boss said that you sent more merchandise for shipping so you need to pay more taxes this month, he said. If you can't pay up we'll take your wife as payment, he concluded and started physical assault on the man. Naruto and Hinata seeing this jumped into action. In a swift motion of punches and a few kicks, Gato's man were running away bruised and bleeding wondering how the kids managed to do this. Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning no jutsu, Naruto said and in a poof of smoke appeared a small one-tailed black fox. His name was Kaiofu and he was a spy fox that extremely skilled in stealth and information gathering. What you need Naruto? Kaiofu asked. I need you to follow those two men and find where Gato's base is and any other information you can, Naruto explained and the fox dashed out of sight. Naruto turned to Hinata. Shall we continue? He asked extending his right arm which Hinata took and pulled him closer. Finally deciding where to eat they entered and found the place was welcoming and warm. It wasn't a fancy restaurant but they didn't care for that. During their lunch they tried to talk, however they already knew everything about each other. It was a rather strange date as most went by in silence so they simply ate in a comfortable silence. When they left Naruto decided it was still early so he decided to drag Hinata to local cinema and watch something. A couple hours later they arrived at Tazuna's house. Their date didn't go that well but they didn't care. After all the point of the date was to spend some time together since the mission started it was either training or guarding Tazuna. Hash hash one week later hash hash. One week had passed and the teams were preparing for the showdown at the bridge. It was a terrifying sight for any civilian to see a shinobi getting ready for a fight. The ground was filled with weaponry, kanais, shuriken, sanban, flash tags, explosive tags, ninja wire, giant shuriken and even Naruto's sword was out of his storage seal. He decided to carry it in his back since he could need it at any time. Everyone ready? Kakashi asked and everyone nodded. The fox Naruto had sent to gather information and spy on Gato paid off. The fox found out that Zabuza would attack today since Haku was already healed from her shoulder wound as was Zabuza from chakra exhaustion. Since Gato plans to betray Zabuza when the fight is over he may well send someone here. If he does send they probably won't be shinobi, Kakashi said and brought his hand to his chin and started pondering who to stay back keeping in mind that he would face Zabuza and Haku. How about we leave Sakura? 
Hanada and Kiba here, since they have good taijutsu and they can easily take out any thugs Gato sends. The rest will go to the bridge. I can engage on Haku with Sasuke if necessary, Kakashi Sensei and Kurenai Sensei can take Zabuza while Shino provides overall support and protects the client, Naruto suggested. Um, Kakashi pondered. Shino will in a tight spot if either Zabuza or Haku split past us and rushed the target, Kakashi pointed out. Naruto considered this scenario. I can put the same barrier as last time, besides Shino can control his bugs from inside the barrier right, Naruto asked and Shino nodded. It's good, well then everyone stick to the plan. Tazuna you are ready, Kakashi asked and Tazuna weakly nodded. After all Tazuna would be bait to draw them out. Everyone started moving out and before they left Naruto gave Hinata a brief kiss while whispering, good luck, if you need me here use the ring, and Hinata nodded. Hash hash on the bridge hash hash. Tazuna was approaching the bridge guarded by Kakashi, Kurenai, Naruto, Sasuke and Shino. They entered the bridge and there was already a mist in the air. Naruto discreetly activated his Sharingan while placing the usual Genjutsu on it. They made their way to bridge moving as silently as possible. Well everyone minus Tazuna who was sweating bullets and breathing hard just from fear itself. Naruto using his Sharingan could see glimpses of two chakra sources. They are already here, both Zabuza and Haku. Just about 100 meters away, Naruto said and everyone stood in their guard. How do you know that? Kakashi asked. After all Kakashi sensing abilities weren't that good and he was considering summoning one of his dogs. I'll tell you later. Can't tell with Sasuke here, Naruto whispered to his hearer and Kakashi nodded, now isn't the time for chit chat. They continued walking until they stood a few meters from each other. Kakashi we meet again, I'll enjoy the bounty on your head, Zabuza in a dreary voice. So many places to choose from. I can slit your throat, stab into your heart, destroy your lungs, burst your kidneys, or break your spine, Zabuza continued saying while unleashing a lot of killer intent. Kakashi, Kurenai and Naruto seemed immune to it while Shino and Sasuke were sweating and Tazuna was already in the ground as his legs gave out. Naruto saw Zabuza move from his spot but he didn't have time to warn his team. He picked up his sword and jumped in front of Kurenai blocking the Kubikiribocho. You are very good kid to manage to find me, Zabuza said. Not many people manage to keep their head cool enough to think in these situation. Sometimes even Jonan would get caught. If it weren't for Naruto, Kurenai would already be dead. Say goodbye to your missed Zabuza, Naruto said going through a few hand signs and unleashing a gust of wind that blew the mist away getting a frown from Zabuza. I really hate wind users, Zabuza said shouldering his sword and getting ready for the attack. As we planned, everyone take their positions, Kakashi ordered. Why should the Dobi fight while me and Elite will just stand and watch, Sasuke said in his typical arrogant tone. Now is not the time Genin, Kakashi said in a very serious tone making Sasuke gulp. You will stay with Tazuna outside the barrier and only jump in if Naruto needs. Are we understood? Kakashi asked and Sasuke nodded. Get ready, Kakashi said. Tazuna retreated with Shino. Naruto made four shadow clones that formed a square around them and said, Ninpu, Shishenjin, Ninja Art, four flames formation, and erupted a purple barrier with Tazuna and Shino inside and Sasuke on the outside. Kakashi and Kurenai got closer preparing to fight Zabuza and Naruto with his sword on hand prepared to face Haku. Zabuza said a few water clones that surround Kakashi, Kurenai and Naruto. Naruto turned to Kakashi and he gave him a nod. Naruto disappeared in a burst of speed and one second later every single clone burst into water. Looks like you found your rival in speed wouldn't you say Haku, Zabuza asked. It looks like that, Haku replied and dashed towards Naruto. Naruto seeing this gripped in sword tighter and started running towards Haku. They met roughly at halfway and started exchange a few blows. Neither of them gaining advantage. Naruto would easily block every single attack however he didn't manage to land anything either. They found themselves in a standstill. Naruto was blocking Haku's kunai with his sword. Haku seeing he had one hand occupied starting going through single-handed hand seals and once finished said, Sensatsu Susho, flying water needles of death, and immediately a thousand water needles formed from the clone's water and started raining on Naruto. 
Naruto seeing this knew he hadn't many options to avoid it and decided to test his new eyes and the power he learned to use. He shifted his eyes into the Mangeku and said, Kamui, might of the gods. Naruto made his body intangible and everyone watched in awe as well as fear as every single needle passed give through Naruto's body exiting in the opposite side. It's not possible, Haku said. You aren't a bunshin, I can feel your chakra and your sword is pressing against my kanai, she explained. Well that's one my most powerful jutsus, Naruto said smirking. He used this moment of distraction and gave a powerful kick to Haku's chest that sent her flying and crashing into the ground near Zabuza. Zabuza was still wondering how the kid managed to do that and also beat Haku in speed. You are really good for a genin, Zabuza said. Kakashi laughed and said smirking. Zabuza what if I told you that Naruto here is actually the dead last? Zabuza's eye widened. The brat couldn't possibly be the dead last. That our Konoha's has been seriously training their genin. Zabuza before we begin our real fight I have a proposition for you, Naruto said and Zabuza raised an eyebrow. What do you want? Zabuza said wondering what the kid meant. I heard that Gato plans to betray you once you get the job done. He plans to kill you and Haku once you kill Tazuna so he doesn't have to pay you. So how about we join forces and kill Gato and in return you can come back with us to the leaf, Naruto explained and everyone raised an eyebrow. Naruto you just can't offer asylum to a missing nin like that, Kakashi said. Kid you are crazy, what makes you think I would join the leaf? Zabuza asked. I bet you are tired of all the running and having to keep looking for missions just to live. And I know the old man well enough. Both of you can be great assets to the village. Zabuza is one of the seven swordsmen Haku has the ice release, Naruto said and silently Zabuza agreed. Both of them were tired of the constant running and they wanted a place to settle down. How do you know about my bloodline? Haku asked. She didn't reveal it last time they faced each other. Did you really think we would just train while apart? Information is half the battle so I sent a fox to spy on Gato's warehouse and he found you training. Naruto explained and they both scowled. A Jonin getting spied on without realizing it. Be that as it may, but I still have a reputation and in my place it's all I have. We will fight and if Gato appears to finish me off then we join forces and then I'll decide if we'll go to the leaf. Zabuza said and Naruto nodded. If Naruto was lying which Zabuza wouldn't now, Zabuza would be destroying his reputation by betraying his client. Immediately Haku starting going through hand seals and said, Maku Hayusho, demonic ice mirrors. All around Naruto ice mirrors started forming trapping him in an ice dome. Haku walked to one of the mirrors and simply entered the mirror itself as if she became nothing more than a reflection. Hash hash inside the ice dome hash hash. Inside the dome Naruto could see that Kakashi and Kurenai were already engaging Zabuza. Even for both of them Zabuza was no pushover. Naruto needed to get over with his fight in order to go help them. Also Sasuke was around and he knew that if they needed help he would jump in. Uchiha pride and all. Funny, Naruto was an Uchiha but even though he had pride in his blood he was never arrogant about his power. Naruto focused on his battle and noticed that every mirror around him had Haku's reflection in it. He noticed that each Haku was holding three Sinbans in each hand getting ready to attack. Naruto's eyes widened when he realized that Haku was much faster now, if he didn't have the Sharingan to track her movements we would need to resort to higher level attacks. Haku looked at Naruto surprised. You are the first person to ever dodge my attack when they are trapped in this jutsu. Naruto simply smirked. Haku continued her relentless assault switching from mirror to mirror while launching countless Sanban to Naruto. This went on for a few minutes, Naruto would simply dodge all Sanbans without even needing his Kamui. How are you dodging my attacks? Haku yelled finally losing her cool. You can't win, this jutsu spends a lot of chakra and you already getting low, Naruto simply said. Shut up. Haku yelled and charged at Naruto as fast as she could but Naruto's Sharingan could still follow her perfectly and saw her every single muscle movement in slow motion as she charged. Naruto took the opportunity and grabbed her by the hands throwing her into once of mirrors. Suddenly near where Haku landed a kanai with an explosive tag. The tag exploded and Haku braced herself for the impact not getting too much damage. Naruto looked to see who threw the kanai and found Sasuke inside the dome. What are you doing here? Naruto asked. I figured Adobe-like would need help, 
Sasuke said with his trademark arrogant smirk. Haku took this opportunity and threw a few senban to Sasuke. Naruto noticed the senban incoming towards Sasuke. Naruto didn't have enough time to reach him so Sasuke got it by the senban and fell limp in the ground. Naruto's eyes widened and he ran towards him. Naruto looked at him and noticed that the senban hit his neck in a non-vital area and using his Sharingan he noticed that his chakra network was still active so Sasuke was probably in death-like state. Naruto decided to finish this battle and said, Kaden, Gukaku no Jutsu, great fireball technique, and launched a fireball into one of the mirrors seeing if it would be enough. To his surprise the fireball impacted the mirror but it remained there as if nothing happened. You can't defeat my technique with such low-level attacks, Haku said. Then let's take this up a notch, Naruto said and made a single cage bunchen and both went through a few hand seals. Kaden. Goryuka no Jutsu, great dragon fire technique, Naruto said. Fudan. Datapa, great breakthrough, Naruto's clone said. The combination of AB-ranked Kaden ninjutsu powered up by the wind jutsu and the result was a big fire dragon rocketing towards the mirrors. Haku tried pumping more chakra to his technique but it wasn't enough. The pressure of the dragon coupled with the tremendous heat made the ice dome explode sending Haku crashing hard into the ground in pain with burns and her mask cracked. Forgive me Zabuza-sama, I cannot defeat this boy, Haku thought coughing a bit of blood. Naruto approached Haku still weary as she still could attack. Naruto made a few hand seals and said, Chakra seal. Placing his hand on Haku he blocked her chakra and tied her up with ninja wire. He went to see how the other battle was going on. Hash hash outside of ice dome few minutes earlier hash hash. Kakashi and Kurenai were about to face Zabuza. Kakashi pulled up in headband revealing his Sharingan. Sharingan again. Zabuza mocked. Be proud Zabuza. You the first enemy to ever see it twice, Kakashi said and started going through hand seals. Kaden. Gukaku no Jutsu, great fireball technique, Kakashi said and sent a fireball towards Zabuza. Zabuza didn't even budge, he went through hand signs of his own and said, Sweden, Sujinheki, water wall, and created a water wall that blocked the fireball creating a cloud of steam all around. Kakashi run forward and engage Zabuza on Taijutsu. Wrong move as Zabuza was stronger due to being used to use his big broad sword. Kakashi sent a low kick making Zabuza jump up. Kakashi tried to capitalize on this with a punch but Zabuza blocked it. Zabuza jumped back just in time to black a barrage of shuriken sent by Kurenai. Sweden. Swiryuden no Jutsu, water dragon, Zabuza said and sent a big water dragon towards Kurenai. She got caught in the ground and was sent crashing into the wall hard disabling her momentarily. Kurenai. Kakashi yelled and made his towards her to check on her condition. When he arrived near her she was regaining consciousness. They made up a battle plan that would end Zabuza when they heard an explosion coming from the ice dome. Naruto. They both thought. But what both and Zabuza saw was a big stream of fire coming from the dome with Haku flying towards the ground and Naruto simply walking out of the ice dome now practically all destroyed. The brat managed to defeat Haku, is no ordinary genin. He must be at least Jonin to defeat Haku without getting hurt. Zabuza said watching Naruto tie Haku up and making his way towards his battle. Need help? Naruto asked not even slightly winded. His massive chakra reserves weren't even slightly spent, he was practically full. Sure. Kurenai got hit. Let head rest for a bit while she prepares, Kakashi said and Naruto started sinking into the ground. How many jutsus does he know? Is a fresh genin and so far I already saw big Kaden and futon jutsus and now low level doden, Kakashi thought. Something where was out of place. Zabuza had his guard up. If one thing he knew was not to underestimate the blonde kid. He managed to easily defeat Haku. Suddenly he felt a presence behind and turned but he was too slow. Naruto emerged from the ground just behind Zabuza and in his hand was a blue ball of chakra. Rasengan. Naruto said slamming the blue condensed ball of chakra into Zabuza until he burst into water. Shit water clone. Naruto thought and turned to see Zabuza with his sword ready to chop in half. This is the end kid, Zabuza said and brought his sword for an horizontal slash to chop Naruto in half. Naruto, Kakashi yelled. Naruto activated once again his Kamui. He got to admit it's a kick-ass power that most likely confuses enemies to no end. 
Zabuza was watching as his sword was phasing through Naruto and leaving his body without a scratch. When the sword left him, Naruto gave Zabuza an uppercut and jumped back near Kakashi. Zabuza regained his balance. What the hell is that attack? Zabuza asked getting pissed off. He never saw anything like that. That's for me to know and for you to find out, Naruto said smugly making Zabuza even more pissed off. Suddenly a tree started growing behind Zabuza trapping with its branches. Megan, Jubaku Satsu, tree binding death, Kurenai said making the tree grow and snaring Zabuza in place without chance to escape. You are too dangerous to be left alive. What I'm about to show is my own personal jutsu, Kakashi said and started gathering a great amount of chakra in his right hand. The chakra changed into electricity until it started producing a loud sound. Kakashi dashed forward intending to end Zabuza's life for good. Chidori, 1000 birds, he was about to slam it against Zabuza when he heard. Look at that, the demon defeat by a punk, some man said in the far side on the bridge. Kakashi stopped his assault disabling his Chidori and said, Gato, with distaste. What are you doing here Gato? Zabuza asked getting the impression the blonde kid was telling the truth. I'm here to kill you. You are simply too expensive when I can buy a few thugs that get the job done. Gato said smirking thinking he was untouchable. Surrounded by 50 thugs all equipped with weapons. Release me, we are no longer enemies. You were right kid, Zabuza said and Kurenai left her illusion down. Zabuza picked up his sword and was about to rush into Gato when Naruto placed a hand in front of him making Zabuza confused. I want to try out the jutsu I've been developing, Naruto said. Hey, old man Tazuna how are you supplies to finish the bridge? Naruto asked. I've got plenty, why do you ask? Tazuna said getting confused. Kakashi sensei, Kurenai sensei, Zabuza you are about to watch my very first creation watch closely, Naruto said and everyone wondered what he was going to do even Sasuke who just got up a few minutes ago. You really think you can defeat us all? One of the thugs said. Naruto simply smiled. Naruto brought his hands closers and slammed them against each other and started concentrating. He slightly separated his hands and started concentrating Raiden Chakra between them. A few seconds later the Raiden Chakra started shrinking into a small perfect light blue sphere. Naruto sent the sphere into the sky and it expanded into a flash of light immediately gathering clouds in the sky. Thunders could be heard as the sky started to get darker and heavy rain started to fall. As the thunder intensified everyone watched in wonder how the kid managed to make it rain without much difficulty. Is this how you are going to kill us? Rain? Gato said. Everyone thought that what he was doing failed but Naruto simply smirked. Naruto concentrated Raiden Chakra in his right hand and sent a small beam to sky and everyone watched was a massive lightning dragon gathered in the sky as if waiting for command of its master. Watch closely. Naruto said and brought his hand down commanding the dragon to attack. Raiden. Kiran. Naruto said. The dragon left the sky and rocketed towards Gato and the thugs with such speed that everyone only saw a glimpse of light before the bridge where Gato was exploded with tremendous source that everyone had to gather chakra to its feet just to don't get blown away. Everyone watched in awe at the power of such jutsu. When the dust cleared there wasn't nothing left where the thunder landed. In the place where Gato and Thugs were was now a big hole. Even the bridge itself was blown to bits. So much power, Kakashi said as he watched everything with his Sharingan. That technique was easily an S rank. Maybe I should go to the leaf. I wouldn't want beyond the receiving end of that, Zabuza thought. That power should be mine, with that I could easily defeat my brother. Yes, that power will be mine, Sasuke thought as he watched in awe the massive lightning strike. What the hell are these shinobi, they can't be human, Tazuna thought in awe and a bit of fear. Awesome my technique worked, Naruto exclaimed happily and everyone turned to him with theirs fixed on him. Congrats Kit, Kurama said. It's over. Gato is more than dead, Kakashi said looking at Naruto of laughed. So Zabuza have you thought about Naruto's proposal, Kakashi asked and Zabuza started pondering. He was tired of this life and if went to the leaf perhaps he could witness that attack once again. That lightning dragon was beautiful. I'll go with you. I'm tired of this life. Besides I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that, Zabuza said as he pointed to massive missing piece of bridge and Naruto smirked. By the way Naruto congrats, 
That is one powerful jutsu easily s ranked, Kakashi said happy that he inherited his father talents. And the best thing is that its chakra consumption is practically non-existent since the dragon is powered by the natural electricity of the sky, Naruto replied and Kakashi nodded. Maybe you can teach it to me, Kakashi said. You need a very high lightning affinity as you need to manipulate the very essence of electricity and also manage to gather it up in the sky, but if you have I would happily teach it to you Nisan, Naruto said. Nisan? Zabuza asked. We aren't really brothers but we are close enough, Naruto said. Dobi I demand you teach me that jutsu, Sasuke said walking up to Naruto. No, Naruto simply said. What do you mean no? That power should belong to me and Uchiha elite, Sasuke said. The reason I won't teach it to you is because you have the wrong goals. Revenge and lust for power, Naruto said and walked of leaving Sasuke angry. The council will heard about this, Sasuke thought. Okay everyone let's head home. Tazuna you can work peacefully now that Gato is dead. We will probably be a few more days since Naruto decided to blow up the bridge, Kakashi said glaring at him. Naruto simply scratched the back of his head. Hash hash few days later hash hash. Everyone was at Tazuna's place packing to leave. The bridge was complete and the wave was starting to recover from Gato's tyranny. Haku became good friends with Naruto and Hinata since they shared a common background. They were both hated and chased away from what they contained either it be a demon or bloodline. Haku recovered very well since Naruto summoned a healing fox to help her treatment. Zabuza gave Naruto a few pointers and tips on his sword style. Zabuza was surprised when he found out that Naruto was an Uzumaki, masters in the art of the sword. Kakashi was almost floored when he found out about Naruto. Flashback. Everyone had arrived at Tazuna's house coming from their battle. They found it was a good idea to leave some backup in the house as two thugs attacked and tried to kidnap Tsunami and Inari. Kakashi called Naruto over and they both went outside of the house into the woods. So, care to explain how you could see Zabuza and Haku in the mist, Kakashi said. I know I can trust Kakashi-sensei. My father never told you this. Actually I believe he never told anyone other than my mother. Naruto said and activated his Sharingan. Kakashi's eyes widened when he saw a three-tomo Sharingan fire up in Naruto's eyes. How can you have the Sharingan? Neither you mother or father were Uchiha's, Kakashi said. Actually my father was an Uchiha he just never told anyone. Did you ever wonder how could he be so fast? It's true he used the Hiroshin but a normal person without any bloodline wouldn't be able to react in time at those speeds, Naruto explained and Kakashi asked why he never pondered that situation. So how many people know that you are an Uchiha? Kakashi asked. So far the old man, Hinata, Shino, Kurinai sensei and you. And I'm happy I never told anyone since I awakened it when I was five otherwise I would probably join the Uchiha clan in the grave, Naruto said sending shivers to Kakashi. Oh another thing. Naruto started. I kind of copied your Chidori, since Raiden is my main affinity do you mind if use it? Naruto asked rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. I have no problem with that, besides the Chidori was created to be used in conjunction with the Sharingan so it serves you well. Kakashi said, I wonder why Sensei never told me, Kakashi wondered out loud. It's probably because of who was his father, Naruto said and Kakashi raised an eyebrow. My grandfather was Uchiha Madara, Naruto said and Kakashi froze hearing that name. How is it possible? Kakashi asked. Madara didn't die in his battle with Hashirama and a few years later my father was born, Naruto said. Geez, with blood like that and how he is no Naruto will be extremely powerful later on, Kakashi thought. You know the council will be on your ass when they find out right, Kakashi asked. Don't worry. I already studied politics and laws. I knew someday I would need them, Naruto said laughing. This is the reason I asked the old man not to be on your team. I knew Sasuke would be with you so you could train his Sharingan when he awakened it and I would someday have to use it and I didn't want to always be covering it up with a genjutsu, Naruto explained and Kakashi nodded. I'm just picturing the council faces when they find out, Kakashi said laughing, let's go home and rest. You need to work on the bridge tomorrow since you blew it up, Kakashi said and Naruto sighed. End flashback. Everyone from town was gathered up in the bridge saying their goodbyes to their heroes. The brave shinobi that killed Gato and freed the wave. 
Don't cry Inari. I'll come visit, Naruto said. Inari simply nodded. Take care old man, Naruto said to Tazuna. Goodbye and don't forget to visit, Tazuna said and everyone nodded and left towards the leaf. What should we name the bridge? One of the town's people asked. How about the super great Tazuna Bridge? Tazuna said and Tsunami bonked him in the head. How about the great Naruto Bridge? Since he was the one that killed Gato and convinced Inari to fight for what he wants, Tsunami replied and everyone agreed. The great Naruto Bridge it is, Tazuna said watching everyone leave. Hash hash Hokage's office one day later hash hash. Everyone was in the Hokage's office giving their report of the mission. Since their group was only shinobi they managed to get back to the leaf much faster even having to stop a few times so Sakura could rest. Naruto has the same talent as his father, the Hokage thought reading about his lightning attack. And turned to the missing nin in the room and starting massing his temples. You give me nothing more than paperwork Naruto-kun, the old man said. How about this? You let Zabuza and Haku join the leaf and I tell you how to defeat paperwork. Naruto said and in a flash the Hokage threw two headbands to Haku and Zabuza and started shaking Naruto's shoulder begging him to tell. Everyone watching this sweat dropped. Two words, Naruto said and Hokage focused on him. Cage Bushin, he said. The Hokage walked calmly to his chair. He opened one drawer and took a paper that said, smash here. He put the paper on the table and started slamming his head saying, stupid, stupid. I'll allow it. Zabuza since you are a missing nin you will have a six month probation period, the Hokage said and he nodded. Haku since you don't have any village affiliation you can join a genin team next graduation, how about it, he asked. Actually Hokage sama I would like to become a combat medic. I have good knowledge of poison and medicinal plants, she said and the Hokage pondered. Very well, you can start in the hospital. I'll have someone teach you the basics but you still need to be on a genin team and advance to at least chunin until you can dedicate full time, the Hokage explained and she nodded. Everyone dismissed, the Hokage said and create three shadow clones to do paperwork. Naruto-kun how about I take you to ramen, the Hokage said and Naruto started jumping in the air shouting, ramen, ramen. This village is crazy, Zabuza said and Haku nodded. Chapter 13 Mission to Land of the Waterfall. The next week after everyone returned from their wave mission went without much trouble. The Hokage gave them the week off so they could train and rest and do the occasional D rank mission. During this week, Naruto and Hinata trained with Zabuza in their Kenjutsu and Hinata in Sweden Ninjutsu. Apart from training with Zabuza, they also did their normal training with Kurunai Sensei, but there wasn't much she could teach them. Also, Haku started in the hospital learning the basics of medical ninjutsu. She was really skilled in it. Naruto also trained Hinata since she started showing a lightning affinity. With this training she started developing a new taijutsu style that was rather deadly. One small touch and everything was over. This new style could be considered an improvement over her flowing fist. Currently it was around 4 p.m. and both Naruto and Hinata were resting on the couch locked in a makeout session. Naruto was on top planting kisses all around her neck making her laugh. She decided to return the favor and flipped him making her be on top, she kissed deeply in the lips for a few seconds and left him dazed. Suddenly there was a knock on the door and Naruto pouted that it ruined their alone time. I swear I'm about to kill whoever knocked, Naruto muttered as he got up and went to the door. Come on Naru kun be nice, Hinata said. We can always continue after it, she said winking at him. Naruto turned back to look at her with a devious smile that gave her chills. Naruto opened the door and saw an Anbu masked shinobi standing there. Yes, Naruto asked. The Hokage demands your presence in the council room, the Anbu said and grabbed his arm getting ready to take him away. Naruto removed his arm from his grip. We will be there momentarily, Naruto said in a cold tone glaring at him with his cold blue eyes. The Anbu nodded, Naruto closed the door and turned back to Hinata who was waiting for him. Sorry Haim but they the council wants me. Wanna come? It's fun, he said smirking. Sure, let me grab a coat, she replied. She got up grabbed a coat of both walked out of the house. When outside they both shunshined to the Hokage's tower. Hash hash Hokage tower council room hash hash. Naruto and Hinata arrived at the Hokage tower and made their way towards the council room. 
When they arrived there was an Anbu stationed outside of the room guarding it. The Anbu opened the door and they both walked in. The civilian council immediately started glaring at him and he simply discarded it. Hiyashi was glaring daggers at Hinata wondering what she was doing here. What are you doing here Hinata? Hiyashi asked. Can't I be here for my boyfriend? She replied kissing him in the cheek and getting a distasteful look from Hiyashi and the civilians. Disgusting. How can you associate with a de? Hiyashi didn't finish as a kanai launched from Naruto lodged itself in the wall near his head cutting a few hairs and making the man freeze. Careful Hiyashi-sama. I wouldn't want you to break the Hokage-sama's law, Naruto said smirking. The Hyugas were known for always remaining cool no matter how stressful the situation. Everyone's eyes widened. If he wanted he could have killed him right here and no. No one even saw him pulling out a kanai. You dare attack me. I can kill your precious girlfriend here only lifting two fingers, Hiyashi said in a calm tone. You could try, but you would hit the floor dead before your fingers were even in the tiger seal, Naruto calmly said. Is that a threat? Hiyashi asked narrowing his eyes. No, just a warning. If you do anything to harm her, well in this case you would call it the Hyuga massacre, except I would only kill the main house since they are all arrogant, Naruto said and everyone gasped and Hiyashi simply scowled. He would have his revenge but not now, trying to defuse the situation before he embarrassed himself even more. How can you have weapons in here? The Anbu outside should have made sure no weapons were allowed in here, Hiyashi said. The Hokage only watched the interaction with fascination. Here it was a 14-year-old boy pissing off the council, it amused as hell so he just watched. See these little things, Naruto said and showed his wrists bands. In these wrists bands I have a few storage seals for kanai, shurikens and sanbans. It's a lot easier than wearing a pouch, besides it's not my fault the Anbu didn't check them, Naruto explained. Besides I don't understand why you prevent weapons in here but you let in shinobi without restricting their chakra. Chakra is the shinobi's ultimate weapon, without it we are nothing more than civilians, Naruto said and everyone pondered. He has a point you know, Shikaku asked rhetorically and few nodded. That's not what we called you here for, one of the civilians said. Before we start may I ask what is Sasuke doing here? Naruto asked and everyone stared at him wondering how he managed to sense his chakra. Sasuke stepped out from the shadows smirking. How did you know I was their dobi? Sasuke asked. Everyone seems to keep forgetting that I'm a censor, Naruto said sighing. Hey old man, so, Naruto didn't get to finish. Show respect to the Hokage brat. Hiyashi said. Fine, Hokage-sama I was wondering the reason you called me, Naruto said. That I would like to know as well. The Hokage replied looking at the civilian council who was a bit nervous. We are here so that Naruto-san can teach Uchiha-sama that lightning jutsu you used in your last mission, one of the civilians said and Naruto narrowed his eyes. Sorry, not teaching it. It's an S-rank jutsu of my own creation so it belongs to me and I alone can choose who to teach it to. Naruto said and the civilian side erupted in protest. Naruto simply waited for them to calm down. You should be proud of teaching the Uchiha-sama, the pink banshee yelled. Her name was Sakiri and she was Sakura's mother. I don't understand you, couple weeks ago you bitched about me becoming a shinobi and one of you hired two janins to assassinate me and now you want me to teach him, Naruto said and the shinobi side froze when they heard they tried to assassinate him. Could you clarify your assassination attempt Naruto-san, Shibi said. Abarame Shibi was Shino's father and the current head of the Abarame clan. The night after the Genin's graduation, one member of the civilian side named Tunokanta hired two Janin to kill us. They managed to break into my house during the night and tried to stab us. However I sensed them and we killed one of them while restraining the other and delivered him to the Hokage, Naruto explained. We, Shibi asked. Hanada is living with me, Naruto explained and Hiyashi thought that her daughter couldn't sink any lower. After that the one who hired them was executed for an attack attempt on a leaf shinobi, Naruto explained. Oh and just to warn you if you try again, I already protected my house with a few security seals so if anyone tries to break into it they will have a nasty surprise, Naruto said smirking evilly and giving the civilians shivers. We are getting of topic, we demand you teach the jutsu to Uchiha-sama. Sakiri said getting to the point of the meeting. I already said that I won't. It's my creation, for example, 
Naruto said and turned towards Hiyashi, the Kaden technique doesn't require any type of bloodline so anyone could learn it. Why not teach it to the general shinobi? Naruto asked. That technique is secret of the Hyuga clan but I wonder how you know about it, Hiyashi said narrowing his eyes. Haim, Naruto said and Hinata went to the middle of the room and started spinning with a low-powered Kaden so she didn't destroy anything. How dare you use a technique of the main branch of the HYUUGAS, Hiyashi yelled getting up and finally losing his temper and raising his two fingers to activate Hinata's cursed seal. Naruto seeing this dashed forward with blinding speeds and slammed both hands into Hiyashi chest saying, Chakra seal, applying a chakra restricting seal with his left hand and saying, Paralysis seal, applying a seal that stops all motion from Hiyashi freezing him in place with his right hand. Suddenly Anbu appeared in the room with swords drawn and pointed to Naruto's neck. Everyone's eyes were bulging out at the events that transpired just a few seconds ago. The Hokage was simply enjoying his life. Naruto's speed was phenomenal as his work with seals, only a skilled seal master could apply seals with his hands. Naruto activated his Kamui with his Sharingan hidden and simply walked through the Anbu and their sword towards Hinata. Anbu just watched him literally walk through them like he was a ghost. I told you council meetings are fun, Naruto said and Hinata giggled while everyone was staring at the pair. Naruto-kun, remove the seals from Hiyashi, the Hokage said and Naruto complied and removed his seals from him. And Hiyashi, refrain yourself from disturbing actions, the Hokage concluded. Hiyashi continued glaring at the pair releasing little bit of ki that didn't even affect them. Now, I won't teach it to Sasuke for three reasons, Naruto started. First, he doesn't deserve it, he's an arrogant kid who thinks everyone should kneel before him. Second, you need a very high lightning affinity to be able to use it, your affinity must be on the same level as Nadaim's water affinity but in this case for lightning. Third, I'm a shinobi so you have no authority over me, Naruto concluded. Sasuke seeing this seethed his teeth as Naruto was explaining. You don't deserve that power and you everyone should kneel before the Uchihas, Sasuke said and rushed Naruto with a kanai. Naruto sidestepped him and placed him in a chokehold, after a few seconds he dropped him into the floor unconscious. You killed him, Anbu killed the demon, Sakiri yelled and the Naruto simply sighed. He's just unconscious, as much I hate him I wouldn't kill him just because of his temper, Naruto explained. And your worship for the Uchiha will be your downfall one day. Care to explain how he managed to pull a kanai from his pouch? Naruto asked. Nobody answered. The shinobi council didn't like the much the Uchiha, he was an arrogant fool but the civilians pampered his every demand. Naruto-san, we agree that jutsu is yours and only you should choose who to teach to, Shibi said. Thank you, Abarame-san. Naruto said glad this was over, however he hoped he could still have a bit of fun with anyone else. However, could you explain the requirements and disadvantages of the jutsu for classification, Shibi said. That jutsu could very well be a kinjutsu. Not a problem. For starters to use this attack you need high lightning affinity because you need to able to draw the energy from the earth's electromagnetic field. Once you manage to gather enough of it in the same place, clouds will form and create thunders. Once this is done I can manipulate the thunder and redirect it to the enemy. Due to using nature's energy instead of chakra the attack is extremely more powerful. The only drawback is that after using it you can only use it in the same place after a few minutes so that the energy from the field can stabilize, Naruto explained and everyone thought about the possibilities of that jutsu, it could easily topple a building or destroy a small army. You are skilled Naruto-san, my son was right about you, Shibi said and Naruto nodded. Can we leave now? Naruto asked and the seeing the Hokage nodding started walking out of the room until they heard one of the civilians whispering, Demon, but everyone heard it. For Kami's sake how the hell can I prove that I'm not the Kyubi? Naruto asked but everyone remained silent. Naruto decided to scare the crap out of them and said, Oh I know a way, and everyone perked up. Hey Kyubi wake up, Naruto said to Kurama but out loud so everyone could hear him. Everyone wondered what he was doing but the civilians were all sweating bullets. What do you want Kit? Kurama asked. How about we play with them for bit, just don't kill anyone, Naruto thought and Kurama smirked. Cage bunch and no jutsu, Naruto said a made a single clone. In the clone Kurama took control. 
His eyes became blood red with vertical slits, his whisker marks became more pronounced and his teeth became fangs. Well hello, the Kayubi said in a very dark voice scaring the crap of everyone in the civilian side. The Hokage already knew about him helping Naruto but the shinobi side was a bit weary. K.K. Kayubi? Sakuri asked. Lord Kayubi you pathetic mortal, the Kayubi said and Sakuri shrunk into her chair just staring at new transformed Naruto. You hungry? Naruto asked. I could eat, Kayubi replied. You can start with the pink banshee, Naruto said and Sakuri started shaking and fainted. Naruto seeing this sweat dropped. She fainted. Pick another, he said. Oh just forget it I'll eat them all, Kayubi said and using a discreet henge transformed into a medium-sized fox with nine tails and orange fur. He calmly walked towards the civilian side. The rest simply watched as one by one everyone in the civilian side fainted and remained there in the ground drooling. That was fun, the Kayubi said making Naruto and Hinata laugh while everyone just sweat dropped. We are leaving, see you tomorrow Gigi, Naruto said and walked out of the room. I like his style, Soom said. She was the head of the Inazuka clan and Kiba's mother. Sniff sniff what's that smell, she asked. I think I know, Sai, who the hell is carrying them home? The Hokage asked and in a flash the whole shinobi side vanished. Did Minato teach them the Hiroshin? The Hokage wondered in thought. Hash hash with our favorite couple hash hash. I told you, council meetings are fun, Naruto said chuckling. How are you feeling? You didn't see your father since he expelled you, Naruto said. I'm fine. He no longer means anything to me, he was never really a father. I think I never got to love him, she sadly said. Besides I have you now and that is all I need, she said kissing him in the cheek and wrapping herself around his arm, resting her head on his shoulder. Shall we continue what we were doing? Naruto asked remembering what they were doing before they left. Are you sure? Hinata whispered in a teasing voice. Naruto picked her up bridal style and shunshined home. Hash hash few days later hash hash. Team 8 was en route to the Hokage Tower to get a new mission. Their week off was over and now they were ready for real missions. No more of those dreary D-Ranks missions. During the remaining of the week Naruto learned a few lightning jutsus from Kakashi. Flashback. Naruto was walking towards Team 7 training grounds since he set a training session with Kakashi. Naruto waited a few minutes but then he remembered Kakashi's nasty habit of arriving late to any appointment. Naruto extended his senses and found Kakashi a few hundred meters away. He walked towards him and found him staring at the memorial stone. Naruto approached him but Kakashi didn't even notice him since he was deep in thought. So, Naruto said startling Kakashi, this is where you spend your time, Naruto continued in a low tone seeing the names of his parents in the stone. The memorial stone is a monument in Konoha where are written all the names of shinobi killed in action, a reminder of their sacrifice to protect their home. Neither of them said anything during a few minutes until Naruto spoke. You shouldn't dwell in the past. I know, but I can't forget my past actions. If I wasn't so arrogant back then he would still be alive, Kakashi said. I'm the last of my genin team, my best friend, Obito, died to save me, Rin sacrificed herself forcing me to kill her and Sensei died defeating the Kayubi. In his dying moments I promised Obito I would take care of Rin and I failed. Kakashi said almost breaking. You can't protect everyone even I know that. The only thing we can do is try our hardest. Like you, I would do anything to protect those who I care about but we can't be there for everyone, Naruto said. I just feel it's my fault, Kakashi said. You tried your best, no one could ask for more. It's time to let go, Naruto said placing his hand on his shoulder and slowly turning away to leave. It would be best to leave him be after their talk. Maybe he's right, I've dwelled in the past long enough, Kakashi thought looking one final time at the stone. I promise sensei I'll do my best to protect and guide your son, he thought smiling and turned away from it going towards Naruto. Wait Naruto, I believed we had a training session, Kakashi yelled making Naruto stop and turn towards him. Maybe my talk did some good, Naruto thought. Let's get this started, I'll be teaching you a few lightning jutsus, I've got plenty. Kakashi said lifting his headband and showing his Sharingan. Kakashi-sensei, I wonder why can't you disable your Sharingan, Naruto said. 
It's because I'm not an Uchiha and I can't cancel the chakra flowing into the eye, Kakashi replied. Maybe your eye is forcibly consuming chakra to remain activated. Naruto pondered for a few seconds and said, Maybe I can apply a seal in your eye that allows you to cut the chakra feed completely allowing you to see, normally, but still be able to reactivate the Sharingan. Really? Kakashi asked incredulously. If he could it would be good, he hasn't seen anything with his left eye in years outside of battles. Besides it would remove his blind spot when not using the Sharingan. I'm pretty good with seals I'll see what I can do. Let's get started. Naruto said and activated his Sharingan. First I'll show this. Raiden. Lightning chain. Kakashi said making a cage bushin. Kakashi slammed his right hand with the clone's left hand and when they were separating it created a thin line of Raiden chakra. Both Kakashi and his clone ran towards a tree slicing it cleanly. Wow that's an A-ranked jutsu, Naruto said giddy and Kakashi I smiled. His sensei was always up to learn new jutsu. The next is the final version of my Chidori, it's called Reikiri, lightning cutter. Instead of gathering lightning chakra in the palm of your hand, you envelop your hand in it. By doing so you increase the piercing power of your hand making it possible to pierce or slice anything. This is why it's called Reikiri, because I used it to cut through lightning. This technique requires more chakra control over your element and it's an S-rank technique, Kakashi explained. A. N. Reikiri it's like Sandame Rakage attack. End flashback. Hash hash mission assignment room hash hash. They arrived at the mission room and saw the traditional setup. The Hokage in the center of the table with Aruka to his left. Also in the room, near the edge of the table, was a girl. She was around Naruto's age. She wore a clip in her green hair in a color that matched her orange eyes. Her ninja outfit consisted of a short sleeveless white shirt with fishnet armor underneath, long white armlets, and fishnet shorts with a short white apron skirt over it. Her forehead protector was worn on her right arm. Naruto stared at her getting a weird vibe from her. The Hokage simply watched Naruto analyzing the young girl. Naruto. It's rude to stare. Kurenai scowled at the blonde. Shino remained stoic like always. Kit, I'm getting a reading on demon chakra from her, she's the Jinchuriki of the Nanabi, Kurama said and Naruto nodded. Nice to meet you seven, I'm Uzumaki Naruto, Naruto said and everyone wondered what he meant by calling her seven. Nice to meet you two nine, I'm Fu, she replied and both team eight and Aruka stared at the young girl when she called Naruto nine. Seeing that Naruto called her seven that could only mean she was also a Jinchuriki. Who would figure? So old man, I guess the mission involves Fu, Naruto asked and the Hokage chuckled. The mission I have for you is AB ranked because of its importance rather than danger, the Hokage started, the mission is to go to Hidden Village in the waterfall and negotiate trading agreements. Fu here, will accompany you to the village since it's hard to find, the Hokage concluded. The Hokage picked up the scroll and threw it at Kurenai and said, in there are the mission details. Naruto narrowed his eyes and asked, you set this up didn't you? I thought you would like to meet another Jinchuriki like you, the old man replied. I appreciate it, Naruto said and turned to Fu, so let's head out, I want to see your village, Naruto said. Before we part ways prepare for a one week mission. Gather at the west gate in one hour, Kurenai said and everyone left the room. Hash hash west gate one hour later hash hash. About one hour later everyone stood ready at the gate. After they signed their release forms they left the village traveling at shinobi pace towards Fu's village. Their travel was uneventful. They were attacked by a few low-level thugs, nothing they couldn't handle. So Fu, what's like your village? Naruto asked and Fu got a bit hesitant. The only thing I can say is that it's beautiful, Fu replied. The thing I love most is that it has the most beautiful sunsets, she explained and Naruto nodded. Another thing is that, my village's atmosphere tends to a bit moist from the waterfalls so it's perfect for finding new bugs, she concluded. Bugs? Shino asked rising an eyebrow. Oh that's right, you're from the Abarame clan that specializes in bugs right, she asked and Shino nodded. One side effect of me being the Jinchuriki of the Nanabi is that I can communicate with bugs and use them as a weapon, she explained. By the way how is the Nanabi? Naruto asked. If you want we can open a channel, Fu asked and Naruto nodded. Kurama opened the channel and they were dragged to what appeared to be a very dark room and in the center there was light.
few seconds later two figures appeared the room. The first one appeared to be a giant bug with horns and wings and on top of his head was Fu. The other was a big fox the nine tails and orange fur and on top of his head was Naruto. Shumei long time no see, Kurama said. It's been a while Kurama, Shumei replied. You know, I never thought of seeing you friendly with your container, Shumei said smirking. Laugh if you want, but it gets boring being sealed for a hundred years and I need something to entertain myself, besides the kid is not half bad, Kurama replied. You damn right I'm not bad, Naruto replied and the Kyubi used of his tails and knocked him down from his head and sent crashing to the ground. You are still a brat, Kurama said and Fu laughed. Naruto simply stuck his tong out to Kurama. Damn furball, he muttered. It's was good seeing good. Until next time, Kurama said and both of them exited their mindscapes. What happened Naruto? Both of you spaced out, Kurinai asked. We were just talking amongst ourselves with the Kayubi and Nanabi, they haven't seen each other in a few years, Naruto said and seeing the confused look of Kurinai Fu decided to elaborate. Jinchurikis can create a mental link with other Jinchurikis and talk through our mind. Fu explained and everyone nodded. Hash hash few hours later near the waterfall village hash hash. Team 8 and Fu were arriving at the village entrance when Naruto's instinct kicked in making him slightly jump out of surprise. What's wrong Naruto-kun? Hanada asked concerned. There wasn't much talk after what Naruto said. Naruto-kun is it? Is she your girlfriend? Fu teased wanting the juicy details. She is but I sense three chakra signatures coming towards at high speed, all Jonin level, Naruto said and everyone got in position. Fu what's your rank? Naruto asked. I'm Jonin level alone but if I use Nanabi's chakra I'm around Chunin level but I can't control it past two tails, she explained and Naruto nodded. They may not be enemies, however let's take precaution, Naruto said and Kurinai took charge. Since they are three Jonin we will need to split up. Naruto. Can you take one by yourself? Kurinai asked and Naruto nodded. I have a few tricks up my sleeve and if need be I can use the Kyubi's chakra, Naruto replied. Then Naruto you take one, Hanada and Shino the other and me and Fu will take the last, Kurinai ordered. Moments later three figures rushed out of the woods and jumped in front of teammate and Fu. The middle figure that seemed to be the leader wore a full body sleeveless suit that was mostly black with the sides being light purple. He had green hair and purple eyes. The other two wore the same outfit that consisted of full body black suit and on top a light purple mid-sleeved shirt with black belt in their waist. The faces were completely covered by a black mask revealing only the eyes. However what all three of them had in common was the Hittite that had the design of a musical note. Who are you? And what do you want? Kurinai asked keeping her guard up. My name is Rokushu Aoi and we are here to take her, he said pointing to Fu. As he said that everyone took a defensive formation around her. A. N. In this fanfic Aoi joined Odo instead of AIM. Rokushu Aoi you are a new cannon from the Leaf Village, Kurinai said. What do you want from me? And I don't recognize your Hittite symbol, Fu asked. We are from the Hidden Sound Village and we want you because you are the guardian of the Au no Mizu, Hero Water, Aoi said getting ready to take by force if need be. Hero Water? Naruto asked. Fu was a bit reluctant but decided to tell them since they would most likely help her. Hero water is a special water that only exists in our village and it's considered a forbidden drink. The water gives the user, when consumed, an enormous boost in chakra. The water multiplies by tenfold the user's chakra output, however it shortens their lifespan. Our ancestor used it to defend our village when needed. And the reason they want me is because I'm the guardian of the fountain. Fu explained and Team 8 eyes widened. Multiplying chakra output by tenfold is some power. But no power comes without cost. Well, you aren't getting Fu, Naruto said and took step forward. A brave little genin are you, smirked Aoi and withdrew his sword. Naruto's eye widened when he saw the sword. That's the Reijin no Ken, sword of the thunder god, Naruto said and Kurinai wondered how could the Nadaim's sword end up in Odo possession. Enough of this. If you don't surrender the girl we will take her by force, Aoi said. We are not letting her go so that means we fight. Kurinai sensei I will take Aoi because of the sword, my affinity should do well against him, Naruto said. He channeled chakra to his storage seal and in a poof of smoke stood in his right his chakudo. 
He channeled Raiden Chakra through it and it began to sparkle with a light blue aura around it. Hash hash Naruto versus Aoi hash hash. The group split apart until it remained only Aoi and Naruto. They both eyed each other before anyone made any move. You have a lot of nerve to face me in battle. With this sword I'm invincible, Aoi said smirking. Naruto shook his head and said, you are too overconfident. No shinobi is invincible, there will always be some weakness or mistake we will make. Aoi dashed forward intending to kill the annoying blonde. He brought his sword down with vertical slash trying to kill him in one swift motion. However Naruto blocked the Raijin with his own sword and both fought for dominance leading to a standstill. How can that be? How can you block this sword like that? Aoi asked getting annoyed. His sword was supposed to be the most powerful sword in existence. Like I said no one is undefeatable and that sword isn't all powerful. My sword is made of chakra metal and I have a very high affinity towards lightning making my sword almost on par with yours, Naruto explained smirking and pissing Aoi off. Senban shower, Aoi said and picked his umbrella and threw it at the air. The umbrella started spinning and launched massive amounts of Senbans towards Naruto. Naruto saw no way to dodge them all and went through a few hand seals. Doden, Doryuaheki, earth wall, Naruto said and an earth rose from the ground blocking the Senban. You are not bad for a genin, Aoi said. Genin only in name, Naruto said smiling and going through more hand seals. Kaden. Gukaku no jutsu, great fireball technique, Naruto said and sent a fireball towards Aoi. He simply brought his sword up and in a downward slash he cut through the fireball making it disappear. Aoi dashed towards Naruto but this time he channeled chakra to the sword and tried to shock Naruto. The sword sent a shockwave towards Naruto who stood his ground not moving an inch. Aoi laughed thinking he got Naruto but quickly quieted down when he saw Naruto getting shocked but standing there as if nothing was happening. H how can stand there? Aoi asked. I told I have a very high lightning affinity. By coating my external body with chakra, any lightning attack I received is ineffective. Basically anything shorter than s rank jutsu or other extremely well concentrated I'm immune to lightning attacks. That's the reason why I decided to fight you. Naruto explained and Aoi seethed his teeth. It doesn't matter I'm going to kill you anyway, Aoi said and once again tried to slash Naruto but he blocked again and jumped back. Let's see what you can do without your precious sword, Naruto said and activated his M's. It would be the first time using the long range of this. Kamui, Naruto said and focused on the sword. Moments later appeared what seemed to be a small rift, sucking the sword into it and closing. Aoi only watched as the sword got literally sucked out of his hands. Bastard, where did you send the sword to? Aoi asked getting seriously pissed by him. I took the sword and intend to take it back to Konoha to where it belongs, Naruto explained. It's time to end this, I need to go see how the rest of my team is doing. Naruto dashed forward and as he expected Aoi couldn't do much without his sword. Aoi followed the path that most Keke Genke users do. They focus merely on that and think that they are invincible. Naruto brought his sword to a vertical slash making Aoi block with a kanai and jump to the right. Cage shuriken no jutsu, shuriken shadow clone, Naruto said and sent five shurikens that multiplied to 100. Aoi brought his umbrella up and blocked them all. Aoi run towards him and before Naruto could realize he was stabbed in the back with a kanai. Aoi smirked until. Naruto. Dispelled in a blue light sending a rush of Raiden Chakra through Aoi shocking him. Aoi was left lightly twitching as he looked for Naruto. Aoi barely dodged Naruto's hand as it rose from the ground and tried to catch him. Sweden, Tepudama, water bullet, Aoi and ascent a few bullets towards Naruto who got hit with three of them, two in the chest and one in the leg leaving him in the ground clutching in pain. Aoi approached Naruto getting ready to finish him with a kanai. He brought it down and slashed his neck. Aoi smirked until Naruto puffed away in smoke and suddenly he froze unable to move. He only saw Naruto appearing behind his back and slamming his hand in his back. H how? Aoi barely managed to ask. You let your guard down. When you hit me with the water bullets you thought you had me, however when you sent them I switched with a clone and hid underground. When you approached to kill my clone I popped up and placed a paralysis seal on you. Naruto said and Aoi just cursed his luck by being defeated by a mere 14-year-old. 
Now that you can't move you will answer a few questions before I take back to the leaf. Naruto said and walked in towards Aoi before standing a few inches before him. What do you want the water for? Naruto asked in an emotionless tone gazing Aoi with his cold blue eyes that seemed to reflect Aoi's soul upon them. Like I would tell you anything, Aoi sneered and Naruto simply smirked. Let's have some fun then, Naruto said licking his lips in a typical Anko fashion giving him shivers. Damn kit, when did you learn that? Kurama asked surprised by the sudden change in attitude. When you have Cage Bushin coupled with the Sharingan that grants you photographic memory you are bound to learn quite a few things. And have you forgot I've read almost the entire library in Konoha? Naruto explained and cut the feed deciding to focus on Aoi first. Naruto activated his Sharingan but only gave him shivers. Aoi wouldn't budge. Let's try this. Megan. Jigoku Guka no Jutsu, Hellfire Technique, Naruto said trapping Aoi in an illusion that gave the idea of being burned alive. This went on for a few minutes and yet Aoi wouldn't crack. T that alone isn't going to cut it, Aoi said weakly. Even thought he didn't succumb to the illusion he was weakened by it. I wonder why you won't talk. I mean, you are going to Konoha anyway, so why not make it easier for you, Naruto said trying to rationalize with him. It isn't Konoha I'm afraid, Aoi replied and Naruto rose an eyebrow. Hey Kurama I can't use Sukuyomi yet, can you lend me a hand? Naruto asked. Of course, I'm always up for some fun, Kurama said smirking. Naruto deactivated his Sharingan and channeled Kayubi's chakra to his eyes turning them into blood red with black vertical slits. Naruto gazed into Aoi and suddenly he was dragged into Naruto's mind. Aoi wondered where he was until he was faced with steel cage doors that seemed to be meant to keep something locked up. However that thought sent shivers as the doors were fully unlocked. Aoi gazed inside only to see two blood red eyes glowing in the dark. The eyes were increasing in size as a figure could be seen approaching. A few seconds later the figure revealed itself to Aoi making him freeze in place. In front of him was an orange fox with nine tails swirling. In front of him was the Kayubi no Yoko, the most powerful biju of all. Oh a snack. You are too good to me kit. Kurama said walking slowly towards Aoi, who remained in place but apparently lost control of his bladder. I told you I wasn't a bad guy. Naruto replied simply watching Aoi wet himself, literally. Kurama approached Aoi licking his teeth getting ready to devour him. Oh okay I'll tea tell why why you ev everything I ik no. Aoi stuttered not really managing to control his body at the moment. That wasn't so hard now was it? Naruto asked rhetorically. Why to want the water? Naruto asked. It was a mission. Our village leader makes acquiring the water a priority mission. But I don't know what he wants it for. Aoi quickly answered. I see, and who is your village leader? Naruto asked. Orochimaru, the snake Sanin, Aoi replied and Naruto rose an eyebrow. Orochimaru, founded his own village. Interesting, I'll tell the old man when I get back, Naruto thought. Anything else I should now? Naruto asked and Aoi quickly shook his head saying no. Naruto released the illusion and went behind him giving a chop to the neck knocking him out. Naruto released the paralysis and applied instead a chakra seal. He tied him up with ninja wire and sealed him in a stasis scroll to keep him alive. Thanks Kurama, Naruto said. Hash hash with the others hash hash. Naruto made their way to the others battle just in time to see them end. Naruto, are you good? Kurinai asked. Yes, I have his sword and he's sealed in a stasis scroll. I will take him back to questioning but I did manage to find out that his village is run by Orochimaru, Naruto explained. Orochimaru? Kurinai asked. Yes, we will inform Gigi when we arrive at the village, Naruto said. How is everyone? He asked. We are good, Shino and Fu are a little out of breath, a few bruises and scratches but nothing to major, Hanada replied. Let's go to village to rest and report the details, Kurinai said. Hash hash village gates hash hash. Teammate lead by Fu was approaching the gates of the waterfall village. They arrived near the gate and were stopped by two guards. The guards turned to the approaching people and spotted a Konoha team with Fu. So, you are back already? One of the guards asked to Fu clearly despising her. She frowned but nodded. Teammate caught this and weren't happy, primarily Naruto. My name is Yuhi Kuranai. I'm here with my team, Abarame Shino, 
Hayuga Hinata and Uzumaki Naruto for negotiations, Kurinai said handing them the scroll with the Hokage's stamp. Welcome to the Waterfall Village, the same guard said and allowed them passage. They were walking towards the village's center where the village leader lived. Team 8 seemed to notice that Fu was getting the same hateful glares and the casual insults as Naruto did in Konoha. It seems that you two aren't liked here, Naruto stated sadly. It's the fate of all Jinchuriki, we are all treated badly but even then there are some people that see us for us and not the beast, Fu explained. I don't understand why people can't see the difference between a scroll and a kanai. You are humans just like the rest of us, Hinata said. Naruto chuckled, but this laugh was filled with irony and got confused looks from everyone. Jinchuriki, the power of human sacrifice, Naruto started getting the attention of everyone. I've thought a lot about this and the more I think the more I realize that, we aren't humans, Naruto said getting gasped from everyone. Even the Kyubi and the Nanabi were listening. Naruto got into thinking pose before continuing, the moment the biju are sealed into a human being, either it is a newborn or adult, we are bound with him until the end of our lives, since if you remove the biju from the host he dies, Naruto said and got gasps from everyone. It is a strange thing the biju and their host. We do not need them and yet we cannot live without them, the moment they are trapped in us they become part of us. Naruto said and everyone stopped walking and just stood there listening to the blonde. If we combine forces we are unstoppable and yet a piece of paper with ink can cripple us, making us strong yet fragile. Once we are bonded, each of the host gains special abilities that neither someone with Keke Jenke can achieve. Our chakra starts changing to adapt the Biju demon chakra making it stronger than other humans. So you see, I'm not the beast but I'm not the same human I was born. Naruto concluded and no one said anything. Everyone just started walking and thinking about what the blonde had said. Is it true? Fu thought. The kid is right you know. The moment we bond you become something else, because you aren't me but you become different from the others. But even I don't know what, Chome said. Kid and I thought you were a brat. Kurama said chuckling, to think you could come up with something like this, Kurama said but Naruto only nodded and didn't say anything. Everyone just continued their path thinking about what the blonde said. Hash hash waterfall tower hash hash. They arrived at the center of the village and stopped in front of what was supposed to be the waterfall tower. They could see stairs going around the tree and the tree itself was the building. They made their way up the tower and stopped facing two red doors that according to Fu lead to Shibuki's office, the village leader. They knocked and heard someone say, enter. Team 8 and Fu quickly complied and opened the doors and found themselves in a small, modest-looking office. There was a self with books, a small couch, a few pictures and in the back was a desk with Shibuki behind working. Shibuki has black eyes and has long, dark brown hair. He also wears a forehead protector symbolizing his shinobi status. He had gray pants, a green shirt, and ninja sandals. Oh Fu Chan welcome back, Shibuki said smiling. Apparently he was one of the people Fu said that treated her well. Hi, mission accomplished Shibuki-sama, Fu replied and stepped out of the way so teammate could present themselves. Thank you for having us Shibuki-sama, Kurinai started bowing. My name is Yuhi Kurinai and this is my team Abarame Shino, Hayuga Hinata and Uzumaki Naruto, she concluded and everyone bowed in respect. Not at all, I trust the travel went well. Shibuki asked and caught the slightly hesitation in Konoha's team. What happened? He asked. We were attacked by Konoha Nuken and Rokushu Aoi with two other Jonans. Apparently they were from a new village hidden village that was founded recently in the rice country. They were after me and their objective was stealing the hero water. Fortunately we managed to win. Aoi was captured, both Jonan were killed, Fu explained and Shibuki brought his hand to his chin and stood there processing the information. Did you find out why they wanted it? Shibuki asked. I interrogated their leader Aoi and apparently their village is called the Hidden Sound Village and their leader is Konoha's new canon Orochimaru the Snake Sanin, Naruto stepped forward and explained. This is troubling news. Shibuki started. The water is very dangerous, even more in the hands of Orochimaru, I'll increase security in the borders and in the fountain to make sure, he finished. We will take Aoi for interrogation back in Konoha and we will send you the information we find, Kurinai said. Thank you, I appreciate it, Shibuki replied. Now, Kurinai-san shall we discuss the trading agreements, 
he asked and Kur and I nodded. Fu, accompany them to the hotel until we finish our talks, Shibuki said. Everyone bowed and left the room. Hash hash around the village hash hash. You were right, this village is amazing, Naruto said as they were walking towards the hotel. The village had a very naturalistic tone to it. There were trees, grass and other plants everywhere, even the terrain was earth itself. Yes, and it seems to have many different bug species around, Shino said observing the village trying to find out the different bugs around. Is that all you think about? Bugs? Naruto asked getting a bit creeped out. You do realize that bugs are my weapons, Shino said in his usual stoic voice. You know Naruto. Fu began. Since you never used bugs, you don't realize how helpful they are. They are excellent for spying, they can steal chakra from the enemies, poison them or remove poison in you and many other things, Fu explained. I guess is true, however for information gathering I have my cage bushin and for poison the Kyubi takes care of that, Naruto said and noticed that Shino was talking to Fu about, bugs. I guess those two won't shut up about bugs too soon. It's getting late and it's nice weather. How about we go see this amazing sunset? Naruto asked. Who would have thought you were so romantic? Hinata asked rhetorically kissing him and dragging him along. Watch. Versus equals IHG 8 BPK QBSG, start. And that they did. They managed to find a tall tree. They climbed it and sat on the very stop overlooking the darkening sky and light of the village. She's right, it's beautiful, Hinata said as she looked at the sky. The sun was going down, just dimly sending light to the earth. The few clouds that existed seemed that they were on fire. Hanada was smuggled into Naruto's chest leaning her head on his shoulder. His arms were wrapped around her in a protective manner. You know, these are the moments our treasure most, Naruto said embracing Hanada tighter into him as if he let Goshi would slip away. When you are with me, he said caressing her silky hair. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I've never been happier than I am right now, with you, she said. Having you here with me, makes me forget everything else, I don't even care that my father left me. They couldn't be called family. If it meant being with you I would have left well before, she said turning around facing him and staring at his deep blue eyes and his hair that seemed to dimly glow. I don't care about the rest of the world. You were the first person that ever showed me real love, Naruto said, and I will treasure you and protect you forever he said making her smile. Her dark blue air flowed in the wind and seemed to shine as the moon made its way up to the sky. I love you Naruto, she said. I love you too, Hanada, Naruto replied and leaned forward wrapping his arms around her and pulling her closer. Their lips met with a deep passionate kiss. It wasn't long, but it didn't matter. It was sufficient for either of them to understand the deep love they had for each other. They slowly separated and continued to watch the nightly sky until they both fell asleep in each other's arms. Music. E-N-D. Hash hash next day hash hash. The next day had come and apparently negotiations had gone well and Team 8 was getting prepared to leave. They regrouped with Fu at the gate to say their goodbyes. Even thought their stay was rather short, a simple night it was sufficient for them to slightly bond. After all Naruto being a Jinchuriki quickly became on friendly terms with Fu as Shino. Don't become strangers, try to visit, Fu said. Of course, we will do our best, Hanada said. Hey Fu I have a gift for you, Naruto started and everyone rose an eyebrow. Here, Naruto said and handed her a tri-pronged kunai, this is a very special kunai. If you need help or just want to talk, throw it at the ground and I'll be there in a flash, Naruto explained smiling. Fu gladly accepted the gift, as there weren't many people that were good to her. Thank you, Fu said and watched them leave and fade away with the distance. Hash hash with team 8 hash hash. A few hours had gone by and Kuranai couldn't contain their curiosity anymore. Naruto. I have a question, Kuranai said. Shoot. Naruto answered. He already suspected where this was going. That kunai you gave Fu. That wasn't a normal kunai. Kuranai said practically asking for an explanation. That kanai contains the Shiki formula for the Hiroshin no Jutsu, Naruto explained, not revealing too much information just to see the reaction of his sensei. The Hiroshin no Jutsu, but that was the YY Yan Yandaimi's technique, Kuranai stuttered, stopping and staring at Naruto. Looks like you figure it out, Naruto said. I can use it because it's my legacy, 
Minato Namikaze was my father. Naruto explained and even Shino was surprised finally forgetting his stoic face with one of shock. H. How is that possible? Kurinai asked. What do you mean? Naruto started. Didn't your mother give you the talk? Naruto asked making Hinata and Kurinai blush. Idiot. Kurinai replied smacking his head. The old man named me Uzumaki after my mother because my father had many enemies, primarily Iwa. I think I'm strong enough to protect myself and everyone I care about so maybe I'll ask the old man to announce it when I become Chunin, Naruto explained. To think I never realized it, blonde hair and blue eyes. Only the Yandaimi had that particular combination, she replied. Don't worry, even Kakashi sensei didn't realize and he was his student, Naruto said. You told Kakashi? Kurinai wondered. Yes, I've been training with him sometimes in the past weeks. Naruto answered. I should have known when you used the Rasengan on Zabuza, she said to herself. The Hiroshin no Jutsu was his most powerful technique, she said. My father truly was a genius in every sense of the word, Naruto said remembering his brief talk when he met his father. But I can't use it on his level yet. I can't seem to handle extreme speeds yet. Every time I try multiple jumps I end up crashing into something. Naruto said and Hinata started laughing as she remembered Naruto crashing into the walls and trees when he tried it. Still, you can use it, Kurinai said. She was starting to piece everything together and was starting to realize that Naruto and Hinata were prodigies. The skill they possessed at such young age, to master high-level jutsu and even create their own. My team is going to rock the Chunin exams, she thought, and I'm betting on them, she thought laughing to herself. Hash hash Hokage's office hash hash. And that's what happened, Kurinai said. Geez what's up with the missions, first a C rank goes A rank and now a simple B rank almost goes S rank, the Hokage said smoking on his pipe. Old man here, Naruto said and threw him two scrolls. One of the scrolls has Aoi in stasis for more deep interrogation and the other has the sword he stole, the Reijin no Ken, Naruto said and here as an eyes widened. The Reijin no Ken was stole many years ago by Aoi. He didn't think he would still have it. Hiruzen unsealed the sword scroll. He channeled chakra through it and the sword flared to life with yellow sparks. The Hokage stopped the chakra and thought for a moment before throwing it to Naruto again. Naruto caught the sword but looked at the Hokage in confusion. The old man sighed and placed a sound barrier. This would be a long talk. What I'm about to tell you is a secret that only I know the old man said. I trust you will keep quiet, the Hokage asked, primarily Kurinai and Shino who nodded. The Hokage pondered where to start. The sword belongs to you Naruto, the Hokage said. What do you mean, it belongs to me, Naruto asked still in confusion. You have Uchiha blood, however you are the heir to the Senju clan, the Hokage said and everyone froze. You could hear a pin drop in the floor. Everyone in Team 8 was looking at Naruto who was still processing what the old man had told him. W what? Naruto asked in a low voice. You know your mother was Uzumaki Kashina and she came from the Whirlpool country right? The Hokage asked and Naruto nodded. I'll start in the beginning. Hashirama Senju and his wife, Uzumaki Mito, had two childs, one boy and one girl. The girl was named Senju Tsunade the well-known slug Sanin. Tsunade later in life had a child named Senju Kashina. However due to the war the Senju clan was decimated leaving only Tsunade and Kashina to reform the clan. Due to them being women and not wanting to be a breeding stock they faked Kashina's death resulting in the birth of Uzumaki Kashina, the Hokage said. You know the rest, the Hokage concluded. Kashina married Minato and I was born, Naruto said and the Hokage nodded. Naruto didn't say anything during a few minutes as he thought about everything he learned. Wait, but then what about everything I found about the Uzumaki clan in my father's compound? Naruto asked. I chose the Uzumaki name because they were cousins of the Senju clan. During the wars the Uzumaki clan was destroyed but your mother and father went to the Whirlpool village and salvaged what they could. That is one of the reasons your father was so good at Fuinjutsu. The Hokage said and Naruto nodded until he remembered Tsunade. Tsunade is still alive, d did she leave me, Naruto asked not really wanting to know the answer. Hanada went to him and grabbed his hand. No, the Hokage started, Tsunade lost everything she had. Her lover and brother died in the war. 
Then the Kayubi attacked and her daughter also died. She wasn't in the village at the time but she heard the news and ran. I tried to find her but I couldn't. She probably doesn't even know Kashina had a child, the Hokage explained. Naruto frowned for a few minutes thinking about it. Then I'll find her and bring her back to the village, Naruto said with his traditional smile. You took the news better than I expected, the Hokage said. Well, if Tsunade had raised me, I would probably never have found Hinata. Even though I had a hard life I wouldn't trade her for anything, Naruto said making the Hokage smile seeing Naruto has good values. That means Uzumaki isn't even my real name. I kinda grew attached to it, Naruto said. Well, when you choose to reveal your heritage you'll be able to pick the name you want for your clan, Senju, Namikaze, or even Uzumaki. However Uchiha you can't since Sasuke is the heir, the Hokage explained. Like I would want to live with that idiot, Naruto said laughing and the Hokage chuckled. So the sword is mine. Naruto started, but what about Tsunade Ba-chan, isn't she the heir? Naruto asked. The Hokage smiled seeing Naruto call her Ba-chan. She hasn't been on active duty in more than 10 years. Since you already completed missions you are currently the heir. The Hokage explained and Naruto nodded. Naruto channeled chakra to the sword but the strangest thing happened. Instead of the usual yellow sparks, the sword flared but with a bright blue color. The sword was sparkling with a lot more power than the two times he saw it. A. N. Check profile for Raijin in blue. What the hell? Naruto said out loud. Why is it blue? Naruto asked. The Hokage went into professor mode and quickly came up with a theory. Didn't you say that you had high affinity towards lightning? The Hokage asked and Naruto nodded. Because of your high affinity the sword probably reacted stronger to your chakra, probably making it more powerful, the Hokage explained. Guess I'm trading up my metal sword, Naruto said chuckling and deactivated it. Suddenly Naruto stiffened and he remembered something. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow silently asking what happened. I'm just thinking of what the council will say when they find out I belong to the two most powerful clans in the world. Naruto said smirking, it's going to be so much fun he said and everyone's sweat dropped. The Hokage simply laughed. The old man hated council meetings but apparently young Naruto seemed to enjoy them. Chapter 14 Chunin Exams Begin It was another simple day in Konoha. The sun was rising to new warm day in the leaf village. The villagers were starting their own business and the other shinobi were preparing for their daily lives. Currently we find Naruto and Hinata in training ground 8 sparring with Haku and Zabuza. Since Naruto got his sword, the Reijin no Ken, Thunder God Sword, he asked Zabuza for tips so he could rely on Kenjutsu in a real battle. Hanada was fighting Haku in an all-out contest. Haku could only keep up using her ice mirrors which would lead to quick defeat due to massive chakra usage. Hash hash Zabuza versus Naruto hash hash Kenjutsu only, Zabuza said as he was facing Naruto. They were a few meters apart, each one grasping each sword. Kubikiribocho vs. Thunder God. Agreed, Naruto said a flared his sword to life, blue light emanating from the sword. It was sparkling in all its power. Still not powerful as my preferred weapon, maybe one day I'll use it, but it sticks out too much, Naruto thought. Let's see what you can do, Zabuza said as dashed forward towards to Naruto. He went for a horizontal slash but Naruto blocked. He soon found out it was a bad idea because Zabuza had more brute force than him. Naruto was forced to jump back. Rule number one. Don't block strikes from enemies stronger than you, Zabuza said. Naruto run towards Zabuza, he jumped in the air and tried a vertical slash. Zabuza sidestepped and tried to kick him in the chest. Naruto blocked and caught his leg through him at the air. Zabuza quickly regained balance and landed gracefully on the ground. Not bad brat but if want to beat me in Kenjutsu you need more strength, Zabuza said. I could always beat you in speed, Naruto said smirking and deactivated in gravity seals. Zabuza saw his body lightly glowing and braced himself. Naruto disappeared in a show of speed. Zabuza out of instinct brought his sword up just in time to deflect an attack that would behead him. Naruto disappeared again and this time Zabuza jumped out of the way just as Naruto came from the sky with a vertical slash. I give it to you, you are fast but that alone isn't enough. I have years of experience, Zabuza said and readied his sword once again. 
He dashed forward with impressive speed and exchanged a few blows with Naruto. However Zabuza just couldn't keep up in speed and waving around that big sword certainly didn't help. You can't keep up in speed with me, Naruto said and continued to parry his strikes, quickly shifting his position putting Zabuza on his toes. Zabuza had enough of this, he slowly relaxed focusing his senses. He realized an attack was coming from the right, he brought his sword up but instead of simply blocking he pushed strength into his sword making Naruto lose his balance. Zabuza took opportunity of this a quickly repositioned his sword at his neck. I win, speed alone isn't enough, Zabuza said removing the blade from his neck. One of these days I'll defeat you in Kenjutsu, Naruto said deactivating his sword. Hash hash Hanada versus Haku hash hash, ready Haku san, Hanada asked shifting into position and activating her by Akugan. Always, Haku replied picking up Sanban and placing three in each hand. Hanada quickly run towards Haku. She shifted to the left to quickly avoid the Sanban throne, with her Bayakugan she could easily track the incoming Sanban. Hanada arrived near Haku and went for a Jukan strike to the chest. Haku quickly ducked and went for low kick. Hanada jumped up and tried a drop kick making Haku roll to the left. They both dashed towards each other and exchanged blows, Haku quickly realized that she was no match to Hanada in Taijutsu. Hanada was simply avoiding all of her attacks as if she was dancing. Haku tried once again a punch straight to the face, however Hanada sidestepped and quickly with an infused strike managed to close a few tenkatsus in her wrist. Haku gave up on taijutsu and jumped back nursing her left hand. Haku started going through one-handed seals and said, Sensatsu susho, thousand flying water needles of death, and sent countless senban towards Hanada. Hanada said, Kaden and started spinning in a blue dome of chakra completely blocking of the Sanbans. Haku took that time and forced chakra towards her tenkatsus to painfully open them. Hanada was primarily a water user since it was her first affinity she trained. Since there wasn't a nearby lake she decided to change the terrain to her advantage. She quickly went through a few hand seals and shouted, Sweden, Sushoha, exploding water wave, and pumped her chest full of water expelling it through her mouth. In a few seconds the training ground was filled with water. That might have been a bad move Hanada-san, with this much water it's much easier for me to use my ice release, Haku said but Hanada continued to stare at her getting ready for her next move. Ice release, flying ice shards, Haku said and like Hanada she started spinning, however she wasn't blocking anything. Haku was spinning and water was rising up around her, suddenly the water around her started freezing and from it came thousands upon thousands of ice shards. I can't hold up my Kaden long enough to block all of those, Hanada thought and started going through hand seals. She stopped and said, Sweden, Sujinheki, water wall. Water rose from the ground and wrapped around her blocking all the ice shards. However Haku continued to send and Hanada had to do something. I got it, Hanada thought. I hope this works, I haven't completely mastered it. Hanada kept inside the water dome was the shards continued coming. She concentrated and suddenly released a vast amount of lightning chakra that radiated from her body and spread through the water effectively shocking Haku. T that was surprising, I didn't know you could use lightning element, Haku said lightly twitching. Just discovered it a few weeks ago, Hanada said as she released her protective dome and said, Sweden, Swiryudan no Jutsu, water dragon, and a big dragon rose from the ground and rushed Haku. Haku barely managed to create an ice dome around her to shield her from the attack. Haku released her jutsu and looked around trying to find Hanada. Suddenly behind Haku, Hanada rose from the water, Kanai at hand trying to kill her. Haku sensed her and was faster than her and, creating an ice blade around her arm, quickly slashed Hanada making her dispel in a splash of water. Mizu Bushin, Haku said surprised and suddenly felt cold steel at her throat. She realized that Mizu Bushin was only a distraction. Looks like I win, Hanada said with a small smile. I look forward to next time, Haku said, sitting on the ground slightly out of breath. You okay? Hanada asked concerned with her. Yes, I'm low on chakra what about you? Haku asked surprised that Hanada wasn't even winded and she used a couple of high chakra demanding jutsu and that defensive dome is killer on anyone's reserves. When you train for years with a stamina freak and chakra monster you tend to increase your on reserves if you want to keep up, Hanada said chuckling and Haku simply looked smiling. 
Haku was happy since she came to the leaf. She had a simple and peaceful life. No more crappy beds and constantly having to watch out for hunters. Hash hash training ground aid hash hash. Kurinai and Shino were approaching their team's training ground when they saw all the commotion. Kurinai and Shino had their jaw on the ground when they saw Naruto hold in own against Zabuza won the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist and even Hinata using high-ranking water jutsu. I might have to increase my training if I want to have something to teach them, Kurinai said and Shino only nodded. They really grew into fine young shinobi. Naruto. Hinata. Kurinai said getting their attention. Zabuza sensei see you tomorrow and thank you, Naruto said and Zabuza simply nodded. Hey Haku want to stick around? Hinata asked. Sorry my shift in the hospital starts in a few minutes and later I have my own team meeting, Haku said and Hinata nodded and both Zabuza and Haku left the training ground. So Kurinai sensei what are we doing today? Naruto asked. Kurinai placed her hand in her pockets and took three pieces of paper and gave one to each. These are the inscription papers for the Chunin exams. I nominated you three so if want to participate be at the academy in a week. Kurinai explained. Flashback. The Hokage was in his office and in front of him were all of Konoha's Jonin senseis and a few other shinobi. I called you all here for a reason, the Hokage said. Since the majority were Jonin senseis many of them already suspected the meaning of this. Is it time already? Kakashi asked and the Hokage nodded. Yes. Tomorrow I will formally announce that this year we are hosting the Chunin exams, the Hokage explained. Now, either of you want to nominate teams for the exams? The Hokage asked and Kakashi, Kurinai, Asuma and Guy stepped forward. I, Hitaki Kakashi, Jonin Sensei of Team 7 nominate Uchiha Sasuke, Inazuka Kiba and Haruno Sakura for the exams, Kakashi said. I, Yuhi Kurinai, Jonin Sensei of Team 8 nominate Uzumaki Naruto. Hayuga Hinata and Abarame Shino for the exams, Kurinai said. I, made a guy, Jonin Sensei of Team 9 nominate Hayuga Neji, Rock Lee and Higarashi Tenten for the exams, Guy said in a serious tone that surprised everyone that expected him to start shouting. I, Serutobi Asuma, Jonin Sensei of Team 10 nominate Nara Shikamaru, Yamanaka Ino and Akamichi Choji for the exams, Asuma finished and everyone started whispering about all the rookies being nominated. Wait a minute, I understand Naruto and Hinata but the rest aren't ready for the exams, Uruka shouted. Wait, you say that they are unprepared except the dead last and the shy princess, Asuma said laughing. Hey Asuma how about a small bet, Kurinai asked inwardly smirking. What kind of bet, Asuma replied. The team that has more members promoted wins, Kurinai said. What about the odds, Asuma said. How about this, if I win you can't smoke for a month. Kurinai said and Asuma chuckled. Fine but if I win I get to take you out on a date, Asuma said and Kurinai slightly blushed. End flashback. Now how about a few spars with me to see what you learned. I already saw you against Zabuza and Haku but more training is never bad, Kurinai said and only after she said that she began wondering if it was a good idea. Okay Kurinai sensei, you are against me, Naruto said and Kurinai gulped. Naruto was a chakra monster and his taijutsu was pretty good. She would have to rely on her genjutsu and hope it was enough. How wrong she was. Can I go all out? Naruto asked and Kurinai was wondering if she was leaving this alive. Sure, as long as I live, she said and Naruto chuckled. Get ready Kurinai sensei, Naruto said and dashed forward at blinding speed and crashed into Kurinai who didn't expect him to be that fast. They tumbled across the ground until they stopped. Damn sorry Kurinai sensei I forgot I disabled my gravity seals, Naruto said chuckling and helped Kurinai up who was still dazed from the impact. You should consider that a taijutsu move, Kurinai said nursing her head. She felt she was hit with concrete. Here I go, Naruto said. Kaden, Gukaku no jutsu, great fireball technique, and sent a fireball towards Kurinai. She jumped out of the way and flashed through hand seals and started vanishing in the air. Naruto saw this and activated his Sharingan. Behind Naruto a tree sprouted and wrapped around him. Kurinai quickly appeared in the tree with a kunai getting ready to stab Naruto. However Naruto performed the genjutsu counter using his Sharingan and the illusion was switched making Naruto in the tree getting ready to kill Kurinai. Kurinai saw this a bit her lip to quickly break the illusion. 
The illusion broke and she ducked just in time to avoid a horizontal slash with the Thunder God Sword. Naruto saw her ducking, he quickly adjusted and planted a powerful quick in her chest. She was able to block it but the force was enough to send her tumbling through the ground. Kurinai recovered and threw a couple of shurikens towards Naruto. Naruto had his Sharingan activated and saw that a few of them had no chakra and realized it was an illusion and quickly dispelled it. Kurinai Sensei Genjutsu it's useless against me, even the most powerful one is meaningless, Naruto said. Naruto, just because you have the Sharingan it doesn't mean you are immune to them, Kurinai scowled. It's not because of the Sharingan, since I am in good terms with the Kayubi, he can disrupt my chakra from the inside dispelling any illusion. Naruto explained and Kurinai cursed her luck, there was no way she would win now, she would have to catch him by surprise. They both eyed each other waiting for the other to make their first move. Neither of them wanted to make the first wrong move. Suddenly Naruto picked a few shurikens and threw them at her saying, Cage shuriken no jutsu, and five shurikens multiplied to hundred. Naruto went through more hand seals and said, Fudan, Datapa, great breakthrough. The shurikens gained incredible speed and rushed towards Kurinai. She didn't have many options to dodge them so she used Kawerimi with a nearby log. She recovered and searched her surroundings just in time to jump out of the way of a hand that sprouted out of the ground and tried to snatch her. As she jumped back a presence appeared behind her and said, Katsu. The Naruto clone exploded and sent Kurinai crashing into a tree leaving her drifting in and out of consciousness. Naruto appeared behind her with a kunai to her neck. Congrats Naruto, you are more than ready for the Chunin exams, Kurinai said weakly. She was almost depleted of chakra and her clothes were singed from the explosion. You aren't in good shape sensei, Naruto said and bit his thumb and slammed his hand in the ground saying, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning technique, and out came Kagura. Kagura, can you heal Kurinai sensei, I was a bit rough in the spar, Naruto said smiling sleeplessly rubbing the back of his head. A bit rough. You literally blew her up, Kurama said chuckling. It was only an explosive clone and wasn't fully charged, Naruto replied. Your luck otherwise you might have killed her, she never stood a chance against someone like you. You have better taijutsu, your ninjutsu is ridiculous and genjutsu even thought you can't perform that many you were immune to them. Kurama explained and Naruto simply nodded. Naruto and Kurinai walked back to the middle of the training ground to see Hinata crouching in the ground healing a passed out Shino. What happened? Kurinai said still nursing her rips that were a bit sore. I used a water jutsu and Shino didn't have time to dodge and crashed into him, knocking him out cold, Hinata explained, Naruto and Kurinai sweat dropped at the way she casually said it. Okay you can leave, I'll take Shino home, Kurinai said and everyone left the training grounds. Hash hash middle of Konoha hash hash. Naruto and Hinata were walking peacefully through Konoha. They noticed that the glares they received were somewhat different. The glares showed more fear than anything. Hey, Haim is it me or are the glares more discreet? Naruto asked. Yes, they don't seem to openly glare at you now, they seem, scared. I wonder why though, Hinata replied. Maybe it was because of my stunt during the council meeting, Naruto said chuckling and Hinata giggled. What do you want to do? Naruto asked. I'm kind of hungry since I had two matches, how about we go for some cinnamon rolls, Hinata said with watery mouth. You really have a nasty sweet tooth, Naruto said chuckling. Let's go. They were walking peacefully until they noticed a box following them. Does he really think we didn't notice him? Naruto whispered Hinata. Apparently, she replied. You can come out Konohamaru, Naruto said. Suddenly the box exploded massive cloud of multicolored smoke. From the smoke appeared three kids around the age of eight. The kid in the middle was Konohamaru. He was the grandson of Hiruzen Serutobi the Sandame Hokage. They became rather good friends a few months ago when they met. Flashback. It was the day after Genin graduation and both Naruto and Hinata were standing in front of the Hokage working on their ninja license. Naruto's photograph was rather expressive and the Hokage wanted him to retake the photo. Suddenly the room's door busted open. Naruto didn't even think as he channeled chakra to his storage seals in his wrist's band and pulled a few shurikens. Hey gee, the kid didn't even manage to say two words and he was already frozen. The kid was pinned in the wall with ten shurikens through his clothing. Na Naruto what did you do? The Hokage asked with his eyes widened. 
Naruto was really fast to react. Naruto took a moment to realize that the person who busted through the door was about eight years old and in his hand were wooden shurikens. What did you expect old man? This is what happens when you surprise a shinobi, Naruto said trying to apologize even though he didn't do nothing wrong. The Hokage just shook his head at the actions of his grandson. Naruto, take him from the wall, the Hokage said. Naruto went towards the kid and removed the shuriken. My bad kid, thought you shouldn't surprise a shinobi, Naruto said and the kid continued looking at him. What's your name boss, can you teach me that, the kid asked. I'm Naruto kid but you should be starting the academy this year so they will teach that there, Naruto explained. I'm not a kid I'm Serutobi Konohamaru future Hokage of Konoha, the kid now identified as Konohamaru said. Naruto smirked at the kid. He reminded a little of him. Suddenly through the busted door came running a shinobi. Honorable grandson there you are, Ebisu started until he looked at the room and noticed Naruto. Oh, it's the closet pervert how are you doing? Naruto asked. I'm not a pervert you brat, Ebisu said glaring daggers at him. Whatever you say, Naruto said and performed one of his most powerful techniques, an SSS rank forbidden jutsu, the technique that shall not be named, the one and only, Orok no jutsu. In a poof of smoke appeared a beautiful blonde girl, completely naked except with smoke covering all the important parts. Both the Hokage and Ebisu flew into the air and crashed into the ground passed out by blood loss. Wow, boss teach me that jutsu. You managed to defeat the old Hokage and Ebisu sensei at the same time, Konohamaru said. Naruto was about to reply when. Naruto-kun, you aren't teaching him that are you? Hanada asked in a very sweet voice that made them both back up a few steps. Of course not, Naruto said nervously scratching the back of his head. Kung one heim, Konohamaru. Let's leave them on the ground, Naruto said trying to defuse the situation and all three of them left the room. End flashback. What do you want Konohamaru? Naruto asked. Do you want to play ninja? Konohamaru asked. Suddenly the three of them heard laughter. They turned around to see the pink banshee, Sakura. What kind of ninja plays ninja? Sakura smugly asked. It's pretty fun actually. Besides you get to train stealth traps, strategy and tracking, Hanada explained and Sakura just got deadpanned. Go away flat-chested, Konohamaru said and an immense silence followed. Konohamaru, you should run now, Naruto said as he saw a murderous purple aura around Sakura that would put Orochimaru to shame. Konohamaru gulped and started running with Sakura in hot pursuit. Naruto and Hanada just laughed as they watched Sakura chase Konohamaru. Obviously Sakura being a fan girl had a diet going on to keep her figure so she barely could keep up with an 8-year-old. Konohamaru was still running, he made a sharp turn and crashed into another shinobi that was around the corner. Damn it brat that hurt, the shinobi said and picked up Konohamaru by the collar getting ready to apply some punishment. Naruto and Hinata heard the crash and went to investigate. They arrived and saw two strange shinobis with sand hitayat. The one holding Konohamaru wore a black, baggy, full-body suit with a red and yellow circle on the front. He also wears a black hood which covered his head completely, and had cat-like ears and his forehead protector on his forehead. He also a bundle in his back with white bandages surrounding it completely. The other shinobi's outfit consists of a single light purple-colored, off-the-shoulders garment that extended to halfway down her thighs, with a scarlet sash tied around her waist. In addition to incorporating fishnet worn over her shoulders and legs, specifically on her right calf and her left thigh, she also wore her black forehead protector around her neck. Leave the kid alone Konkuro, the kunoichi in the back said. I've got to teach him some respect, Tamari, Konkuro replied the female shinobi. Fine, fine but if you get in trouble I'm not helping, Tamari replied and Konkuro nodded getting ready to smash his fist into Konohamaru. Sakura just watched scared of them until both Naruto and Hinata arrived at the scene. Hey clown, put Konohamaru down, Naruto said. Who are you calling clown? Konkuro asked. You, you are wearing a full body cat suit with makeup, Naruto replied. It's not makeup it's was paint, Konkuro said getting pissed off. Whatever you say just put the brat down, Naruto said getting ready to spring into action if need be. I'm teaching him some manners. Konkuro said as he made a fist and prepared to punch Konohamaru. 
Both Naruto and Hanada vanished in an instant. To any untrained eyes they were blurs. One second later Hanada had Tamari with a kanai at her throat just as Naruto had Konkuro. Naruto kanais now were all tree-pronged with the Hiroshin seal however none of them recognized it. Now, how about you put him down? Gently, Naruto said in his sweetest voice and a small blood drop fell from Konkuro's neck. Konkuro and Tamari were sweating, they didn't see them move, they were just blurs. Besides your teammate doesn't seem very happy, Naruto said pointing towards a nearby tree. Suddenly from behind the tree appeared another San Shinobi. He is a little shorter than the average males of his age. He has fair skin and short, spiky, auburn hair which was sometimes depicted as red. He has green eyes and no distinctive pupils, or eyebrows either. He has two very notable traits in his appearance. Firstly, he has tanuki-like black eye rings, having them since his birth. Secondly, he carved the kanji, love, on the left side of his forehead. Ga Gara, Konkuro said in a dry voice clearly fearing the shinobi now identified as Gara. He made a sand shunshun towards his team just as Naruto and Hinata retracted their kanais and regrouped with Sakura and the now-released Konohamaru. They managed to get behind Tamari and Konkuro, they're good, Gara thought. Stop this or I'll kill you, Gara said and Konkuro took a step back. IW was just tea teaching them a lesson, Konkuro shakily said. Shut up, you are a disgrace to our village, Gara said in his usual cold tone. You know, Naruto said getting attention from the red head, it's nice to meet you, each eat one, Naruto said and San team froze, they knew very well what he meant. How do you know? Gara asked. Naruto simply turned around to show them the kanji for nine written in his back. The furball says that the tanuki is one crazy bastard, Naruto said. Mother says you are strong, I'll prove my existence by killing you, Gara said unleashing killer intent as the sand was starting to leave his gourd and dance around him. Poor Sakura was on the ground barely managing to breath from the amount of killer intent. Naruto simply applied his own that overwhelmed Gara's key to the point that his team took a step back. Tamari and Konkuro were just shitting their pants. Here it was a Jinchuriki like their brother but he had the strongest of the demons the Kyubi no Yoko. Suddenly another team arrived where they were. But his team was from the Cloud Village and they were being accompanied by what seemed to be their Jonin sensei. He has dark skin and a muscular build, as well as white hair and a goatee. On his right shoulder, he has a tattoo with the kanji for iron and on his left cheek, he has a tattoo of a bull's horn. His top lip also has a slightly darker hue than his bottom one. He wears oval-shaped sunglasses and a white-colored forehead protector. He also has his village's standard one strap over one shoulder flak jacket, and a long, red rope belt tied around his waist, the standard kumo hand and shin guards, shinobi sandals, and a white scarf around his neck. He also carries seven swords on his back. The rest of his team they were two girls and a boy. One of the girls had long, straight, blonde, hair bound with taut bandages and dark eyes. She wore a short-sleeved black and purple blouse and black pants, both of which had a design similar to clouds on them, purple fingerless gloves and a chain of white beads wound around her left hand. She also wore the standard Kumo forehead protector, sandals and kanai holster which was strapped to her right thigh. She also wore bandages around her arms and legs as well as a red belt around her waist. The other girl is a dark-skinned kunoichi with long red hair and amber eyes. She wears a long, short-sleeved dress with frilly edges complete with the kumogakur flak jacket, two simple yellow earrings, fishnet stockings, thigh-high boots with white soles and a forehead protector which she wears like a bandana. She also carries a long sword on her back. The final member was male. He is a dark-skinned kumo nin with short, spiky, white hair and dark eyes accentuated with lines curving upwards from the corners. He wears a dark outfit consisting of an overlong shirt with a hood, with red bandage hand guards, kumogakur shin guards, and a black forehead protector. He also carries a long sword on his back like her teammate. As usual the Kyubi instantly warned Naruto of the others. As this a reunion? Naruto asked and turned to the Kumo team. Nice to meet you. Dot 2, 8. I'm Uzumaki Naruto, Naruto said. Sakura and Konohamaru were oblivious to what was happening but the rest could feel the tension arise between the teams. Kumo tried to kidnap Hinata when she was six so both of them were a bit weary of them and Gara seemed that he was about to jump in and attack all of them. 
Nice to meet you too Mr. Nine. I fly like a butterfly and sting like a bee I'm the Jinchuriki of the Hachibi the mighty killer bee, B shouted pumping his fist into the air. Shut up B, the blonde girl yelled and bonked him in the head. I'm Ni Yugito, she said. Omoi, Omoi said. Karui, Karui said. Suddenly another team joined the fray as her team sensed the tension anywhere in the village. Do you mind if I joined a party? A girl with green hair asked. Everyone turned to the newcomers and both Naruto and Hinata said, Fu, surprised to see her. I guess everyone here is going to the Chunin exams, Naruto asked and everyone nodded. It should be fun. It seems to be plenty of competition around, Naruto said and a few smirked. The sand around Gara just seemed to dance around him even more when he noticed the arrival of the Kumo team. Konkuro and Tamari were sweating bullets as they noticed the smile on Gara's face. Kakashi, Kiba and Sasuke soon arrived when they sensed the killer intent being radiated by Gara and Naruto when they met. Hey Kakashi Nisan, Naruto said. What's going on here? Kakashi said as he noticed what seemed to be some sort of face off. There was a team from Kumo, Sand and Taki. He also sensed some tension in the air between all of them. Kakashi Sensei, you better train your team if you want them to survive. I can guarantee you right now that everyone here will reach the finals. Naruto said and everyone smirked except Team 7 and Kakashi who were still oblivious to what was happening. What makes you think that? Kakashi asked and Naruto chuckled. What's so funny Dobi? Sasuke asked. Nothing. Naruto replied. Kakashi sensei. Naruto said getting his attention. Ichi, 1, Naruto said pointing to Gara. Ni, 2, Naruto said pointing to Yugito. Nana, 7, Naruto said pointing to Fu. Aki, 8, Naruto said pointing to Killer B. Hugh, 9, Naruto said pointing to himself. When Naruto finished, Kakashi's eyes widened. In front of him were five of the nine Jinchurikis. It was extremely rare for them to meet by chance, but it appears that fate played a hand in this. Don't try to look cool like Sasuke-kun, Sakura yelled. Shut it Sakura. I'm allowing you to go into the Chunin exams but if you see any of these teams you surrender immediately do I make myself clear? Kakashi asked in a serious tone and she nodded. Like they can win against me, and Uchiha, Sasuke said with his traditional arrogant smirk. I'll enjoy spilling your noble blood Uchiha. Gara said and everyone got shivers. The furball is right you are a crazy tanuki. Naruto said and Yugito, Fu and B snickered. It's been fun. See you at the exams, Naruto said and left with Hinata. The rest soon dispersed and went to their business. Hash hash with team 7 hash hash. I was serious when I said that. If you run into any of those teams you run. Do I make myself clear? Kakashi asked and both Kiba and Sakura quickly nodded. HN, was the Uchiha's response. Let's go train. You need to be more prepared for this, Kakashi said and dragged his team to the training grounds. Hash hash Naruto and Hinata hash hash. Who knew that there would be so many of us competing, Naruto said. The exams will prove to be interesting, he said. Don't tell me you want to fight them, Hinata asked. Of course, all of the Jinchurikis tend to be strong. It's no fun fighting weak opponents, Naruto said and Hinata just shook her head. Let's go. I'm teaching you a few tricks against Jinchurikis since you might need them against three of them, Naruto said. Hash hash sand team hash hash. Gara, I think we should avoid that blonde kid, Konkuro said. He was fearful from both of them. Shut up, I'll enjoy spilling his blood as the Uchiha's. Yes, I shall prove my existence with their blood, Gara said. Hash hash Kumo team hash hash. That blonde kid seems strong, Yugito started. Do you think he can work with the Kayubi? She asked. Hachibi says that the Kayubi never got along with his host, but we better hope he can't. Even the Hachibi can't go against him, Killer B said. What if we end up facing them in the Chunin exams and then he unleashes the Kayubi leading to the destruction of the Leaf Village, Omoe said getting a smack from Karui. But the way he knew of all of us, it seems that he at least talks with him. Just be careful, B said for the first time without rhymes. Hash hash tacky team hash hash. How do you know the blonde kid? One of Fu teammates asked. I escorted his team to our village in one mission, Fu explained. But be careful, he faced and defeated a Konoha Nukenon named Aoi who was a Jonin, she said and her teammates eyes bulged out. 
Did he use Kayubi's power? The other teammate asked. No, I didn't sense nothing at all. It was all him, so let's be careful around him. Also the girl is his girlfriend but she also took down a Jonan. So we must be on our toes with his team, Fu explained and they dumbly nodded. Hash hash one week later hash hash. Naruto and Hinata were at home getting ready for going to the academy to start their exam. Both of them had new wrist bands with storage seals for shurikens, sinban, kanais and their swords. Each one also carried another scroll a bit larger with food supplies, first aid kits, a few poisons and general antidotes. Anything you might need, you never know what would happen or what kind of test they would face. You ready? Hanada asked. Yes, let's go kick some ass, Naruto replied and left the house heading towards academy. Hash hash academy hash hash. They arrived at the academy using a shunshun and noticed that Shino was already there waiting for them. Sorry we are late, it took a while to gather the supplies, Naruto said. Not a problem. Let's go, Shino said the three of them entered the academy. Team 8 came inside the academy to find their sensei waiting for them. Kurenai sensei what are you doing here, Naruto asked. I'm here to say good luck. I'm glad all of you decided to participate, Kurenai explained. Thank you sensei. We are going to kick ass, Naruto said and Kurenai smiled. Team 8 continued through the academy heading towards the designated room which was room 1 in the third floor. They arrived and noticed a small gathering of genin teams trying to enter the exam room. Genjutsu, Hinata whispered to her team and both nodded their heads. It's your cousin's team. They must be trying to downplay their skill, Naruto said. Just as they were about to leave to the next floor since this room was the wrong one and was being masked by a small genjutsu, Team 7 arrived with their noses held high. Drop this genjutsu now, Sasuke commanded. That idiot, Naruto thought as Hinata and Shino thought along the same lines. My failure of a cousin, what are you doing here? Neji asked in his confident tone. Neji was Hinata's cousin and was hailed as a Hyuga prodigy, little did he know. Neji had long, black hair that reached the middle of his back and was tied back a few inches above the end in a loose ponytail, while two straps attached to a smaller headband underneath his ninja forehead protector framed the sides of his face. He wore a black forehead protector that he wore snugly over his forehead. He wore a khaki shirt, under which he wore a dull blue shirt with a mesh armor underneath it, dark brown shorts, blue shinobi sandals. He also had bandages wrapped around his right arm, chest, and right leg. Participating in the Chunin exams of course, she explained. She seems different, at least her stuttering has gone, Neji thought. It's worthless, you are fated to be a loser and a worthless kunoichi, Neji smugly replied. I don't believe in fate and I shall rise above it as should you. No one controls our destiny. We alone make our decisions, Hinata explained trying to reach her knucklehead of a cousin. Not possible. You cannot change fate and I shall prove it in these exams, Neji said and walked off. Hinata just shook his head. I guess we will have to beat him to prove it that fate doesn't mean anything, Naruto said and Hinata simply nodded. Neji wasn't a bad person, he was just blinded by his hate towards the main branch of the Hyuga family. Another member of Neji's team approached forward heading towards Team 7 and Team 8. He possesses very thick eyebrows and large, rounded black eyes with prominent lower eyelashes. His hair is cut and styled into a bowl-cut style like guy, and he also began wearing the same attire, consisting of a green jumpsuit, orange leg warmers, and a red forehead protector worn as a belt. Holy shit, it's a clone of guy, Naruto all but shouted. I see you know of my youthful sensei made a guy. I'm Rock Lee, it's a pleasure to meet such youthful person, Lee yelled making a few bring their hands to their ears thinking it was a futon jutsu. Yeah, sure, nice to meet you, I'm Uzumaki Naruto, Naruto said and extended his hand that Lee gladly took. Are you Uchiha Sasuke? Lee asked a duck-shape haired shinobi that was standing nearby. In fact anyone would know who he was since he had the Uchiha crest in his shirt and was the last Uchiha in Konoha. Said boy turned to face him and merely nodded. I wish to fight you, Lee said with his trademark nice guy pose. You know who I am and yet you want to fight. You are fool, but it might be a good warm up, Sasuke said. Come I want to watch this, Naruto said and team 7 and team 8 left with Lee to watch the match. Dobi, 
Watch carefully you might learn something, Sasuke smugly said to Naruto who was standing in the balcony. I intend to, Naruto replied chuckling and activated his Sharingan hiding under its usual genjutsu. Both Sasuke and Lee were facing each other with the rest of Team 7 nearby. Hash hash with Team 8 hash hash. Strange, Naruto thought as he analyzed Lee with his Sharingan. Haim, can you check Lee's chakra levels? Naruto asked and Hinata nodded, she activated her Byakugan as gasped. I think he can't use chakra, his chakra pathways are too small, he probably can't mold chakra, Hinata explained. Lee was basically a civilian. I thought so. If he can't use genjutsu or ninjutsu he can only resort to taijutsu so he must be good, Naruto said as he watched the beginning of the fight. Hash hash Sasuke versus Lee hash hash. Sasuke ran forward and tried to punch Lee. However he disappeared just as Sasuke's fist was about to connect. Sasuke regained his footing just in time to see Lee in the air about to spin. Konoha Senpu, Leaf Whirlwind, Lee said and spin trying to kick Sasuke. Sasuke ducked to avoid it. Lee watching Sasuke duck placed his hand on the ground and went for another spinning kick. Sasuke watched him and knew he wouldn't be able to dodge but tried to block. Lee however was faster and his kick connected with Sasuke's face and sent him tumbling to the ground hard. A good opponent. It gives me the opportunity to try this, Sasuke said and look arrogantly to Lee. Hash hash with team 8 hash hash. Oh, Sasuke managed to activate his precious Sharingan, Naruto said, two tomos in each eye, not bad. Hash hash Lee versus Sasuke hash hash. With these eyes, I'm undefeatable, Sasuke smirked. So that's the Sharingan, Lee said and got ready to continue his duel. Sasuke ran forward confident of his superiority. Lee dashed forward to but managed to bypass his defenses, Lee stood next to Sasuke, he bent down and gave him a kick in the chin that sent him into the air and crashing into the ground again. Sasuke got up wondering what was going on and ran again towards Lee. They faced each other but Lee won every single skirmish often sending him tumbling to the ground. Sasuke's Sharingan was rendered useless. Hash hash with team 8 hash hash. Figures, Sasuke doesn't stand a chance, Naruto said. But shouldn't the Sharingan be able to track him, Hinata asked. The Sharingan can track Lee, however Sasuke isn't fast enough to position himself to block the attacks. Even though Sasuke can clearly see Lee's attacks he can't defend himself against them. There is a reason why I train my body and use gravity seals. The Sharingan alone doesn't make you all powerful, Naruto explained. So there is a weakness in those eyes, Shino stated. The weakness per se doesn't stem from the eyes but from the fact the Sasuke's body isn't trained to handle those speeds so he can't match them. Let's leave, this fight is over. Naruto said and teammate left towards the exam room since it was about to start. Hash hash exam room hash hash. Teammate arrived to the right floor. They stopped near the exam room and opened the doors. They stepped in and were immediately blasted with killer intent. However to someone that felt the Kyubi's killer intent something like this didn't even bother them. Naruto entered the room and scanned it with his Sharingan hidden taking as many faces as possible and watching weapons and other details that he could find. He also noticed the team from Kumo, Taki and Sand. Moments later Team 7 also arrived with Sasuke in bad shape. He had his right cheek bruised and neither of them knew any type of medical jutsu so it remained there. Looks like the gang is all here, Kiba said as they entered the room and saw Team 7 and Team 10. Sasuke, do you want me to heal your face? Hinata asked. After everything she suffered she remained a kind person. This scratch is meaningless, Sasuke said. My Sasuke is so strong, Sakura thought as she wandered in her thoughts about healing her Uchiha. Sasuke-kun. Ino yelled as she ran a hug the poor Uchiha from behind much to the displeasure of Sakura. I thought you wouldn't be coming whiskers, a girl said. Everyone turned around and saw Yugito making her towards Naruto with her team. Whiskers. Now that is a good name, Hanada said laughing. Don't you dare, Naruto said pointing to her. What are you going to do? Hanada asked in a teasing voice. Naruto simply shrugged it a walk to her and planted a full kiss in her lips that left her dazed. Wow, do I get one of those every time I call you whiskers? Hanada wondered with a finger in her chin making her very cute. Get a room you two, Ino said making both of them blush. Just my luck, Yugito pouted, 
The cute guys are always taken. Keep it down, some guy said. Everyone turned to face him. He wore a pair of circular glasses. He has onyx eyes and ash gray hair, which he kept in a ponytail that extends to his upper back, with his bangs framing either side of his forehead. He wore a dark purple shirt with a high collar, a white undershirt, dark purple fingerless gloves with armored plates on the back of the hand, a white cloth waistband worn at an angle, dark purple pants, blue sandals, and a shuriken holster on his right leg. You are putting everyone on their toes. Everyone as nervous as it is, the man said as he pointed to the aim nin present in the room. Who are you? Sakura asked. I'm Yakushi Kabuto, but you are rookies so it figures that you don't know this, Kabuto explained. Have you already tried the exam? Sakura asked. Actually this is my seventh try, Kabuto explained sheepishly rubbing the back of his head. Man, you must be weak, Kiba said. These exams aren't easy, maybe I can share some information with you. Kabuto started and took deco cards from his pockets. These are chakra cards, they react to my chakra signature and reveal the information. As you can see there are teams from all the countries except Iwa and Kiri. As expected, Iwa hates Konoha and Kiri is in civil war. I can also give you some information on anyone here, Kabuto concluded and Naruto got suspicious. How could Kabuto have information on Shinobi from other villages, however he decided to test his theories. Then, I want to know about Ni Yugito of Kumo and Sabaku no Gara from Suna, asked Naruto and Yugito crossed her arms. You could always ask, Yugito said. Yes but you could lie, Naruto replied and she huffed. Let's start with Sabaku no Gara, son of the Case Cage. His, his team is composed of his brother Sabaku no Konkuro and his sister Sabaku no Tamari and their Jonin Sensei Baki. His skills are all unknown. He completed 10 D ranks, 15 C ranks and, 1 B rank. There is a note that says he returned from all missions without a scratch. Looks like there are some strong people this year, Kabuto said and a few shivered. Now Ni Yugito from Kumo. She is on a team with Omoi and Karui and their Jonin Sensei is Killer B. The card shows she has very good Taijutsu and Ninjutsu and no talent in Genjutsu. She completed 10 D ranks, 5 C ranks and 2 B ranks. What is up with Genins and their missions, Kabuto said and Naruto chuckled. Now I want some info to about Uzumaki Naruto of Konoha, Yugito said and Kabuto picked his card. Uzumaki Naruto of Konoha. He is on a team with Hayuga Hanada and Abarame Shino under Yuhi Kuranai, Konoha's Genjutsu mistress. He's the academy dead last with low taijutsu, medium ninjutsu and no talent in genjutsu but there is a note that says he created an S-ranked Raiden Jutsu, Kabuto started and everyone eyes widened and Yugito narrowed her eyes at him. Now mission 65D ranks, 14C ranks, 1B rank, 1A rank, and what the hell is this, 2S rank missions, Kabuto explained and everyone was mopping the floor with their jaws. A genin with A and S rank mission is unheard of. Naruto narrowed his eyes at Kabuto, one of those s rank missions was supposed to be a secret. That kid is a mystery, dead last and yet is some high missions, Yugito thought. s ranks. How are you still alive? Kiba yelled. Keep it down. Can't tell. s rank secret punishable by death, Naruto said and everyone just stared at him. But I can explain the other mission if anyone wants a Kenjutsu spar, Naruto said smirking. Did you really create an S-rank Raiden Jutsu? Yugito asked. Raiden Jutsu is her village specialty and S-rank moves are rare independent of the type. Naruto simply nodded and everyone was having their doubts. It's true I saw it. Kiba said and everyone turned to him, it was awesome. He sent some white ball to the sky and then thunders formed. Then he somehow commanded the thunder and he attacked the bridge and blew everything around it killing about 100 thugs and destroying the bridge. Kiba explained and everyone stared at the blonde, who was getting uncomfortable and even more suspicious of Kabuto. If he's the dead last I don't even want to know about the rookie of the year, Kabuto and Sasuke smirked getting a confidence boost. You know kid he smells of snakes. Something isn't right here, Kurama said and Naruto made mental note to send a spy fox later on. Silence. Now sit down and let's being the exam. Ibiki yelled and everyone quieted down and turned to face Ibiki who was standing in the entrance of the room with a few chunin around. Show your ID and pick your number to be cited then we will begin the written exam, Ibiki explained. Written exam. That sucks. Naruto thought. 
A few minutes later everyone was sighted with their test in front of them but face down. All around the classroom were chunins with few boards. Surprisingly enough Hinata managed to sit right next to Naruto. This test has a few rules. Number 1. Each one starts with 10 points, each wrong question deduces 1 point. Number 2. The total score is based on your whole team, Ibiki explained and a few gasped. Kiba, you better pass otherwise I'll kill you, Sasuke thought. Poor Kiba seeing the glares from his teammates started to sweat. Number 3. Each time you are caught cheating you lose 2 points. Get caught 5 times and your team is automatically failed. The last question is answered last, you have 45 minutes to answer the 10 questions. Start, Ibiki said. Naruto picked up his pencil and turned his sheet only to be faced with extremely hard questions. What the hell is this? These questions aren't for Genin, Naruto thought and looked around the classroom. Everyone seemed to be lost except for a few that were writing. I know some but I bet 90% of the people here can't answer a single one. Something isn't right here, Naruto thought and began pondering what Ibiki said. Naruto knew that Ibiki was the leader of the torture and interrogation division and he focused on mental torture. If you get caught cheating you lose points now I get it, we are meant to cheat but without getting caught. Must be some information gathering exercise, Naruto thought and looked around the classroom. He noticed that Hinata had her Byakugan activated and was already starting to write. Shino was using his bugs to scout for anyone with answers. Kiba was using Akamaru that was on his head, high enough to spot someone else's sheet. Tenten was using mirrors on the ceiling so she could get the reflection of another genin. Sakura was writing since she was a bookworm she could easily answer the exam. Sasuke had his Sharingan activated and was copying someone's hand movements. Naruto waited a few minutes until he spotted someone lowering their exam sheet signaling that he was finished. They must have placed a few chunins around to answer the exams, Naruto thought. Now, how to cheat? I don't want to copy hand movements, it's lame. I know, Naruto thought and activated his M's and very quickly used his Kamui and sent his own sheet to his own personal pocket dimension. Naruto focused on the chunin's sheet and used Kamui to swap the papers. Naruto took the sheet from his personal dimension and placed it on the table. He simply erased the chunin's name and wrote his own. Naruto lowered his head and decided to sleep until the first part of the exams was over. Now that the week are sorted out let's begin the last question. However this one has its own rules, Ibiki started and everyone focused on him. Number 1. You can choose if you want or not to answer the question, Ibiki said. What happens if we choose not to answer it? Tamari asked. If you choose not to answer you automatically fail, Ibiki explained. Then of course we will answer it, someone replied. However if you chose to answer it and get it wrong you will fail and forever be unable to retake the Chunin exams, meaning you will be Genin for life, Ibiki explained. What? Someone yelled. You can't do that, there are people in here who are retaking the exam, Kiba said. I guess you guys have bad luck, my test my rules. If you don't want to risk it then give up, Ibiki said and everyone started pondering and a few started leaving. A few minutes later Ibiki noticed that Naruto was almost half asleep and tossed a kanai that landed in front of him. Naruto didn't even flinch. Wake up Naruto, Ibiki yelled. Just get it over with. Naruto started and Ibiki raised an eyebrow, I don't give and I never surrender. Even if I stay genin from life then I'll be the first genin hokage, Naruto said smirking. Ibiki looked around the room and noticed that the rest of the genins got somewhat inspired by his little speech. If no one wants to leave then there is only one last thing to say. Dot you all. Pass, Ibiki said. What? Why? Kiba asked. You seem to have figured it out, Ibiki said pointing to Naruto. He sighed and started. The first part of the exam was information gathering. If you recall Ibiki said if we get caught cheating we lose points. That could only mean that we were meant to cheat without getting caught. Information is half the battle. The last part was to know if we had the guts to be chunin. You can't abandon a mission just because it might be hard. A chunin is expected to lead and is so he must inspire confidence and courage in his team, Naruto explained and most of the rookies stared at him as if he grew a second head. Precisely, Ibiki said until something came crashing through the window. Everyone watched as someone entered flying through the windows. 
As it reached the middle of the classroom it opened to show a woman. She sent two kanais to the ceiling to secure what appeared to be a sign. Proctor of the second round MIT, Anko started yelling but was cut off by Naruto. Oh Anko. Naruto said waving his arm. Damn it Naruto, you ruined my entrance, Anko yelled at him. Come on don't be mad Anko-chan, Anko said with emphasis on the last part. I'll kill you later brat. Now everyone to the training ground 44. Be there in 20 minutes or you fail. Go, Anko said and everyone left the room in a hurry. Naruto and Hinata just shunshine there. 